The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. The nation's best are testing their mettle at the American Cup in St. Louis. The next round has begun in the champion sections with a rapid rumble underway in the redemption brackets. Lanier Dominguez survived a marathon match, winning a dramatic double blitz playoff to remain alive in the event. Two-time former champ Irina Crush has hit her stride, winning her fifth game in a row to gain a sizable advantage in her matchup. Round two matches are coming to a close. Who will move on? Who will go home? And who will survive to fight another day? Day four of Thrilling Chess, coming up next. Welcome back chess fans to day four of the 2024 American Cup held at the St. Louis Chess Club. We start a day in the World Chess Hall of Fame where all the action happens. We are in day four and this is the only rest day, but the rest day is only for the elimination bracket. The championship bracket still has to fight to keep all their lives in this competition. It's going to be a fantastic day of chess. Let's go to the studio and start the action. From the St. Louis Chess Club, it's the American Cup. Some great players have advanced and some have been eliminated. The brackets are filling up and today, round day starts right now. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Women Grandmaster Anastasia Karlovich and I'm very happy to be here with those two amazing Grandmasters, Yasser Serevan and Christian Kirilla. Hello! Hello, amazing Good to see you, Anastasia. Anastasia. Good to see you, Yasser. Christian, hello. Hello everyone and welcome to our live coverage of the American Cup 2024. Four players got eliminated, eliminated yesterday and those who survived the elimination are going to enjoy a rest day. Whereas in the champions bracket, all the play for, and we are going to determine who goes on into the champions finals. But Anastasia, do the honors. Tell us about the brackets. Let's check first of all the open section. Let's do it. Fabiano Caruana is playing with Levon Aronian. They had the first uh, semifinal match yesterday, first right. classical and rapid game, and they continue today. And um, Wesley Saw is fighting against Ray Robson. And in the elimination bracket, we had, a, like I said, a few players got eliminated. But they are not playing today, just to make it clear. Exactly. They have the rest day and they are just waiting for their opponents. Sam Sevian managed to win against uh, Gregorio Pirin and uh, also Linier Dominguez beat Sam Shankland yesterday. And in the ladies' championship bracket? And in the ladies, uh, Irina Crush uh, managed to outplay her opponent Zoe Tank in the first round and now she's playing against Nazi Paikidze, has great tournament so far. Alice Lee is playing against Begim Tohirjonova in the champions bracket. And in the elimination bracket. Also the players are resting today, those who managed to, um, to proceed to the next round. Zoe Tank beat yesterday An Anna Zatonskih and um, uh, Jennifer Yu outplayed Tati Vabrahamian. Uh, the format is a double elimination match tournament, a little bit complicated. Help us understand it. First of all, no draw offers, and it means all players are just fighting until the end. Right. In the champions bracket, we have two classical games, 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move time control, then two rapid games, 15 minutes plus 10 seconds uh, for the game. And um, actually, they played already one classical game and one rapid game yesterday, so they will continue today with one classical game and one rapid game. In case of a tie, we have Blitz uh, playoff. And for the players in the elimination bracket, there are no classical games. They'll only be competing in rapid as well as blitz games. Tell us about today's schedule. Although you did already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mentioned already that we have one classical game. Right. And, uh, 
And it's always good to repeat, to remember that we have one classical game and right. in case if uh, the, it's still not over, one rapid game will follow in each match. And in case we have tie, then Blitz playoff for those who like Blitz will follow. Thank you, Anastasia and Christian. Something tells me that this is going to be a day, an epic match between Levon and Fabi that's going to see classic Rapid and Blitz all Abs the same day? Absolutely, yes, sir. But I have to say my brain is a bit numb after the <laughs> madness from yesterday. We had Classical, we had Rapid, we had Blitz, but they were all happening at the same time. So it right. was very difficult to catch up with all the games. Today is going to be a bit more slow paced. We only have the champions bracket competing. And let's take a look as we go into today's rounds for the head to head. As we can see, this one, a very difficult situation for for Begim Tohirjanova trailing by two points. Uh, two out of two for Alice, just an incredible day for the youngster yesterday. I have to say that first game was just back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the advantage was like a hot potato. Mm -hmm. But right now, Alice is 2-0 against Begim, and if Begim doesn't win two in a row on demand, then she gets sent to the elimination bracket. In the other ladies' match that we have uh, playing on today, it's a very similar situation. As we can see, Nazi Paikiza was a very difficult opponent going into uh, this match for Irina Krush. Uh, I believe she was ahead by two points in their classical encounter. Right now, right. Irina caught up because she won yesterday 2-0. And once again, if Nazi doesn't win both of her games today, then she gets sent to the elimination bracket. Great situation for Irina and Alice. And let's see what's happening in the open section. Well, this one is so difficult to create wow. any separation between these two players. As you can see, they've played, this. by the way, these are all classical games. They've played close to 120 games, I believe. Levon Aronian, one point. Fabiano Caruana, also one point. Two draws and Samba. Something will have to give <laughs> at some point between these two players. And what's happening in the other? matchup in the open section. Well, I have to say, this was the surprise of the day, in my opinion. Ray Robson defeated Wesley So, his former roommate at Webster University, in the rapid game. And what an incredible grind that was for Ray Robson. We were watching that game. We weren't really understanding what's mm. happening. Wesley was setting traps, but Ray Robson avoided them and took home the full point. Now he has the lead. It's going to be ecstatic. These four matches, I cannot wait to call them. And we do have the sensei in the house as well, Kostya Kavutski, who's closer to the action. Tell us what you see from the playing hole. What are you feeling about these players and how they come in today's rounds? Hello, Christian, Yasser, Anastasia. I'm very pleased to be joining you guys for day four of the American Cup. Um, you know, the players, uh, I think they're getting into the handle of the tournament. They got to play classical, they got to play rapid, they got to play blitz. Basically, they got to be ready for any time control at any time and just sit down and be ready uh, to play. You guys know we had the tornado warning yesterday. I was there for that just outside of the playing hall. You know, all the players got sent downstairs, the games were paused. I mean, at first it was quite dramatic, but I actually felt like everyone was quite relax. They're like, you know, we're okay. We're going to go back, start playing chess. Everything will be fine. Today's matches, though, very, very interesting. I mean, first up, you have Fabi against Levon. They played so many games against each other. You could write a whole book, the compilation of all the games they've had. Then Wesley So, in my opinion, has a huge challenge against Ray Robson. He's a point behind. He's one of the most solid players in the world, and he's super, super strong. But he's not often put in this position where he absolutely has to win to survive in the tournament. Because otherwise, he's going down to the elimination bracket, and then he might get knocked out from there. So Wesley So, despite being one of the absolute best players in the world, he's got to defeat Ray Robson today and catch up. Then on the women's side, both Nazi and Begum down 0-2. They're just going to have to bring it their absolute A-game today. Uh, guys, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting day of chess. Thank you, Kostya. Indeed, that's what our expectations are. And Anastasia, they've been playing great chess. They're fighting really hard. Richest prize fund in American Cup history. Tell us about it. The prize fund is really impressive. It's 400,000 in total, 254 open section. Wow. The winner will get 75,000. And uh, also, uh, they can fight for the champion's uh, bonus, which is uh, 15,000 if you don't lose your any match. 
Let me in, let me in. <laughs> and how about uh, the ladies' uh, prize fund? And in the ladies' section, it's 150,000 prize fund. Well, the winner will get 40,000, second place 30, and then 20, all the way till 8,000. And a uh, champion's bonus of 9,000 as the players are taking their seats. Uh, getting ready for the start of this uh, champion's bracket. I just wanted to say, like you, the action yesterday was so fast and quick paced. Fast -paced yeah. I was surprised that when Sam Shankland and um, Lanier yeah. were crossing swords in the blitz, they didn't stop. No. Nobody took a pause and said, Arbiter, let me, you know, take a moment. They just went right through it. And we got caught a little bit off guard by that because we expected a pause as we see Levon at the board. Surprising for you as well, Anastasia? Yeah, it was surprising, but it was really challenging to check all the games with different time formats. It was classical, exactly. rapid, and blitz all together. It was really, really fun. Never experienced it before. I'm, sh I'm sure the, the viewers also liked it. <laughs> and uh, they could switch between their favorite formats every time they wanted. And here we have those. Ah, the spy cameras. cam is uh, Alice and Begum today have the spice cam for those of you who haven't seen our shows. First of all, shame on you. Secondly, we do have this innovation where there's an, uh, a hand rest for the players on uh, the chess table, and the hand rest actually camouflages, uh, and there you see it. Alice, hand rest. Camouflage is a camera. So the camera is poised right between the E and D files so we can get this uh, perspective uh, of the players. What is it like to uh, face Begum? Well, <laughs> now you can see. Facing Begum as an ant point of view, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there's Alice Lee uh, on the right um, facing up. And uh, the games are underway. Let's pick up the action. We're gonna pick. Uh, we're gonna go to the Fabi uh, versus Levon Aronian again. Uh, both players have uh, contested a classical game, as well as a rapid. This is their game three of their match, and it's classical. And it would look like after d7, d5, uh, reverse King's Indian, uh, Bobby Fisher favorite. The problem for both players is, Christian, they've played each other so much. Mm -hmm. How do you, you, you can't surprise well, one another. <laughs> I want to say that Fabi did essay a slight surprise compared to what he did yesterday. He played so, Rui Lopez, uh, Levon went for the exchange Rui Lopez, mm -hmm. who, which was most likely a counter surprise. But right now in the classical, it does seem like Fabi saying, hey, look, I have the black pieces, but I don't only want to equalize. I want to throw the gauntlet. I want to play a fast paced Sicilian game. Why not? Let's fight. Yeah. Uh, would we have, Anastasia, would we have seen uh, Sveshnikov? I mean, no, it, uh, it seems like no. I think we decided were to, to play four nights, right? D3. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, had yes. Levon gone for an open Sicilian with D4, I don't we? think we would have seen uh, Sveshnikov because he did start with E6 at move two, not knight to C6. Well, but it's easy. It's you can. Easy to There's transpose. an easy transition. Of yeah, course. right? You can, you can get uh, this line a transpositional line, uh, because I'm just thinking of the World Championship match that he had with Magnus. He's probably as experienced as anybody in the world uh, with the Sveshnikov. But uh, Levon ducked the open Sicilian question and played G3. Quite quickly, in fact. Yes. He didn't even think about it. He now we like, have Queen I have G3 e on my mind. He tries literally to go somewhere <laughs> where both players don't know right. that much. Fabiano is so experienced in the exactly. opening. Yes, maybe he's trying to find a way just to play the game and it's not about the preparation. Queenie too. Uh, again, I, I always thought this was pretty funny. Uh, this uh, particular line was a favorite of uh, Bobby Fischer and it became known as the King's Indian Attack. But for a lot of players who play the black side, they said to themselves, what attack? <laughs> it was sort of like they ignored what was going on on the king side and they just uh, 
threw their pawns up the board on the queen side. And this was like typical patterns that we see in this so-called King's Indian attack. Uh, Coach, any particular insights about this line of play? The Exactly the same that you just mentioned as mm. well. Uh, it kind of fell to the sideline right. for White's perspective because it does feel like players with the black pieces kind of understand how to defend these type of positions nowadays. Right. Um, which, again, comes as a surprise that we see this from Levon. I do remember this very important uh, game between I believe it was Sergei Karyakin and Sam Shankland, if I'm okay. not mistaken, from one of the World Cups. And Karyakin was in a must-win situation. He decided to go for this, considered to be a bit of a sideline, and managed to successfully conduct a, a very beautiful attack. But it's not as easy, especially if black knows what to do. You're going to see ideas of e5 for white, blocking the center, knight goes to d7, then we're going to try to concentrate our forces against that pawn on e5, mm -hmm. knight e7, queen c7, Seven, and at the right moment, f6 potentially even. But of course, it's going to be uh, that battle between me trying to advance with black pieces, my pawns on the queen side, you with the white side, Levon, in this case, is going to try to push on the king side, try to deliver that checkmate. Very good. And I remember yesterday we were having this conversation and you were saying, if you take Magnus out of the equation, mm -hmm. these two players, Levon and Fabi, have won more tournaments <laughs> than, than anybody else. Anybody else. Wow. From, their from their generation. From their generation. From their generation. As you can see, Magnus it's in pole really position. That's 52 tournaments <laughs> won by Magnus, by Not the way. Not that. <laughs> Fabi, 32. Uh, Vichy, 32. But Vichy, we consider yeah. him to be from a previous generation. Right. Yes. And of course, Long history. Levon uh, with 27 as well as. Topalo, actually, That's his amazing. birthday today. And, oh, really? Uh, actually, congratulations to the former world champion. Yeah, congratulations, Topi. I did not that Topalov has won that many tournaments. Yeah. Oh, he was no, really he was good. Yeah, he, he was really good in his prime. We don't Truly. have Gary Kasparov in this table. I'm and, sure and he is. And Anatoly Karpov, but yeah. they are from the previous generation. I'm sure As they well. have won also many So you were events. right. You just, you, you had intuited From their that generation. In, uh, well, I remember I, I was discussing this with Fabi at one point. We were uh, on one of these uh, rainy nights uh, in uh, <laughs> Vaikanze in yeah. still. And we were just walking and discussing and somewhat the topic became who's the most winning player. And outside of Magnus, he was saying that he knew that Levon has won a lot of games, a lot of tournaments. Right. So it was between him and Levon. We weren't sure which one is first. By the way, a little bit of a wrinkle here. The move B7, B5. Um, that's not the most common moves. Uh, in principle, black kind of to waits. Castle, yes. mm -hmm. It kind of waits for white to commit his pawn before then, you know, committing himself to b7, b5. The reason why b7, b5 might not be the most appropriate move here is because there is a chance of mm -hmm. capturing. Now you have to be a little bit careful that something like c4, yes, yeah, it's something six, tricky. Nine doesn't happen on this uh, diagonal. Now, I don't think anything can. And if you take with this pawn, uh, ED, ED, you might think to yourself, well, I'd rather have the tempo and I'd rather have my pawn back yes. on, on uh, B5, um, B7. Uh, Christian, B5. Right, right. It has Question. been played quite a few times. Really? Uh, so it, it's, it's more of a sideline. Sure, you start with castle, wait for E5, 97, and then you go for B5. But you can definitely play it like this as well. It does open up, as you guys just uh, mentioned, the option for white to just take on D5. And usually the variation goes take, take with a pawn. In fact, that's the main line. D4 opening up this diagonal, trying to hit the pawn on b5, take advantage of you overextending right on the queen right. side, c4, and then knight to e5, and then we're getting this type of situations. The question is, who analyzed this better? Fabiano okay. is saying that, look, I've looked at this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at all chests, <laughs> usually. You cannot surprise me. I have my ideas right. in every single line. Maybe I looked at it a long time ago, but I still remember it, because right. I probably have one of the best chess memories of uh, this generation. Oh. Uh, if I, I would say so. I would say so. He's so well prepared, right? It's so difficult to get him out of his element. That's exactly what he's showing right now. To be honest, I don't think we're going to see any sort of uh, different scenarios. White is still going to go e5 at the right moment. I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to take on d5. I believe Levon is going to try to stir the game into the waters that he knows how to navigate.
All right, and let's turn our attention to the other uh, semifinal match. Uh, Ray Robson enjoying a one-point lead against Wesley. So, you know, you, you, you play these mind games with yourself. How, what's your approach? Should I be trying to draw both games? Mm -hmm. Should I try to win with White and clinch the match? Oh, yes. Absolutely. You know, I mean, how... You probably how, try your chances, right? What, what should my approach be? Let's take a look at what Ray chose in the opening. A Nimzo Indian with knight c3, already uh, something of a challenge, and a Rubenstein variation, e2, e3, a move I always uh, associated with the great Akiva Rubenstein, as it's, it's flexible. On the one hand, I can still play a2, a3. On the other hand, I can play bishop d3 and knight e2 to avoid the double pawns and to try to win the two bishops, which is exactly what Ray played. Now, earlier in the tournament, we've been seeing these queen, um, these um, isolated, isolated queen pawns. Yes, exactly. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming to my rescue here. A2, A3. Now, this is the crazy game where I think Lanier Domin, yes. Drop bishop back with, five. Right. And we were, I remember we had a lot of uh, discussion yesterday. Right. Few possible moves. He chose the one which we didn't expect. Exactly. Commentator's yeah. curse. We looked at everything. Bishop d6, yeah, bishop, bishop e7. Seven, take on c3 also, which we right. yes. And bishop after a2, a3, actually, uh, Wesley has just uh, taken a, a pause. Maybe he's remembering the game of linear and, and thinks, is it a good idea to repeat it or not? Right. Maybe, maybe it's a new trend. Right. Maybe this is how you play <laughs> these nice. positions. Five, right? w w <laughs> yes. Wesley well, has three to, options. Right. <laughs> Wesley has to win one game. That's a challenge. Yes. But he, 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 hope, hopefully for him, he'll have two cracks. Unfortunately, in the lady section, uh, must win games for both, both. Uh, mm -hmm. Nasi and um, uh, Begum. What are, you, what are you seeing in their games? Well, let's see what's happening in uh, the Nazi versus uh, Irina Crush game. We do have a Sicilian. So the players with the black pieces are not shying away from a fight, even though they're not in a must-win situation. Fabi is not in a must-win situation. Irina is definitely not in a must-win <laughs> situation. All she needs in the next couple of games is a draw. But right. she perhaps wants to win. Maybe she wants to get more of those rating points. Those rating points are not easy to get. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Or perhaps maybe she's feeling that Nazi is not in her best shape mm. as well after those uh, two games yesterday. So what do we have in this one? Close. Close. Hold Close. Yes. the Fianchetto variation. Sure, if you go F4, it looks more like a Grand Prix attack. Right? Excuse me, that's garbage. This is a closed. Completely closed. Closed. Yes. Closed. Yes. closed Sicilian, the Fianchetto variation. Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> I don't, I'm not good with names. Yeah, That's right. all I can say. I'm yes. not good with names. I, I used to play it before. What I can say, it's really hard to get advantage with white pieces. <laughs> same with black. So, <laughs> But at the same time, you know what you're doing, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, you're waiting for the yes. knight to go to e7 seven. or f6, most likely to e7, to keep the bishop open, and then you right. go bishop h6. Right. And then you push on the king side, h4, h5, castle long, and you try uh, to just pretty much checkmate black on the king side. Now the question is, and the decision that black has to make, is where do you put the king, right? Do you go castle? Do you stay in the sure. center like this? Generally, we're going to see once again a battle between black developing mm -hmm. on the queen side. his attack with the pawns on the queen side, the white on the other side after the exchange of the dark square bishops. Objectively, it's considered to be very playable for black. Mm -hmm. This is not going to give an objective advantage to white. At the same time, it's one of those situations in which, if you haven't looked at it in a long time, yeah. it could be dangerous. You keep the pieces on the board as well. All of them, and there is an immediate attack coming. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Yeah. I go bishop h6, h4, h5. I do open you up on uh, this side. And if I remember correctly, at the right moment, you have to, once white's plan is obvious on this side, you have to time an f6 move well to bring another defender. Right. Maybe this rook after castle, rook uh, from f7. f8 to f7 to cover the seventh rank. So you have to have your timing right as a black and as white as well, because the attack is coming on this side. Also. So just to give some moves, for example, suppose arena plays knight e7, uh -huh. uh, bishop, bishop h6, h6. Mm -hmm. castles short, 
Castle Short, H4. H4. Mm -hmm. And this is where you were saying maybe F6 and Rook F7. There, and there you go. Bishop takes H6. It's actually, and now F6. And F6. This so is the time. That nice. Yes. I like those pawns. <laughs> yeah. Then you get your queen trapped. Mm -hmm. Yes, if like H5, H5, G5. If you go H5, yes. I go G5 and you're in trouble. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> you're not in time to cover, right? I have King H8 followed by Knight G8. Nice. Right. Big trouble This for you. How you right. can lose the game if you're how too you optimistic. Lose. Right, right, right. I don't know, right. maybe F4. And if I remember correctly, Correctly, not here f4, but maybe queen to d2, drop the queen back, then f4, f4 and then h5. Exactly. But again, after the move f4, you kind of close this diagonal for the queen to come back and deliver the checkmate. So it's slower than it looks like, right? right? But do, black does have to know this idea of uh, f6. And to be honest, most grandmasters do because they've uh, analyzed this uh, position. Uh, Irina, with her great experience, is certainly going to be aware. What, what about Alice Lee? Uh, again, Alice needs only a draw. And as she, uh, what? Oh my goodness, what's happening in this one? This last this move. This is not a king's Indian, it's no, not a no. queen's Indian. Okay, let's it's see how hybrid. we ended up here. Okay, okay so far. A3, yeah, taking Petrosi. away the bishop, yes. bishop to B4, knight to C3, okay, D5, that's normal. Castle, E4, D6, bishop D3, and A5. Yeah, this is not... This Can you explain why this move is so bad, A5, just for it's, those who don't understand so well this position? It's not positions. a bad move, it's just very slow. What mm -hmm. you need to do is try to break the center as fast as possible. Take and then follow it up with C6, right? You want to get this type of structure. So take, let's say you take, castle, oh, I'm sorry, C6. Mm -hmm. And now you want to get this structure. You cannot really take on d5 because then mm -hmm. I take on h7 at the end and that's favorable for me. But what you will do is in fact get this knight most likely to c7 or c5. You have a couple of options. c7 is a bit more targeted against the pawn on d5. c5 is a bit more uh, strategical. You will want to play against the pawn on d5. White still enjoys the space advantage, and I have ideas of knight to d4, knight to f5. This is considered to be a very difficult position for black. That's why, in general, you don't want to allow this move d5 for white. a3, generally, you continue with d5 yourself. But Begging wants a fight, yeah. and she got one she at got the one. expense of being worse. Yes. Well, the problem, once again, is she faces such a difficult task. She needs to win with black. The yes. only way she's... She, her, her thinking has to be, let's keep the pieces on the board. Even if I get a, a, a passive position coming out of the opening, you know, I'll just do my best to try to uh, create problems uh, for my opponent. The other problem I'm having with the move A5 is twofold. The move A5 kind of suggests to me that you want to play knight yes, A6, knight, knight C5, and secure the C5 square. The problem is you simply can't secure the square. At a certain moment, the move b2, b4 is going to rock your world. You, the, you, white will win control over the c5 square. But more immediately, I would be very worried about the move knight to d4 oh. here. So the exactly. idea, just as Christian was saying, uh, oftentimes knight to d4, and if I can pose, like I'm, I'm really putting pressure on the e6 pawn, right? Yes, I can so get e5, e5 yes. then I can uh, post and now my knight is really, well, threatening. I'll just put, I'll leave it at that. Uh, of course, uh, Alice can also play uh, quietly in this position, castles, and enjoy her space advantage. But let's go with that, that variation, sure. answer, maybe on it's the our board with knight to d4. Yeah, because it's that's fine. a very good move. Yeah. First of all, you're asking the question: Do you go e5 or right. do you what if take queen d7? Another option. Yeah, and that's the thing too, like taking yeah. away your knight square. I know, but that's knight maybe problem. goes to a6. I don't know. Exactly. That's what you explained me before. Right. And that's why this a5 is 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 not that good. Right. Like something like this, and this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. You're not really ever going to. This knight square is never really secure. It's like because I'm going to go rook b1. I'm going to play b3, and when the timing is right, I'll just play b4 and give you the boot. Yeah, it doesn't and, look nice. And the bishop yes, also. Indeed. You, yeah, it's just. Mm, you are not, not on time. Yes, to what put does the pieces the engine in. Say? Very uh, good point. You're not on time. Mm -hmm. And let's go with that variation, sure. taking on d5 and go c6. What? Now? We know before queen d7. So uh, immediately after knight to d4, a5, oh, knight d4. a5, knight to d4. And yes. now you go with Takes. what we've discussed already, take on d5 and c6. We yes. know that you need to target that yes. center, right? Right. Go castle right now. 
Oh, nice. Na first of all, you don't have the option of playing knight a6 first. You have to take on d5 first. And this. Don't touch that pawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can either play queen h5, h5 or bishop I takes think queen h5. Queen h5 is, is good. Yeah, it's nice, force huh? is good enough. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very force nice. is resignation. Force that, is that, resignation. That's completely lost at that point. Okay, right. so c6 castles. And if you take, take a knight to a6, yes. now I even have the option of picking up your bishop pair and giving myself an incredible threatening pawn on c6. After I you c6. love this move. I do too. Knight to c6 and bishop takes c6. Busted yeah. Here. You're, you really are almost. It almost feels like busted. a strategically losing uh, position for black. This is a very, very powerful pawn. The bishop also extremely powerful on a d3. So, so it's not looking good for uh, begging in this one. But again, she really needs to complicate matters. Exactly. Yeah, it's really hard to come to the game trying to get your winning chances and immediately get the position which is worse and probably she feels that if white will will make some you know decisive moves i mean really really correct moves it she can be worse yes like yeah. after they say five anastasia something's wrong at this exact moment i feel calm <laughs> normally i'm looking at the rapid jazz and blitz jazz and like like yes, right now we're it feels, enjoying it yes. feels very very chill here maybe in the it's studio. calm before the storm yeah right? so you never know <laughs> yesterday's tornado you can't get more exciting than that uh we'll keep an eye on uh, the the ladies games of course and uh tell me um you 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 had mentioned uh, christian that wesley you know is tough he, he mm -hmm. has to win on demand and this is is really really hard you've worked with fabiano for so many years how do you win on demand? How, what's your approach, the mindset that you need? It's difficult. It is. First of all, let's set up the parameters. Right. It's extremely, extremely difficult to win on demand, and very few players can actually do Capable. that. Yeah. You need to take unnecessary risk. You mm. cannot play You cannot play some Rui Lopez, allow the exchange Rui Lopez. You don't have uh, those luxuries so, right. anymore, unfortunately. You have to play the modern. For example, you have to play a Sicilian, even though even Sicilian nowadays, it's not easy to right. win because if white wants, they have those drawish lines right. as well. So usually players go for the modern and then 90% of the times they will lose yes. that game as well. So it's a very difficult situation to be in. The mindset has to be, I, look, I need to play. First of all, you need to kind of consider the time format as well. For example, in this one, I could be choosing more of a tame Sicilian or, uh, you know, the Perts, the modern, right. but play it in a more tame way because I want a longer game and I want to take you in time trouble. I want right. to take you to time trouble situation and I want to create the separation at that moment. By the way, this bishop to g5 is a very rare move. By, by Levon. By Levon, yeah. So quite a surprising development in uh, this game. He played the move bishop g5 after that early b5 castle, e5, knight d7. And by the way, this was played only twice. Wow, that's very, very, very rare, especially in this opening that's literally many, many decades old. Correct. Nobody's been playing bishop g5. Not as many people, and especially not... Probably for good reason? Probably for good reason, <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I don't understand it. Um, because Why you do the... want your attack to be successful on the king side. Right, and normally speaking, you need... if. Normally speaking, there's a, a white on bishop on mm -hmm. f4, and there's a black bishop on e7. And then at some point you sacrifice on h6. Precisely. At some moment I'm, I'm threatening knight g5, which is such a, a dire threat. It provokes the move h6, and I need a piece to, to play bishop and Then you go h4, knight h2, knight g4, <laughs> and then you sacrifice something on h6. And if you, it works, it works. It, if it doesn't, it does. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Have a nice life. Usually it does. Uh, uh, Anastasia, weigh in. Uh, it, it, we, we say this is very rare, but but would you have gone for the trade of the bishops? Normally, I would like to keep as many pieces as possible, when especially if I'm hoping at least to have an for attack sure. later. But I mean, also let's not forget that Wesley. So even though he won he will try to get his chances in this game, he still can afford to make a draw in this game with black pieces and then exactly. play with white. Yes, because we were discussing like what is your approach. He still can has this uh, possibility option, option yes, yeah. to make a draw. Especially <laughs> Wesley. Especially yeah. Wesley, who 
I haven't seen him successfully play for a win with Blackberry often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not that type of player, right? No, his repertoire doesn't let It itself. just doesn't allow him. Uh, right. His repertoire is so stable, he knows what he's playing, but most of the lines that he's employing are meant to equalize. Solid, right. very solid. Very solid, yes. extremely right. solid. So his repertoire just generally doesn't allow him. But right now he's not in the must win situation. He will have the white pieces in the rapid game. If he should will he have make a, a draw, game. yes. Yes, or win. Right. Um, so... He still has a great chance with the white pieces try to outplay Ray Robson. It's intriguing for me. Uh, the players come to the tournament. They're so very, very well prepared. They've got everything. And yet, during the tournament, they look at the other games. Absolutely. And they go with the other games. Like, what have the players been playing? I'm not sure that before this event, um, uh, Wesley had really seriously considered, considered Bishop A5, <laughs> but because Lanier led the way, he started looking at it and he probably came to the conclusion that it's actually a pretty decent move and copied yes. uh, uh, him. Uh, and it happens quite often, yes, during the tournaments. You can see the trend. It's One a, player <laughs> chose this line, then you see next day another player with different color decided to play it, to try line. it. So, I mean, I'm always, I was always curious about it. Like, why would you spend uh, this evening preparing the new line? Like, what's going on there? Right. Like, do you know the answer, Yasser? Why they would, would uh, suddenly copy from each other during the same event, which right. normally doesn't give you that much time to, right. to analyze it. Or maybe they had it already somewhere uh, and, just, let's say, decided to show it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm always curious. <laughs> well, one of the things was us playing these tournaments with Kasparov and Karpov. And those two were real well, trendsetters. So when Kasparov started playing the Petrosian variation of the Nizo <laughs> yes. Indian, everybody started playing A3 as like the, the, the cure-all. Vladimir Kramnik. Yes. You know, he, 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 Berlin. He, he, paved the way brilliantly in the Berlin, and it became uh, extremely, extremely popular. So, well, whenever a, a good player plays something, exactly. that just tells you that they've done work in yes. it. Right. And they've reached the conclusion that it's actually playable, or it's a good line, or it's a line that proposes exactly. some problems. So you if trust. It comes from the wise. Yeah. So you trust. <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. Right. He exactly. worked so hard. Uh, hard uh, Let me use his work. Exactly. You know? yeah. At least now I know the direction where right. to look at, right? Because direction is also a very uh, difficult question to answer when you're getting ready for a new tournament. Hey, yeah. where am I looking? Am I looking at the Sicilian? Am I looking at the Rui Lopez? Right. You don't have infinite time, right? Yeah. So exactly. you need to imagine, choose the right direction. Just imagine that Lanier just played it up. Just, I don't know, during the I game forgot. he decided to play, yes, <laughs> he got his notes or decided to play Bishop A5 just by chance. Right. And now everybody's scoping him and uh, in fact he has no idea. <laughs> okay, I'm joking, of course, it's no, almost no, no, impossible. No. It, 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 it's, it's very, very good like this that, uh, you know, sometimes you just mix up a move and everybody <laughs> says, this is mean. great. Oh, let's, let's give it a try, Bishop A5, why not? And right. then suddenly everybody copies you. Queen H4 is your friend, yeah. as they say in trading. <laughs> Queen H4, threat of checkmate in one. I have this theory uh, that uh, if in the opening black ever has a chance of making a threat of checkmate in one, yes. you've made a mistake. Ah. Uh -huh. Really? That's, yeah. What an interesting theory. Yeah. That's a terrible theory. You should theory. never... <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Black, black, black should never have a, a, a chance in the opening, and we're still in the opening, to threaten checkmate in one. Here, I would say the reason the white's mistake is the knight properly uh, best placed on the F3 square. Anyway, there That's you have it. That's an interesting idea. We'll H3, think about it. rook d8. Now, this for me is a surprise move. Knight takes d5. Again, I have the I have the isolated queen pawn. I kind of want to keep pieces on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I would find the move knight e4, e4 somewhat attractive. I would probably be most attracted to rook d1, maybe queen f3, uh, in order to be able to play bishop to e4. But 
Knight takes d5, a little bit of a surprise for me. I think Knight I found the e difference between Please. bishop by 5 and bishop d6 now. Now this bishop on c7, okay, actually you could go the same way, yes? Bishop d6 and yes. then go to c7. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was that trying was to be Chris smart, but it, it's not working, yes. Uh, I thought that yeah. now you have actually a rook on d8, you know, right. plays so well. But you could do the same thing, yes? Just bishop to share d6. it with our viewers. So the idea is, oh, this is great. We can put our bishop on c7 by playing, as in the game, yes. bishop a5. And why don't we play bishop d6? And, and then she, Anastasia, corrected herself. <laughs> so, well, I can still play bishop to c7. It, but it looks different, right? I mean, it from does. a5 it, to like... Well, as <laughs> the only difference is that yes. after bishop d6, what I can do is take on d5 mm -hmm. and change the pawn structure. We discussed this. And then yes, bishop to f4, and then it's a completely different situation. So the idea is that if we put the bishop on d6 in order to go to c7, we do give white the additional uh -huh. extra option. Uh, option. Yes. Yes. And I felt, I felt, yes, sir, there is something, but I couldn't explain better than Christian. <laughs> he did it good. He did it good. Yes, now, great. I'm being told by uh, Var that uh, actually the move h3 is a very unusual move. And... Uh, novelty according to his uh, database i can readily imagine that g2 g3 makes mm, more sense if mm -hmm. you will you you you, you stop the threat and you do it with a gain of time you know go ahead uh boot the queen somewhere i guess what, 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 was, what was the game yesterday where the uh, somebody got into trouble with their queen queen h5 and there was an f4 move no that, no, that was, was the first game between Lanier, the second game between Lanier and Sam and, Shanklin. Um, I guess Sam Shanklin. No, against Ray. That was the first, the first match against the first Ray. First May. Yes. Yeah, that his queen got a Ray little bit. Ray played the caught. same idea. Right. Lanier played with his bishop to a5, and the queen got That's completely stranded a, right. on the other side. Gotcha. What on I understand? H5, H4. You don't play queen f6 here after g3. This is the bad move, yes. So you have to keep your queen on h file, yes. <laughs> the checkmate in one threat yes. is very, very serious. What about uh, the fact that white is also threatened in checkmate? Yes, exactly. So. Well, that's why I would assume that g3, queen h3 would yes. have been more standard, mm -hmm. uh, if you will, maybe even queen h5. But yes, you definitely must protect against the threat. h3, let's catch up with the players because I'm finding uh the, the the play a little bit mystifying um knight takes d5 rook takes d5 bishop e3 now if you want to say to me my my rook is misplaced on d5 i'd mm -hmm. agree and if you want to say to me that i'm going to get kicked i will also agree that uh, knight c3 bishop b3 will come with tempo but I normally I wait for you to play to, knight to, to, three to go rook or, d8. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. But rook d8, I assume it's because Wesley wants to play bishop d7 and he doesn't want his rook uh, caught. Could he play uh, something like I don't know e5 just for exactly, yes, exactly. So records. <laughs> so so for me, uh, it oftentimes happens that I mess up. I just messed up, and my pieces end up on a bad square. And then I say to myself, okay, you messed that up, but let's try to make a virtue of the fact that, you know, my pieces are on the wrong square or something like this. And since my rook is on d5, I start to think, oh boy, you know, wouldn't it be nice? I've got a queen over there, mm -hmm. or I could play bishop takes h3 and rook g5. So I would, a rook h5, I would consider start too. to think about, like, may That's... I take advantage? It looks scary. For me. I want to say coffee house. It, <laughs> it looks, looks a little, little bit, bit yes, but uh, like a joke. But you cannot win the rook immediately. Knight just three is not working, but still, I mean, it, yeah. it feels like what is this rook doing there? Exactly. We yeah, didn't but, get a chance to investigate because rook d8 came very quickly. Rook c1 and uh, bishop d7 on the board. Are we no h3? We think is it was novelty. Yeah. So we are in the position which nobody seen before. Exactly. <laughs> now, it's one of those very normal positions. It like looks the normal. I will put my bishop on e8 most likely. Then I will have the option of going g6 to stop that threat of that battery on the b1 h7 diagonal, right? Or maybe right. even at the right time f6 bishop, and bishop g6. g6. Yes. That's an idea as well. Why not? 
But I do have to pay attention to that queen getting stranded on uh, H4. <laughs> well, Some ideas with the... bishop g5. <laughs> okay, but... Uh, it's a bit safer without the knights, right? Without a pair of uh, minor pieces. Right. Uh, let me play the devil's advocate in favor of Wesley. I got to win. Yes. I got to win. Okay. Uh, I've got an imbalance that I can try to prove that's favorable for me, the isolated queen ah, pawn. Not much. I don't have any real weaknesses. And maybe if I could play bishop e8 and bishop b6 and keep pressure on the d4 pawn, I could dictate? Sure, but it does That's feel like... That's my <laughs> argument, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> what if I just go rook d1, for example? Rook d1. Okay, bishop to e8. And then I just go, oh, you, you want to win? Okay, queen e4. <laughs> queen to e4. <laughs> Uh, now you're just being uh, mean. Let's make a draw. Yeah, being... <laughs> Would you like to make a draw? <laughs> wow, yeah. I, and by the way, I'm actually obliged to trade queens because once again, this threat on uh, queen takes e4, bishop again, takes queen e4. Queen e4 is a simple yeah, move. I don't have to actually. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's, That's what important. I to yes. get rid of this isolated one. Exactly. Maybe you have another one <laughs> after d5. <laughs> yeah. But again, okay, this is so, a very exactly. silly way to try to force matters. Agreed. Yes. But you've got the game of Fabi and uh, Levon on your board, and what's going on? Let's catch up with the action and see where we stand. After, first of all, Bishop takes e7, and he played it quite quickly. Look, you played bishop to g5. Bishop e7 is not the right continuation. It's just not in the spirit of the position. The spirit of the position is to keep more pieces on the king side. So play the move h4, provoke the move h6, and then you have the option. But at least you can go back, of course, to f4 or mm -hmm. on e7, but at least you created that hook. We call this pawn on h6 a hook. And why do we call it that way? Because it can later be hooked with my G pawn. I'm going to go mm -hmm. G4 followed by G5. And that's going to force a reaction, whether that's going to be H5 or take on G5 and open up the H file, which is dangerous, of course. There's a reaction coming from Black's side. So he did not do that. He took on E7 first. Now H6 is definitely uh, not as middle. Knight to D2, A5, A4, B4. I don't know. I'm looking at the position and I have to say I really like what black is doing. Black has not lost a beat. Mm -hmm. B5, A5, C5, D5. I, everything is coming in one move and I'm really pushing my pawns. You're nowhere close to creating anything as white on the king side. This is the side where you're going to be playing. So if I would be in Levant's shoes right now, I have to say I'm a bit concerned because it just feels like black achieved everything he wanted from this opening. Mm. Wow. Actually, maybe, Christian, we can jump to the game uh, between uh, Irina Crush and uh, Nazi Paikitsa because she actually decided to force <laughs> the meters and she played with a five. Right? That was a strange uh, decision uh, for sure. Yeah, but it's, it shows actually um, that she's in, in a very aggressive mood. Um, it's unclear if it's good or not, but at least uh, it's clear indication that uh, she's trying to force yeah. the matters. She yeah. is. She definitely is. Yes. Uh, but, you know, it, it, for, for, for me, it was always uh, very, very clear. Uh, what is a combination? A combination is a sacrifice followed by a four sequence of, of moves where you have a goal. Mm -hmm. But for a combination to be successful, you have to make a mistake. Something yeah. in the position should be in my favor to make the combination work. Yes. And I don't see exactly what Black has done that's terrible that would say, hey, the combination, the spawn sacrifice should work. But Perhaps what she's trying to say that I have done already the castling and the king is still in the center. So let's try to open up the position and uh, use the fact that uh, her pieces are already developed at the moment. And actually, it seems like Irina made a mistake. Made right? a mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Did yes, she what? really? What big mistake. The, what was her big mistake? Look at the time. First of all, <laughs> Nazi okay. is one hour and 28 minutes against one hour and six Nazi minutes. Nazi has been wow. uh, playing Which all the tempo. Which is an indication she made the right choice in the opening. No. Well, <laughs> no. Her indication is that she's uh, trying 
uh, to look like she made the right choice <laughs> right, in the like opening. Confidently. It's, she's playing confidently, but unfortunately the moves are not great. <laughs> Recklessly. I F5 wonder. after B4, the engine is saying that she's almost lost. F, after the move F5, Arena could have played B4, yes. which more or less chases my knight backwards. Knight E5. Now I'm continuing with my attacks. Give me the pawn. Okay, I will. You will defend. Let's say. Of course. And now I will go C4. I Not continue. Not even Queen A4, but C4. I can keep Queen A4 in, 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 in the, the pocket. Back, in the back pocket, yes. So you've got ideas of C3, Queen A. This Precisely. looks. This, this looks, looks scary. Dangerous. <laughs> Objectively, uh, it's lost. I won't won't argue against you here. This looks like, you know, the. For me, the desirable move is bishop h6. Yes, of course, but probably you don't have but time for that. Yes. I'm afraid I have a feeling c3, like c3, c3 is, c3 is right just now. going to yes. destroy me. And yes. my king, the, the, the protection of my king is just going to get blown up. Well, let's make a couple of moves, actually. c3. Okay, after bishop h6, right. yes. Just to show the audience. Yes, okay, please, c3, yes. do illustrate. I you move the should. queen, probably. No, if you take, I think it's just disaster. I want to hide a, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> your point. Okay, pawn. I'm a pawn grabber. Yeah, okay, should I go queen a4? Yes, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Queen a4, oh, I think, just finishes you. Queen a4 just yes. finish. Hold on. Oh, check. Oh, yes. That's a problem. And check. And check. Yes. Too many checks. You take on g7, you took my uh, bishop, uh, queen a3. No, 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 no. Take on over. g7, queen a3, and I walk the plank. Yes. No, I... That so it was a, a very uh, critical moment in yes. this game. Yes, Irina could Thank definitely you. try to uh, push. And by the way, knight e5. If I don't defend the g, if I play some move like king b1, knight takes g4. I don't believe at all. That's not enough. Compensation. Not not nothing uh, at all. So uh, a big moment, a missed chance, and after knight d4. Let me just catch up with the players for just That's a it. moment. That's, That's it. it. They, they Maybe it's, it's, and it's also finally, it's actually Nazi not is actually no, no. no. Uh, oh, knight e2 came quickly. Very good By move. The, way, the best move in the position was it? Because yes. again, I, I find myself drawn to the move bishop h6, but the engine prefers. Yes, and the, the key. Uh, to First understand all, in this position is that with the knight on d4, you actually don't go anywhere with your attack. Because you need that C pawn. You need to get C4 going and potentially C3 to break the structure mm -hmm. in front of the king. With the knight on D4. In fact, the knight on D4 it looks good. It seems to be a liability for black. It seems to be, in fact, a bad piece. It looks great. looks beautiful. Central. Mm -hmm. Nice. Close the king. But you don't have a follow-up to connect that with your attack. Connect that mm -hmm. piece with your attack. Also, White moved uh, his, her knight to e2, and now there is no before it was Tempe. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Also, Black mm -hmm. could have uh, used this Tempe and mm -hmm. chased the knight, but now it's not possible. By the way, for me, uh, again, when I was in the class, I, I was moving from class B to class A, uh, the move knight on c3 to e2 would not occur to me. Oh, really? It would not occur to me. I mean, I was more or less, you know, a rules and order. You know, you, the, the knight on c3 is already developed. It's already developed. Yes. The, the colleague on g1 should come in. Actually, so yes, you're right. Don't move too many pieces. times with the same piece. Exactly. Yes? <laughs> and this move, knight on c3 to e2, moving a piece that's already developed, moving it backwards voluntarily, taking the square from the colleague on g1, that move, again, it's not on my uh, mm -hmm. uh, horizon, but it actually is a fantastic move. Because, uh, as you were about to say, the pawn on b4 is annoying. You, it could, you, w when your knight is not on c3, for example, I'm going to play a bad move, and I'm not saying that uh, the play would go like this, but now white has the opportunity of taking on d4 and not being afraid that I lose a piece, mm -hmm. you know, if I had played knight g1 takes to d4. I would even consider bishop h6 still of no course, in this position. Of course, of course. No, but you put also pressure on this knight on d4 by playing knight exactly. d4 and ask questions. Exactly. Uh, but 
Uh, if you don't mind me asking you, uh, Christian, uh, I, I agree, 92 is a very good move. But <laughs> I've been trying more or less since I played Queen D2 to play the move Bishop H6. So why it, did she do it? It's, 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 possible. it's a good move as well. Uh, Would it have given me an advantage? Hmm? Would it have given white yes, an advantage? Yes, uh, in fact, it, everything seems to be giving white an advantage <laughs> wow. right now. Okay. Bishop like H6, everything mistake. has changed with this knight on D4. Gotcha. In fact, in a lot of lines, I have a feeling you have to go back <laughs> to E5, wow. which is going to take forever. Time. The knight on D4, it just looks good. It's one of those instances where a piece looks good, but it doesn't do much. So, yes, the knight on D4 was a big, big misstep for Irina. Looks natural. Again. Yes. It, it, it really does. White play the move knight e2. I'm waiting, sure. You want to castle, then I go bishop h6, and then you're, okay. in fact, in some danger because right. you try the to attack. shy away from that exchange. At least I'm getting the exchange. Right. Also, so castle, six. bishop h6. If you try to go bishop b5, not exchange well, the bishops, thank you very much. I'll take that. Right. So, uh, how do you continue your attack? I guess you don't want to castle. You want to go b4 okay. uh, now, but now bishop h6. Again. You try to shy away from this. I take. You take with the bishop or with the pawn, Knight then I attack F3. your bishop with a tempo. Beautiful. You're not in time. Actually, it's funny that... Uh, you don't have c4, c3. With, yeah. Instead of bishop f5, if you play castling, there is a 6 yes move. I also think even. <laughs> I'm not uh, sure, here. but it, yes, 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 yes. it looks That's funny. an option. Yes. I can maybe even maybe take, take NF6. An NF6 yes. <laughs> You're trying to get back? Yes. No, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> allowing you to get back. It looks nice you have with to go some knight g8. Give me the rook. Thank you very much. Yeah, g5 check. So... Oh, wow. I mean, you go here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Rook F1 just finishes, but uh, I'm trying to, to checkmate go, you yes. somehow. No, we want this king to go. Knight takes D4, yes. Knight F3. Yes, 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 yes. It's over. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Very, very uh, nice and uh, challenging for sure. So let me just update my uh, game. But it's so some. strange, right? It's such a natural move to make this move Knight to D4. Exactly. Exactly. In, in this position, it's very typical move, yes, it's to play ninety four. So maybe she just good. played automatically, more or less, without consideration uh, of ninety five. And it's still, it's a, it's a fight of nerves right now. By yes. The way, I'm seeing a little bit of concern there mm -hmm. with Irina. Irina is really uh, hand in head and hands and really focused. I think an awareness is beginning. coming. Yes. Yeah, like, wait a minute. I see a lot of nice potential for white. What about me? Yes, what, what I should play, that's a exactly. question, yes. Where, where is my attack? Right. Because it's all about, with this opposite castling, more or less, obviously, that white will try to do something on the king's side. Where is your attack on the queen's side? Yes. Exactly. Tony Miles, Grandmaster Tony Miles of England, had, had a nice quip to say that, you know, once I play the move king b1, and I tuck mm -hmm. my king into the queen's side, I'll be really safe. And contrarily, uh, Irina is looking at her own king saying, you're not really happy in the center and you sure as heck are not going to be happy on the king side once you see h4 and h5 coming your, your way. So real, real challenges for Irina who at 2-0, she was in cruise control yesterday, uh, not looking that great. What's happening with Alice Lee and Begum, uh, Christian? Well, uh, in this one, I have to say Begim is in big, big trouble. And we really? knew that. We knew that because this A5 was just not a move in the right direction. Immediately, Alice Lee took advantage of that, played the move knight to D4, the best move in the position. That's one thing about Alice. You give her time, she will find the right moves. You don't pressure her, she will find the right moves. We've seen it in her conversion yesterday mm -hmm. in the end game. She found that e4, king e3, king f4 plan. Look at her. She looks confident. <laughs> she looks confident. Like, what am I even doing here? Oh I, I, I know I only need a draw, but I'm going to finish this match mm. in this game. This is her mindset sure. right now. And she's in pole position to do so. And Begim, the spy camera, she, she does look a bit concerned, yes. That's not a, that's a look of concern, yes. Indeed. I mean, look at the position. Knight to d4, queen to d7. You were mentioning uh, this type of defense. Unfortunately, this bishop, bishop is coming a to a4 one. as well. Oh. And then you will have to throw the queen back to c8 to be able to defend the pawn on e6. Everything is going in my direction right now. By the way, if you take, take... Keep an eye on bishop f5, because awesome. that's also going to kick the queen backwards wow. and win a tempo for white. 
just simply nothing is going in a black's direction right now. It's very difficult to find the plan. That's why Begim is thinking for so long. That's why Alice looks so confident. Thank you, Christian. And of course, uh, the audiences aren't allowed into the playing hall, our fair play rules and things like that. But for those of you who are in the Central West End, Please come to the St. Louis Chess Club as Grandmaster Ilya Nizhnik is giving commentary on the games and you can ask him all kinds of questions. He's actually a very insightful and strong Grandmaster. I found that in his lectures, he does have a way of presenting games, making them look very, very easy and uh, you will enjoy his commentary. Uh, check it out in the Central West End here in St. Louis. Very strong grandmaster from Ukraine originally. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, not a position that Begum is enjoying whatsoever. This move, Bishop C2, really, I think, touches uh, the key, the, the core of the position, if you will, Bishop H, Bishop A4. And again, uh, Christian has been mentioning it. Uh, not that I'm proud, I'm not happy mm -hmm. about it, but I really think, the way. Yes, yeah, so, but... C7, C6 is almost required, and if you play bishop a4, uh, again, I'm not happy with the outcome of the opening, but I'm just thinking, how do I survive? How do I keep the game going? And again, uh, Begemann, this is a situation where a draw is as good as a loss. Exactly. Uh, yes. She'll lose the match uh, with the draw. But first you need to equalize, equalize right. the position. That's a problem sometimes. <laughs> if you are, I mean, you're not already hoping to win this game. Right. At the beginning, you have to find a way at least not to lose it immediately. Right. Because it, this is what can happen if you are very inaccurate in the opening. You just can lose the game uh, very, very quickly. And um, I don't know, yes, sir. in this type of situations, when you understand that any move you make is not really making your position better, right. would you try to play still fast or you will really take your time and you will go deeper into the, into the position trying to find the best, best possible move and continuation? You know, some players, they decide that no matter what, it's already bad. Let's at least keep let's some go. time on my clock. Yeah, you know, exactly. And maybe I'll and need go. it later. But begging, as, as far as we can see, she, she is down on time compared to her opponent. And uh, so what would you do? I'm of that school of thought that, yeah, I don't like, you know, I've got a bad position. Let's not make it absolutely terrible by having 30 seconds on exactly. my clock. You know, at least let me keep my 30 minutes and give me something to play for. Where can, maybe my advantage isn't on the board, maybe my advantage is on the clock. And yeah, I'm of that school of thought. Okay, let's play quickly and badly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and see what ahead. happens. <laughs> and stay ahead on the clock. She, uh, she has five. played C5. Uh, this move has all the negative attributes uh -huh. of, a, of, a, of, a of a Benoni. Oh, and, uh, yeah, that lovely, lovely B, B5 square. Uh, so that's Benoni with the bishop on B7. With the bishop on B7. Completely stuck. Right, stuck behind this pawn. And again, move knight B5 kind of plays itself because now as white, you have such a powerful grip on the center that you even start to think that maybe I can play on the king mm -hmm. side as well. Mm -hmm. My knight is going to be on b5, tying you to d6 square. It looks really bad. You can also take on d5 if black will take e takes d5. Maybe you can take with with a e pawn. C, or only or, with e or with, or a, with a c pawn. Yeah, I yeah. thought about yeah. this f4 or five later on. Exactly, maybe. and oh, that yeah. will come with mm -hmm. gusto. Yeah. No, this is looking really, really good for Alice. I mean, none of Lee. your pieces are in their correct position. The bishop right. on e7 should be on g7. The bishop on, the bishop b7. on b7, yes, b7 right. should, yes, be on g8. should definitely not be there. Right. The queen should not be here. Uh, lots of uh, misplaced your black pieces, pieces. I mean, you're like five, six, seven, ten pieces down compared to like a normal Benoni. Yeah. Exactly. Which is already bad. Right. <laughs> a Benoni is bad, and now you're seven, ten pieces down. Right. So it shows that she, the position is. It's how desperate right. the situation is. I have seen is. this happen so often that mm -hmm. a player needs to win with black. Yes. So it's not like they take excessive risk. It's like they take a they they make an opening dis decision to try to trick the opponent, but they end up tricking themselves. Uh, that's that's a and, problem. Uh, yes. Tigran Petrosian had this uh, great line where it was something like a player has. Pl 
played badly and lost badly. And he said to that opponent, that player, uh, you do understand it's easier to win from an equal position than from a bad position. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is how you start. Normally, you try first to... I, ho I heard this kind of uh, approach that... Uh, uh, about this approach that you first have to equalize your position if you play in black, and then if you get some chances, so uh, you try. Yes, still you have to play according to the position, which, which is hard to do, right. especially that you still think about the result. So when people say that chess is a lot about psychology, this is absolutely absolutely truth because mm -hmm. um, it affects so much even your moves you can see it even in this game exactly so c7 c5 and uh, what have you got for us Christian in the Fabi match absolutely yeah in uh, the open section I have to say Fabi is enjoying his position Levon is not Levon is really struggling to find the plan because he already missed a bit by exchanging the dark square bishop. And to be honest, I don't understand why, because I'm sure he is aware, I mean, he knows these plans. He's probably seen uh, this type of attack hundreds of times with the bishop on f4, provoke h6, sacrifice on h6, those type of situations. Without the dark square bishop, it is so much more difficult. And he played h4, by the way. But we were saying, hey, Levon, you should probably play h4 here, yeah, right? right? Keep the tension of the bishops like right. this. Now the queen, if you move it, then I take, and then you have to take back with the knight, maybe, perhaps, right? right? But at least I have this tension uh, gripping black's position. If you try to get rid of that H6, tension with provoke. h6, then I have the option, but at least I have the pawn on h6 that I can attack. Mm -hmm. He did not do that. He took, and I think that was a rushed decision, uh, b3. This gives me a hook. Thank you very much. You played b3. I'm going to go c4. I know okay. at some point I will get c4 in. That's exactly what he's uh, gunning for. That is Fabiano. Rook to c8. h4, finally. But where are you going right now, right? I don't have the pawn on h6 anymore. Rook to c7. Plan is easy. Rook to c8. Get the knight out. And then at the right moment, play for c4. Maybe not even get the knight uh, out from c6. Just go for c4. Knight to b6. I can also see ideas of uh, bringing that knight like that. It's just looking good. It really is looking good for Fabiano. I don't see white's attack. I see black's attack, <laughs> and it's coming fast. Right. It's almost knocking at the door. So right now, uh, Fabi in pole position to maybe strike in classical chess. Well, that would be a big the blow. black piece is huge yeah. because then he will have the white pieces exactly. with him only needing a, a draw to clinch the match. Let me play devil's advocate for a moment. In We're getting ahead of ourselves a yeah. bit because he hasn't won this game. No. But he's yes, exactly. Close. Just very good to position. Say, wait right. a minute. What about my peak level? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Look, he, will have, he will have the option to yes. come back right. from the elimination yeah, wait bracket. Second, wait a second. Actually, I like so much uh, Levon's uh, short today in the spirit of American Cup, actually, if you, uh, if I, we can see. I need another visual. I, yes. I didn't pick look, up. Look at the oh, red. red and it's like with uh, logos of American Cup. It oh, looks so nice, nice, actually. Can, From the other angle, I just also can, paid attention. Can, can I prank the players and uh, play the song Lady in Red? <laughs> uh, put it on the public announcement. Uh, Hugo nice. Boss. You Hugo Boss. Nice. Hugo. Look, that's nice. Oh, Levon is famous to be one of the uh, most fashion. Yes, chess players in fashion. the world. Fashion icon. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if I may, I would play queen e3 That's as what Levon. He did. That's what he did. Yeah. Uh, if you play rook I'll c8, go rook c8 right. I'll go rook c1. Which one? Uh, rook a1, c1. Mm -hmm. And if you play knight b6, I, I don't know if it's a good move or a bad one, I'll play bishop f1. Okay. So, the idea, so you're really trying to stop me from going c4. Precisely. Right? Also, if you do play c4, go ahead and put, oh, <laughs> not in this position because you'd hang your knight. I apologize. That's the problem. So yeah. if I do want to go c4, maybe I can do it right here. Yes, and uh, please do. Now, j j j just to show just the... Just to show yeah, 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 yeah. I want to take with a pawn, d3, Which take d3, c4, yeah. mm -hmm. and I wanted to play bishop f1. Okay. And that was my idea of queen e3 was to that's a very good that idea. Pin. No, yeah. no, that and you makes have a lot no, of sense. You don't have bishop, knight b6 because yeah, the yeah, queen, the is, queen is on e3. The so I have square. to be uh, careful. A little now, bit, yeah. Another idea, very typical of rook this. Rook c1, yeah. Rook c1 and now knight to d4. This is yes. not a very typical idea, right? Yes. Because you take, take, and we exchange the c pawns. And I never want to open up the c file. Doing so is only to your advantage. You, not looking uh, good. Yeah, yes. uh, and I'm not, I'm not eager now for this. Now the knight on c5 actually will have some whoop, serious whoop, whoop. threats, right? No. When you played the move knight d4, though, um, uh, Christian, 
in my mind, the knight doesn't kill me. It, it's okay on d4. <laughs> the knight hits c2. I've got it defended. I'll play h5. And I'll go, okay, how are you going to open up? Yes, yes, yes. And you said about the hook, sure. g4. <laughs> ah, now you're trying for something. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's take. Knight takes f3, queen. And now I can go c4, right? Finally, I can break you with c4. Uh, not so fast. I'll take on c4 and play bishop f1 again. Mm-hmm. Yep. Again, and just to be irritating. Back. Oops. Do I lose a piece? Bishop takes c4. What did I do wrong? I have a feeling some sacrifices are going to come. Yes. Big sacrifices. You weaken oh. wow. too much. Uh, okay, but try, nice. easy nice. to find for us with the uh, nice some the help. Engine. But I'm not sure if you can see uh, all this. The, the concept of bishop yes. f1 is wow. why I like queen e3. And maybe my he play, I was he too it. optimistic. He I, I believe it? he played it. I, I think queen e3 is on the board. Yes. Yes. Well, queen e3 is on the board. E3. So yeah. he understands that. Yes. Right. This is a good way to stop the move uh, c4. Right. And now Fabiano needs to find. And also knight d4 move. And right? also uh, no, he needs to find the knight d4 mm -hmm. move. Yes. Right. Okay. One more look. Rook c8. Sure. Rook By the way, I, I think I still can go knight d4 play. here. Yes, that's right. yeah. yes. Rook c8. Rook c1. Mm -hmm. Knight d4. Mm -hmm. I did like h5. By the way. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead Let's and play h6. h6 and let me play bishop f1. First, yeah, prep. best move, mm -hmm. best move in the position. Yeah, uh, as a prep. So, so not to weaken this g file and everything. Yes, exactly. remember at the, the end. To that stop yes. Yes. c4, yes. So as well. black is a little stuck. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're all dressed up, you're ready to play c4. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're ready for the action. But <laughs> for a party and... Ready for the gala. Uh, right, <laughs> right, the gala. right, right, right. <laughs> where is the gala? Exactly. Where, and Maybe where, knight b8 seems to be a very decent okay. Okay, oh, funny wow. you should mention knight b8 because it's a nice segue into the game between Nasi and Arena because nobody's told Arena that she's messed up. No, that's nobody a good says, she doesn't know that. By, yes, by, by the way, your knight on d4 Arena is a bad piece. You says who? Knight e2? Arena says, I love my knight on d4. I will play knight e7 to c6, Nasi traded knights, and Arena says, what's the problem? I've got my knight on d4. Uh, Aren't I doing well? And I'm sure at this exact moment, she's, again, unaware of any chess engine uh, knowledge. She's probably thinking, I I I've got a pretty decent position. What's my problem? The problem I'm is that I remember playing this kind of line with, with White, that at the moment you manage to push f5 and you are not punished for that, you feel fine with White. You, know? yeah. you also know Nazi probably knows that she's doing well. That's a right. problem. You may think that it's okay, but Nazi yeah. knows that she's doing well and she will try to use the fact that she right. um, pushed her pawn so far on, on the king's on side. The king side. Anastasia, because we have such a wonderfully calm day today, we get a chance to engage our audience and we took a poll. Well, we nice. took a poll. We asked you who you thought would, would advance, advance to the Champions and, Bracket Final. And, and the answers are... Oh. <laughs> but, uh, Karyuana and Wesley had the most uh, votes. Yes, and then Karyuana. we have 20% with uh, Karana and Ray Robson. And, and only 3% are really, uh, Wesley so, yes. The, what I find intriguing is at this moment, Ray Robson and Levon Aronian looking good. Yes, I think so. Have the least chances but, uh, according to our uh, <laughs> audience. What I find intriguing is yes. that we misspelled Caruana's name, but I'm sure we can get that <laughs> fixed. You know, I think, uh, yes, okay. I we shouldn't it, yes. do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Caruana. But oh my goodness. I'm glad that you saw oh, the challenge. Uh, <laughs> I spotted it. And you spotted it. Well, not good, good, good. And what about the ladies? I was okay. I got the open, but what what was the poll? How did the poll uh, do for the ladies? Maybe there was no. Oh, because Maybe Alice, there was no. Alice and um, Arena. Arena do They're looking so pretty good. good. It's very I mean, difficult to bet. Yeah. It's really hard. Exactly. For the moment, but we don't know still the end of this game. Okay, I wanted to jump in. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4. And boy, if I have to say it one more time, uh, I'm going to get tired <laughs> of myself. <laughs> yeah. What about bishop h6? I mean... Uh, I... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big threat. Like, again, we, we checked already what happens to you if you make castling. It's yeah. very bad. So I don't know what black should do. Take... 
Ah, actually, it's kind of funny because I was I was hoping you would play Bishop E5. E5, yes. Let's let's and do so. And then, much like the live game, my my dream was to play C3. And push this knight back. Yes, push the knight six. back, and in a in and a what? sense. Ah, knight F3. Uh, catch the bishop. The bishop on E5 and be able to play bishop g7. Knight takes e5 followed by bishop g7 mm -hmm. is what I want to play. Uh, Nasi started with c3. Uh -huh. uh, basically, I think both ladies respect the knight on d4 and say, hey, look, you know, you try to maintain your knight on d4. I want it to go away. Yes. Please leave me alone. <laughs> knight dropped back to c6, and I'm pretty sure uh, Nasi is intending simply to play knight F3. Uh, not necessarily the case, but if I'm white, I know my king is a little bit strange. I, I, I don't want to push the pawn in front of my king, the, my, my, my pawn shield in front of my king, but here I would aspire to play the move D4. Yeah. See, B4, no way, no way am I allowing um, B4 capture C3. Of course, yes, I will you play C4 to. and close. Uh, the queen side. Well, we've come in to uh, that part of our show. Where, where we have... Where's my Q, Q boutique? Oh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. This is great. Yes. This is great. Uh, it's time for Q boutique, for shopping. It's exactly. Time for shopping. shopping time. As we prepare for our break, we have our 2024 American Cup sport hat. Introducing the 2024 American Cup Sport Hat, a stylish way to remember the prestigious event. Made with a cotton bill and front mesh, this hat offers both comfort and breathability. Breathability, oof, oh, hmm. that's tough. Fancy with an words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your head's breathing, man. <laughs> with an adjustable back strap, it's the perfect fit for anyone. Own a piece of history with this exclusive accessory. With that, we're going to take a break, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Exclusive. Uh, so today's Community Day. All the persons of the U.S. Championship are going to schools around St. Louis and you know, teaching kids um, openings, end games, uh, tactics, doing some fun stuff like hand and brain, some simuls, and uh, we just finished our first class and it was really fun. I see kids taking the um, skills that they're learning in chess, whether that be critical thinking, decision-making skills, planning skills, and I see them applying that throughout the rest of their school day, whether it's in classes or sports, or even just how they interact with one another and with their teachers. I play with my auntie, my mom, my sisters, Sometimes on the weekends, like, we go to the park and we play. They be begging me to teach them. I, like, show them, like, new stuff, like, new openings. I show them that. And so I'm trying to see them get better and try to beat me. What I like about chess is just trying to have fun and learn new things. And maybe I'll get more into it and it'll maybe be my full career. I heard that if you play chess, you make bad decisions in life. So I always want to make bad decisions in life. I can tell you that they've engaged more in uh, critical thinking. They are looking analytically at moves and trying to think ahead. I like the um, complexity of chess, how you have to think about every single move you make, like every move you make, whether it's going to put your king in check, whether it's going to put, put your anything in danger, whether it's just a move that you make. Everything counts in the long run. I like um, how it makes me use my critical thinking, makes me look at the whole board. I think it's teaching them to be persistent. You know, we have a lot of students who it takes them like it may take a few weeks or even months in chess club to master a particular strategy or skill. Um, and what I think that teaches kids is even if they don't get it the first time around, or even if it's difficult the first time around, um, it's worth sticking to it. Well, one thing's for certain, without the St. Louis Chess Club, we would not have chess instructors because I don't know if you all know this, but there is a critical shortage of teachers and educators, and especially those in areas that are 
not core content area. And because of the St. Louis Chess Club collaboration, we have people who come in here working with students who want to work with them. Today with the experience of the Grandmaster Community Outreach Day, I came up and I'm like, well, what's a Grandmaster? And they were like, oh, you don't know what a Grandmaster is? And they were able to explain that and they recognize the importance and the seriousness. I mean, it's a sport, it's a profession. And so they're able to see things outside of the sports that we typically promote in school. It makes me feel good because like learning stuff like this will help me learn, help me build my problem solving skills, help me build strategy and like you know, help my brain. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids in schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States and is among the best in the world. Thanks to co-founders Dr. Jeannie Cairn Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, the St. Louis Chess Club is a non-profit organization committed to promoting the game of chess locally and internationally. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area, promoting cognitive development, critical thinking, concentration, and analytical skills. The St. Louis Chess Club welcomes chess lovers of any age and skill level to come and enjoy the game of chess. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. Championships and the American Cup, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players, including the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, Cairns Cup, and many more. All tournaments can be streamed via our YouTube and Twitch channels that also include over 2,000 chess lectures for anyone to enjoy. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, merchandise discounts, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. Landmarked by the world's largest chess piece sitting outside our front door, the World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy, including various exhibitions, monthly concerts, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, there is something for everyone to learn here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Enjoy free admission to our rotating exhibitions in our galleries and sign up for chess events, 
family-friendly programming and art classes. And don't forget to stop by our award-winning gift shop, Q Boutique, and shop a wide selection of chess-related merchandise. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States, boasts the world-class St. Louis Chess Club and the World Chess Hall of Fame. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online for chess merchandise, autograph collectibles, chess campus souvenirs, and much, much more. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. And all purchases go right to benefiting new exhibitions and programs at the World Chess Hall of Fame, dedicated to exploring chess and its immense impact on art and culture. Located on the first floor of the World Chess Hall of Fame, enjoy a shopping experience like no other and become everyone's favorite gift giver. If you can shop in store, make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We created the Select Chess Training Program and the Junior Select Chess Training Program in order to elevate the skill level in students across the St. Louis area. These students receive professional training from Grandmaster Verusia Nikobian. Other programs include Chess Cops, a partnership with the St. Louis Police Department, looking to improve relationships between at-risk kids and police officers in the St. Louis area, with over 600 students playing chess over the board since 2019. The St. Louis Chess Club has also created a Chess Merit Badge for the Scouts BSA, quickly becoming one of the most popular badges, with more than 250,000 Scouts earning the badge since 2011. Students of chess can also pick up a copy of Read and Write Chess. Thanks to club co-founder Dr. Jeannie Karen Sinkfield, anyone can learn how to understand chess notation in no time. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org slash education. Welcome back to the studio. We have the American Cup here and uh, let's have a look at the brackets. Absolutely. Where do we stand, Anastasia? And uh, Fabiano Caruana is playing against Limon Aronian. They made the draw in the, in, in the first classical and then rapid game. And now they're playing second classical game. All to play for in that match. And Ray Robson is leading in the match against Wesley. So yesterday he defeated Wesley in the second rapid game. So it's one and a half to half. Two players have been eliminated in the champions bracket. Who are they? Uh, so, Grigory Oparin and Sam Shankland are eliminated from the tournament at the moment. So, Sam Savian and uh, Linier Domingos, both of them are waiting for the opponents after today's matches. The losers of the matches in the champions bracket will go, will play with them. down to the elimination bracket. And in the women's uh, ladies championship. In the ladies championship, Irina Krush is playing against Nazi Paikidze. Um, she is leading in this match 2-0. Nazi needs to win two games in order to stay in the match. Right. Alice Lee is uh, also leading in, in her match against uh, Begim to her 2-0 so far. And uh, the position also looks pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Let's check and the in elimination. the elimination? Anna Zatonsky and Tati Vabrahamian left wow. the tournament already because they lost their matches against uh, Zoe Tang and uh, um, Jennifer Yu uh, respectively. So Zoe Tang and Jennifer Yu are waiting for the opponents from the Champions bracket. Those who will lose today their matches will play in the elimination bracket tomorrow. A big shout out to Zoe Tang, the eighth seed, staying alive in uh, the elimination bracket. Very impressive indeed. As there we see the spy cam 
view of the game between Alice Lee, and, and we think Alice Lee has a fantastic position against Begum and Alice needing only a draw. Boy, she is truly in the driver's seat. Let me just bring that position up on the board. It's it feels like it's a Benoni, but when you look at it, it's like a Benoni that's gone completely wrong. When we left it, we saw the move c5, knight b5, takes on d5, e takes d5. Here, I actually have a hard time making the decision which way to recapture because both c4 takes d5 as well as e takes d5 is so compelling. Here, it might be one of those cases of playing the match score. Mm -hmm. because e4 takes d5 is a way of keeping absolute control and not allowing any... Contraplay uh, yes. or uh, symmetrical position as well, right? Exactly, so. exactly. No imbalance. Exactly. Knight g4, uh, searching for some play. Maybe on a good day, the bishop will come to f6, the knight will come to e5, but really it just feels like, strategically speaking, Alice has got everything going in her favor. Cute little tactical You cannot move even there. take on c4, yes, in and this position. Why yes. not? Queen d3. Ouch! Queen d3. Those, happen, yes, those nasty uh, checkmate and one threats uh, pick up the knight on c4, so the pawn on uh, c4 is, is, indi yes, is indirectly defended. And after castles, do we have a move? Begum to play. No, not knight takes c4, no. pardon me. But what can she play now? Maybe some moves like g6. <laughs> I don't want to play this move. Though. I just want to create at least one thread uh, here and I maybe move my bishop to g7. I just played c5. I, yes. I, I think you're, you're making a good point. Uh, like You do want to relocate this bishop, g7, g6. She did play f5. It was a similar idea. Now she threatens to take on c4. Right. Takes away a square. Yes. Okay. Um, can I get here? I mean, I can pause. I take on e5 and go yes. d6? Yes, here Oops. I pause because it's looking move, so tempting. The move b3, just to defend the pawn on c4, is natural, of course, but is more chances offered by this? It's, it's a big change, right? Because right. that light square bishop on b7 now finally has a life. Right. Why not bishop f6 maybe... because of knight c7? And maybe on a good day, the knight will come to d4. Uh, no, I didn't choose bishop f6 because I was a bit afraid of knight d5. Okay. the knight was going to come and tickle this pawn. So I, I, I dropped the bishop back to d8 just in to, to, to defend, defend some squares. Yes, yeah. Now here, I would think that white's doing very, very well. Knight but, d5 still, maybe. But yeah, but at the same hand, I do realize, well, I... Given some counter chances, the bishop on b7, as you were mentioning, Christian, it, it, it lives. There's some chances, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think knight c7. Which man. one? Which knight? Probably this guy? this one. But then you take and then knight d4. I wanted to take yes, and take knight the pawn, Yes, it's knight on d4. If, Sorry, if, if knight sense. comes to d4, yes, it's... It you know, be. even something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Well, exactly yes. like this, yeah. Because otherwise, I have some big threats. Um, Even at the cost of the pawn, mm -hmm. this knight is pretty impressive figure. Yes. It's such <laughs> yes. a strong piece. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. At this moment, this pawn doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, uh, playing the match situation, I would probably play the move b2, b3 myself. Although, is there something to be... How about this? How about this as a, as a compelling idea? If I can kick your queen... Let's say I get your now. Now, you, now okay. it's a different story. Yes. Much different because I've got knight c7. And bishop cannot go to d8 also. And knight e6. And knight e6. Wait a and minute. just as you said, the bishop can't go to d8. So maybe queen, pardon me, bishop a4 with the idea of uh, a jump. Like this knight would be C4? ideal. Mm -hmm. knight right? C6. This is my tempo. <laughs> and, and oopsie then... daisy. <gasps> Yes. Knight, knight takes b2. Oh, I have bishop e. Thanks to... And there is a check, yes? yes. Intermediate check. Look at this. <laughs> oh, why did bishop I play f5? Why did I play f5? <laughs> bishop e6 check and I do lose yes. the piece. So bishop a4 looks also tempting. Jump in, Christian. Oh, it looks very tempting. Yes, I, I think after like f5, yes. bishop it... a4 is... But what else? I mean, you can start with rook to e1 and perhaps have some ideas Isn't of knight, knight takes c4. At last a threat? 
Maybe, maybe. Even though knight takes four after rook e1, maybe queen e2. Oh, I see. As an idea as well. I see. I have a lot of tactics. Oh, yeah. No, it feels like you have control. I'm not sure which one is the correct one, but I do have options. Yes. At the same time, this is something that I definitely want to avoid, right? Okay. As white. So mm. perhaps bishop to a4 is... I, I just feel like bishop a4, just kicking the queen back and then having this idea of d6, it feels powerful. Exactly. I, in fact, it looks so powerful, I, I wouldn't want to allow it. Maybe I could play bishop f6. But now I can transition that knight from b5 to uh, e6. <laughs> to e6, oh. and we know those knights. Oh, oh, oh. Those First of all, you have to go to c8. Because f5. Otherwise you lose yes, on you f5. Yes, you lose the pawn. So right. queen c8 and then knight Not e6. Not happiness. Not that, looking yes. good. That knight on e6. We were just talking about it the other day, that a knight on the sixth rank what is worth about, an exchange. Yes, but what about knight c4 here? Good sacrifice. Yes. Uh, if you're going to go down, might as well go down in glory. Something like queen e2, maybe. Yes. Or... No, I think about even knight f8, knight b2, queen h5. No, it's too much. Yes, maybe so, I'm dreaming. Say it again, which one? <laughs> yes, I thought about knight f8 and queen h5. Or, but it's, it's... it's one of those positions in which, to be honest, you don't even calculate. Not now. Because you mm -hmm. feel like After knight b2. the tactics knight b2. should work in your favor. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Like bishop e5 because is one way, queen e2. positional yes. grip. They uh, should work in your favor. Exactly. You know, if chess is a correct game. Right. We not. hope it's a correct game it's right. and it should work in your favor. <laughs> well, sure. Well, sometimes you just have to say, stop, stop, stop. Give me a visual. And you look, you get the bird's eye view. There's a rook on a8. There's a knight on b8. There's a bishop on b7. These three pieces really aren't playing. And from that point of view, you know, once white plays queen e2 and rook d1, complete mastery of the board. Uh, yeah. So it, it's only... You don't Fair. need to. You don't even need to check all these tactics, right? Exactly. You just, you just know develop that, your pieces and that's right. it. Right. Exactly. I have been told Arena is in trouble. Shall we? Yes, take of a, course. Let's go. Take a look at what's going on in, in that uh, and crucial match. And who told match. you that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Var. <laughs> Var. He's a, he's a man with the knowledge. The all-seeing eye. Whoa. Okay, yeah. Nasi made an, a, a very impactful decision. She decided to give up her dark square bishop. I always thought, uh, seriously, too. the bishop, bishop was coming to h6. h6. In How every did variation. How pawn come to c4? Wait, 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 wait. Yes, okay, yes, yes. No, this so, was so... So when we left it, we left it at these parts, and a pair of knights had been traded on the d4 square. Nasi said, okay, now I'm really all set. I really do want to play d4. Um, Irina said, I want to stop you. C4. Keeping mm -hmm. the position nice and closed on the king queen side. After all, our king does require shelter. The knight dropped back the d4. And here again, I, I was thinking bishop h6. Always, always, always. A very unexpected wow. capture. Bishop takes d4, pawn takes d4. And I think we just caught up with our with the players. Now, why did she do this? <laughs> 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 I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, Actually, this is why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> yes, I mean, that, that's a good point. I mean, like, probably there is some tactics here also. Like, I'm looking, look, this king is still in the center. True. Do we have some, like, g5 even ideas? I don't know. I mean, I start to dream. Well, let's have a look. Yes, g5. Uh, what well, she played oh, king b1. She, she decided just, just to By the way, keep the position. Yes, in okay. the words of Tony Miles, mm -hmm. tucking in the king, that, that makes very great sense. Uh, black is in no, does not, I want to emphasize with, you know, three double exclamation mark points, does not want to open up mm -hmm. the king side by, by allowing ideas like rook to g1, bishop h3. All you're doing is, is helping. That's white. why I thought that maybe we have time to play this move g5, and, because I was not sure, like, if you want to take it, and I wanted to... I'm not happy with the king, so let's just say... No, I... Not now, maybe before I play oh, king b1, like immediately g5. Oh, yes. okay, Nasi, in this position, yes. Nasi did play the move king... King b1. Take, king she b1, played king b1 yes. but here, your, your alternative yes, I, was to play g5. Yes, I mean, I just somehow... I was attracted to this move. To yeah. close this bishop, will you play bishop b5 or what? No? Or if you take pawn, pawn grabber. I am a pawn grabber, but even I <laughs> have some concerns, uh, yes. Yes, I, yeah. with, with trembling hands, <laughs> I want to say. Okay, but you know what? I'm in a situation where 
Maybe you can take with the queen, you mean. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to be facing difficulties no matter what. Yes, I understand. I might you as want well... to put this bishop on the six years to cover. Yes, so if you do continue with your attack down mm -hmm. the e-file, I'll have bishop e6 as... Yes. As, uh... mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, like h4 and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yes, I think she made the right decision just to keep her... But, but I do like your f5 move. My question might be... Bishop h3, yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Like, I would especially love for you to castle so that I could take in this oh, yes, knight and h4, mm -hmm. queen f4, and I start to rub my hands gleefully uh, together. Yes. We're having, it's a day that we can enjoy, we can interact with our audience, yes. and something from social media. You, you've posed some questions, I think, for our audience. <laughs> let's check, let's check. Let's take a look. Yes, from Martina on Instagram. How and with whom did you learn chess as a kid? Anastasia. Shall I answer yes, this please. question first? Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, let me remember. I remember that uh, the first game, the, the first time I played chess, it was not according to the rules of chess. <laughs> it was something very strange. Yours was not a unique experience. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I think see. everybody had that. Is this legal? Is this illegal? Yeah, I mean, it was something, probably some mix of chess and checkers or something like that right. in, the, in the kindergarten. Garden. But you know, I'm, I started to play chess when I was studying at school. And, um, How old were you? Back nine, something like okay. that. Oh, pretty old. A little, little you know, late, for, for little late by st today's standards. standards yeah. yes. And um, we had in school many different extra lessons, and uh, including chess. And I started to attend those lessons. And um, I, I cannot say that it was my favorite. St still, I, I cannot say so. But <laughs> right. okay. It's a joke, of course. But it's somehow, slowly, I also uh, started to study in the chess school like more professionally. And uh, but, but again, it was not my priority for a long time. Yes, yeah, sir. What about you? Yeah, so no no mom, no dad teaching you no, in the family? No, I played was there a little bit with my father, but right. after I started to beat him quite soon, he, he, threw he you said, out the house. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> enough is enough. So right. it didn't last long. It didn't last long. Uh, Christian, I'll, I'll, I'll answer later, but Christian, who... How did you learn to play chess? For me, it was my dad. Yes, yes. yes. That's, uh, yeah. By quite a funny occurrence, actually. Um, I was in my last semester, I want to say, of kindergarten. And I really last hated it. Last semester of kindergarten. Last semester. I've what, never heard. <laughs> whatever that meant. After whatever exams, that last semester. After I passed my exams. Spoken like a university chess coach. Correct, correct. Last <laughs> semester of kindergarten. I'm dealing with a lot of semesters <laughs> nowadays. I understand how, uh, how it goes. Uh, Basically, I was just about to go to uh, school. Real. Right, but I was still in kindergarten, and I really hated kindergarten because they were forcing us to take a nap in the afternoon. Yes, and I, I had also too much it. energy. I had too much energy. I had to do something. I had to play around with the other kids, so I didn't like that. Right. And then my dad was okay. Look, I'll pull you out from kindergarten in your last semester if. before you graduate from right. kindergarten. <laughs> if you learn chess with me, if you allow me to teach you chess, okay. basically. Because he's a chess coach. So it was a, a negotiation. Master. A negotiation. I didn't really want, I didn't really know what chess is at that point, right? Better than that. That was five, uh, when I was five uh, years and a half, and basically the rest is history. I uh, decided to go with chess. And you've been in a slump. <laughs> I know, ever since, ever since. Maybe it was better to stay in kindergarten. kindergarten. You never know, yes? <laughs> no, I never came back to kindergarten. For that was it. me, it was actually a kind of a funny experience. My family had moved from Virginia Beach, Virginia, back to Seattle. And somewhere in the transition, our TV got lost. This was very, very, very bad news because my Olympic hero, Mark Spitz, was in the Olympics, and he would go on to win seven gold medals. Seven gold medals. I needed a TV desperately. The neighbor, uh, a paraplegic, his name was David Chapman, had a TV. Very, very important. And, <laughs> and in those days, the, the uh, Olympics came on not on a prescribed time, not 2.30 to 3.30. It was a satellite, and sometimes it came on, sometimes it didn't. So you'd have to watch throughout the whole day, and then you'd get a half an hour, an hour. And uh, in between the Olympics, we were watching TV. We just had it in the background. He had a closet full of games, so he taught me backgammon. And he beat me, beat me, beat me. As soon as I won one game, that's it. <laughs> so Next game came story. out of the closet. <laughs> And we were, we were going very, very nicely through his whole closet full of games. He pulled out chess. He destroyed me. Okay. A few more games, he destroyed me. 
he kept beating me. And I said to him, David, how did you get so good? He said, well, at the University of Washington in Seattle, they have a coffee shop, and the good players go there. I'm not a good player. So I said, what? You're great. And I went there, and I saw them pounding a chess clock, and they beat me worse than David. <laughs> wow. They were really, really good. And this idea that uh, I should win just one game mm -hmm. it, it, it stuck with me. I lost, it, it was terrible. I lost so often, I didn't even know what the word victory meant. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember this. I set up that I sacrificed a bishop and I made a perpetual check. And I did it about 20 times. And I said, well, well, well what happens? And he says, well, I guess it's a tie. Tie! Ah, finally. <laughs> finally. We didn't know what three-move repetition but was. But were you not disappointed, Yasser, to lose so many games? Because many kids, they give up on this stage. You know, they don't want to continue right. simply because you it breaks your ego and you keep losing. I mean, it's not right. the great feeling. So. It, 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 it truly is not. And I think if I hadn't been a diver, mm -hmm. I might have stopped playing chess. But in diving, you're going to do lots of belly flops. <laughs> I see. And it's not going to be pleasant. But you recover and you go on. And so that was it for me. I just really, I just wanted to beat David. I think that was like the motivation. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> That's that great the motivation. Then you got other uh, players you wanted to beat, right? Well, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then the crazy part was I had no idea, no conception whatsoever that there were tournaments openings and books and it, 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 it was it was like a discovering a a world that had been hidden you know like yes. some of these fantasy uh narnia or something like that you know inside the wardrobe a strange and and beautiful world yeah great and here we are yes sir yes <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it's all started with tv <laughs> explaining what's going on in these uh, great uh, events like the american cup and i'm just bringing up the game of of a nazi and we do have castles as expected uh at, at long last uh she's declared her intentions of putting her king on the king's side do you still like your move g5 I'm thinking about it now that it, it's on the board, yes. But yes. maybe there is also another option like H4, H5. And this, this is what she played, yes, immediately. Like on cue, <laughs> West. on cue. And that's it, because yes, H4, uh, H5. It, from uh, Nasi's point of view, uh, she absolutely desperately needs to win the game. And if you're willing to try to op win a pawn and open up the G file... No, 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 you better don't even be think my about guess. it. Yes, yeah, please. Be my guess. But H4, on the other hand, really is, is throwing the gauntlet down uh, to Irina. If you let Nasi play H4, H5, H5 takes G6, it won't be too long before we're signing the score sheet. Yes, because the H file will be open and so the pieces will just jump there. The attack plays itself. Uh, jump in uh, uh, on this one. Uh, how big advantage do you think? Oh, I'm not Nazi jumping has? on that one at all. No? That one is done and dusted. The advantage is high. It's really high. It's really high. I mean, I don't know whether she will be able to convert it, but you can see it that it's quite high. Uh, All and Irina she has needs to win to both games. Yeah. Well, Irina has to make Do, a draw. Yeah. Nazi has to win both games today. Exactly. And she will have, even if she wins this one, an almost insurmountable task because she needs to win it with the black pieces in the rapid game. You right. know how strong Irina is with the white pieces. Very difficult task ahead. We've seen Anna Zatansky win one game, right. but the second one, too right. much to ask for. So this is, well, right now, a good first step for Nas right. if she manages to win this one. Guys, let's go back to the Please. championship bracket of the open section because I have to say, for a second, I underestimated Fabi. I thought that he's getting himself into practical danger. But there's something about this man in this tournament and in this period of uh, his chess career. He feels almost unbeatable. Take a look at this. Queen to f4. Knight to d4, he's finding all the right moves. This idea okay. with knight to d4, rook to c1. Knight takes, knight takes, and c4. Makes a lot of sense. Take, take, and now rook to d1. And at this point, I was looking at the position and I felt like white is on the verge of turning the tables because it's not as easy to, the only way 
to keep an advantage for Black, by the way, is the way he played in the game, by taking first and then jumping with a rook on c3. But I was looking at the position and I really felt like knight c5 is also a very, very natural, compelling. Very compelling, right? Right. But what he had to understand is that you want at least one of the rooks to join the attack ah. on the queen side first before you can go knight to c5. In fact, it's very easy to get into a worse position if you go knight c5. I go just simply back, defend the pawn on b3. Let's say you uh, go bishop to b7 or something along those lines in this position. Then I go knight to d4 and suddenly, where is your attack, right? right. These rooks are kind of stuck behind the knight. knight you have B5. to lose a lot of tempies. The knight is coming to b5. You no longer have the play that you once had only a few moves ago. He understood that, and he understood it very quickly. He took rook to c3, the best path forward. But it's also not easy because you see this rook landing on d6, it starts to become a bit dangerous. Right. It's a back and forth affair. Rook to e3, of course, you don't want, you don't have time. Not that you don't want, you just simply mm. don't have time for knight not to d4 three. because of knight to d3. Ouch. Exactly. So he played the move rook to e3, bishop to b7, still best move, knight to d2. Both of the players are playing the best move. But as you can see, with the inclusion of this rook on c3 and this rook passive on mm -hmm. e3, by the way, you can never take on c3. You do <laughs> not think about no. touching that rook. No. You take that rook on c3, you allow me to create that passed pawn. That's going to be bad news for no, you, No, it's right? just a defensive way of holding just b3, hold b3 uh, pawn. Yeah. But now the rook on d6 doesn't really have a clear target. The bishop uh, jumped back to b7. We're going to exchange this. This knight is not on d4 ready to jump to b5 or c6. Is on d2 in a defensive stance. The knight on c5 is putting a lot of pressure. I have to say, with the rook on c3 and the knight on c5, with the rook ahead on c3, it just looks really good for uh, black. So definitely Fabiano right now uh, feeling good about his position. He's the one with the black pieces that putting the pressure on his opponent, has a better position and a golden opportunity to try to uh, draw first blood in this match. Uh, uh, this is the only match where we're absolutely guaranteed of a rapid game That's uh, right. because of 1-1 and Wesley so trailing by a point he could potentially lose the classical game and that match would be over. By the way, h7, h6 um, in the current position I just saw was played. Also one of by, the best moves uh, in yes. the position. Yes, nice move. Prophylactics. Right. Uh, turning our attention to Alice Lee versus uh, Begum because it really looks to our eyes like Alice is in a great uh, shape to win the match at without this, any, additional uh, without any games. further games because mm -hmm. she's playing from a position of strength. All she needs is, is a draw. Uh, castles, f5. You had mentioned the move rook e1. Uh, Christian as a way of just enjoying the the, the position for white, uh, not worrying about the pawn on c4. You have ideas of queen e2, bishop a4. Begum believed Alice and said, "I'm not going to grab that pawn on g6. I'm 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 no student of Yasser School of Chess that <laughs> says grab a pawn." No, no, no. She went back knight g6, and uh, Alice said, "You know what?" Go ahead, if you like. You're 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 welcome to take my bishop. Oh, I actually thought I saw queen d2. Mm -hmm. uh, my bad. Uh, I would imagine queen d2 is a very strong move. You just defend the bishop, and look at this. I mean, rook e6, pressuring the pawn on d6, followed by rook e1, and. My goodness, when I say the position plays itself, does it ever? This looks like a great. Uh, position for Alice Lee. It seems there is one tactical trick in this position. What like am I missing? White can take on this seven right away instead of queen d2. Let's have a look. Ooh. This is huge. Yes, the idea is Ooh. just that this bishop is protecting d6, and it after d6, if you take yes with the uh, queen, it's clear what's going on. I just won a pawn for yes. free, mm -hmm. and if I take with the knight, I take the knight. I think it's. You take with the knight or the bishop? I mean, it, I it's great. I think with the bishop still. I I mean, with, bishop. Bishop. with the bishop, yes. Yeah. With, bishop. with the bishop, yes. I mean, it just looks horrifyingly bad. Uh, <laughs> still, <laughs> it you know, it, it's, it's a decision that she needs to make. Right. right. And it's not such an easy decision because mm -hmm. you are, you know you have a great position no matter what Truly, you do. Truly, yeah. 
Yeah. But now you have at least sacrifice momentarily. Probably the idea is that it's hard even to play for black. Yes, it's now. But yeah. Which piece are moving? Uh, <laughs> Let's see, like rookie for, eight, for, yes. for, for me, I hate being in pins. I just, yes, it's a visceral moving. dislike. So let me get you out think of you're this. You're getting away? Yes. <laughs> I'm not getting out. I, I feel like the bunny rabbit who's making like three hops and a, and a and splash. Crashes. <laughs> yeah. Crash like queen H5. I even like queen H5. Yes, this is the move I'm thinking also. Like queen H5 to wow. bring uh, one more piece. Rookie. One is coming and uh, Knight C7 I don't know. is coming. Knight C7, and if you play G6, you don't want to do this, no? No, no. Yeah. It's like, uh, dear Lord, make it stop. <laughs> this is this is a terrible position. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, that is a very, very nice exchange sacrifice. sacrifice but maybe she uh, doesn't need it. Uh, yes, I like also yeah, Queen D2 and just. I, you know, it, it's funny. I was always taught. You know, you want to develop everything and connect the rooks. Mm -hmm. So the move queen d2 was just like connect the rooks, <laughs> you know, because your next move it's is simple, going to be yes. rook e6. And mm -hmm. it's sort of like, by the way, rook takes e7 is still on tap. Yeah, it's I mean, you can like still any, play this move later on, right? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, especially if you were to make, for example, a move like queen d8, then you just feel like, wow, I got queen d2 for free. Rook e6, yes. This, this, nice. is, this mm -hmm. is overwhelming. Not so overwhelming on the clock. Um, though the yeah. players are more or less consequential. Yes. How about Ray Robson yeah. and. Uh... Yeah, same story in this match. Alice Lee just needs to make a draw in this game exactly. and she will just win the match and it's gonna be over for Begim. Exactly. But at the but. same time, guys, this is a classical game. Let's not forget these two ladies are fighting for everything this year. We have mm -hmm. no leap yet. Remember that they're fighting for the spot. Right, on the June rating list. Look, if I can beat you and gain some rating as well, you know, this is my competition for those spots. I exactly. might as well try to do the best I can, right? right? This is what they're thinking about. So if she has a winning position, mm -hmm. she's not going to take the draw. She's going to try to win exactly. uh, that one. Let's take a look at this one because I think we kind of left it long in the background ago, yes. long time mm. ago and we weren't really Slow sure boil. what the strategies were for each player. We left it off some somewhere around here. Yes, Rook, Rook to D8, to eight, yes. Bishop to D7. I think this was a new Yasser. We're getting a bit too ambitious. You're like, oh, <laughs> Bishop to E8, Bishop B6, Black is going to be better. Guess what? Queen to E4 came. <laughs> so now we understand the strategy. Look, I'm not trying to give you any chances to create imbalances right. in the position. Let's exchange the queens and maybe let's make a draw. And then your Wesley win. is in a must win situation. You're right. in a must win situation. Sure, if you can beat me, good for you. We equalize the blitz. score, we go to the tie breaks. But if you cannot, then that's a problem. So this is what we have. And it does feel like Wesley is not really upset about that. He's like, look, I'm going to take my chances with the white pieces in a rapid game. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can beat you there. With the black pieces, we know. My repertoire doesn't allow me to create any sort of imbalances. I don't want to lose any classical rating. So I'm just going to play it safe. I like this king exactly of one move, said. actually. King of one to prevent, uh, to threat d5, yes? Yeah. <laughs> so there is no bishop h2 check. And no bishop like that. Yes, so yeah. just yeah. like how he played that's, here. That's the yes. point. King if one, you yes. go d5 here, exactly. then bishop h2 is a big problem, <laughs> yeah. obviously. And mm -hmm. a little bit of a discovery problem. Discovery and you lose the exchange. So no, definitely both of these players, the strategy seems to be quite simple. They play it safe. They want to go to the rapid time control where Wesley is going to be in a must-win situation. Right. I just uh, looking, uh, thanks again to uh, Ben Underwood for this, uh, looking how Wesley So and Ray Robson do against one another in classical uh, chess, uh, but more importantly, how they did against one another in rapid, because in case we, well, we will have uh, rapid, uh, in guess. case of a draw. And remarkably, Wesley has eight wins, Ooh, mm -hmm. 10 draws, three losses. So uh, Wesley might really uh, uh, like his chances in the rapid, but guess what in the blitz? What about Two blitz? losses for Wesley. Ah, so Ray actually outperforms him in blitz. It outperforms okay. him in blitz. Good. And uh, by the way, again, we got a little social media break. Yes. Uh, let's see what we've uh, posed to our social, uh, to our audience. Yes, so from Martina. Martina. Yeah. Yes. Do you still study chess and what are you still doing to improve? Nice question. <laughs> Please don't forget to follow our accounts on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, St. Louis Chess Club. Okay. How do you still study chess? <laughs> 
uh, from time to time, yes, I read some books um, right. and just I like to follow like what's going on right. a little bit and check some videos because I still have some students. It doesn't mm. I don't have too many, but I have like a few students right. and you, you need to know what's going on. Mm. I got uh, recently books from as a present from Bo Boris Gelfand yeah. uh, because I contributed with some photos mm. and uh, they're really good. Yeah, really, really good. Very Here, difficult my ones. Career. <laughs> yes, 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 but, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy my yes, career. Yes, yes. No, unfortunately, it's more about the endings. Yes, sir. I suffer okay. a little bit, but a um, lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. I, I mean, I feel pity that I didn't have those books 20 years ago. <laughs> Precisely. And I, Anastasia, that's a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, today, there's so many more tools, especially the beautiful application software tools. Like if you had trouble winning a bishop and knight, now yeah. you have a you have a, it's a software that yes. just helps you, you know, get that pattern like that. Exactly. I'm using it also for students a lot, ah. you know, and for kids. I have a daughter who also plays chess, so chess kid program, chess.com, I mean, give you so many different options, all those right. workouts. When you want to uh, give a checkmate with a bishop and knight 100 mm -hmm. times, you can do it. You don't need exactly. to look for people around uh, the corner, you know, <laughs> and check with exactly. whom you can actually taste it. So what about you? Well, for me, uh, no, I don't study at all in the sense of what these top grand masters do with their lives. They, they, they really, really are working very, very hard. I want to say I'm much more enjoying the chess world than I've ever enjoyed it before. Like in the past, I was always like, I felt it was a job. I had to work hard. I had to train hard and so on. Today, I can enjoy the games. And I love the fact that I have these tools like chess engines that can say to me that the players are playing very accurately. Wow. I love the fact that the databases exist and they can see right away who is making the, the, the novelty. I like to improve my game. Uh, it's not that I have the perfect way, but what I really enjoy, I hate to say it, but I really enjoy Puzzle Rush. <laughs> I really do. I think it's great fun. I like to survive. Yeah, what's you know? your record? <laughs> I think uh, I did it with Aman on the Chess Bra channel, and I think we got somewhere in the mid 80s, which Not was bad. really, really high. Not bad. Uh, on, on my own, when I just do it alone, I'm usually in the 50s and 60s. But uh, I, I, like, I like the challenges of the tactics. Nice. Christian, what do you recommend for your students? How do, how do you improve them? Well, that's the thing, I don't... Make them the, better. The question was whether I study chess, <laughs> right? I, I think you forgot the question, <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> You're trying You're to find some coach, inside right. information. No, no, I, I don't study for myself. I do no. study a lot chess in right. general, but I don't study it for myself. I study it for my students, and that's a very different type of studying. Right. Especially when you're trying to study with, forget about the opening, preparation, and sure, in that uh, particular sense, it's more individualistic because you're working on something, your student is working on something, and then you combine uh, resources and analysis. But when you're working with uh, a student for their improvement, then you usually have the idea of what the engine recommends at times. Mm -hmm. Like you find the problems, but you don't solve them. Right. So I don't. I wouldn't say I study for myself because I barely play nowadays. It's mostly about coaching, doing commentary, enjoying right. the game of chess. As you just mentioned, playing for me is definitely not uh, a career, right? My career is completely different than uh, that. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying studying, but I wouldn't call myself uh, that I'm studying for myself. I wouldn't say, say it like that. Uh, one way of explaining it also uh, for myself is upcoming candidates tournament in Toronto. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I'll really be looking forward to that event. Me we too. will be doing a Chess Today program, in fact, about the event. And we have two Americans in the event, um, Fabi and uh, Hikaru. And for me, you know, I'm just going to be rooting for them and like, let's go, let's go, let's go. If, you know, we went back to the time that I was playing professionally, it would be like I would be meticulously studying and dissecting each and every game. And here I'll just be enjoying the results and watching it exactly. unfold. So it's a very different mindset. But yes, this idea of always trying to improve, yeah, that, uh, I'll, that's a constant. I'm always trying to improve. 
Actually, we'll have the full coverage uh, of the Kenya this tournament starting from April 4. And Yasser, you will be, of course, part of the show. Sure, you I, will be part of the show. If I'm on time with my doc papers, with visa. my visa, I will be in, the, in Canada also. Um, uh, on site. Exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, I'm Grabbing looking forward. The and, I'm looking forward. Kenya Day is exactly. one of the most exciting events. I, I love them so much. And uh, remembering when the format was introduced back in 2013, let's yep. say we had candidates, but there was a big break. And then uh, this format uh, appeared again in London 2013, and I was there as well. And Magnus, remember, won <laughs> this crazy candidates event. And of course, we all remember what happened next year. Right. Yes, this event, I think uh, all chess world is looking forward. And uh, it's great that St. Louis Chess Club will cover it <laughs> properly. Absolutely. Well, uh, and for you, the audience, I, I just want to say what an extraordinary um time this is for chess because you get to see the games unfold in real time you get the expert commentary you have chess engines and uh, you never had such a golden period as today speaking of golden periods uh fabi how is he doing in his game with Le Bon? Well, not as much has happened um, <laughs> since the last one. He's still doing very well, okay. despite the fact that you see the question right. mark attached to this last move. Uh, that's just because a he question, had... An inaccurate move? I'm apparently shocked. Apparently, he had a much better option, and that would have been Rook to F8. <laughs> no. What? Can Nobody you make such that. a move? Nobody plays that move. Rook F8. Look. F6 really, if he plays that move, no, I mean, what, what <laughs> check his pocket. Yes. Wand, wand, really, wand, Chris wand. Bird, get in there, right. check his pocket. Rook F8. <laughs> Nobody plays. Rook no, F8. just explain the idea. Like, Thank why you. do you play Rook F8? I mean, for those who don't. Understand. So the idea is that at the right moment, I will have the move F6 open up yes. the F file and use the F file for my own benefit. And the rook on c8 doesn't really do that much because the knight is in its way. The knight and the rook are already, already established very well on those two squares, right? So the rook on c8, it's all about asking, okay, what is the piece that's not doing anything in my position? In this case, is the rook on c8, you go rook f8, but it's such a computer move. No, no, no. Queen c7 makes this. much more sense. So what he played, queen to c7 makes much more sense. It's still a very stable position for the moment, still trying to figure out a way to break the position. Uh, white doesn't have much to do right now. I mean, you could try to go g4 yeah, and g5, g5, but the question is, does that create some problems for your position, yes, right? I mean, it does weaken the king yes, a little bit, right? So. Very easily, I could see something along the lines of you go g4, I go back with the queen. And then that attacks your king side. So mm. we'll have to wait and see. This is a very Patience. tense moment of this game because both of these players are trying to figure things out, are trying to figure out how they're going to improve their respective positions. Mm, right. I remember um, a friend of mine, Hing Ting, uh, was living in Holland. He would come over and we'd do a little analysis and work together. And he was pursuing his grandmaster title and qualifying for the Dutch championship. And he played a move like Rook F8 in our analysis. I took a deep breath and I said something to the effect like, well, you know, we're going to have to work a little bit harder on our training <laughs> because you've moved your rook from an open file yes. to, and he goes, yes, but it was the number one choice of the engine. <laughs> like, how do you answer that? Your rook is beautiful on C8. How could you play rook F8? No, yes, sir. Imagine yeah, now Christian yeah. runs to five after the game and says, what is wrong with you? Rook F8, you didn't see such an easy move. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wow. Why did you play queen c7? Evaluation, if you don't mind. Uh, Slightly better for black, yes. Sli when, like, what are we talking With rook f8, it would have been more, probably because those f6 ideas would come into play. Right now, you still have to, if you want to open up uh, the f file, you will have to go back to that rook f8 idea later on. So you still have to lose a couple of tempies. And as you can see, white's last move, king to g2, it's just a slow, Chill. improving move. You just right. need to do something. You need to make a move, right? Of course. But you don't have anything active for either side. You mm -hmm. almost, it, it seems like you maximized the potential of your pieces, right? Unless you play Rook F8. <laughs> 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 well, I do see a, a difference on the on the chess clocks. Right. Uh, 39 minutes to 51 minutes, which means Levon is having a harder time struggling to come up with uh, improving moves. But mm -hmm. King G2... Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, keeping a chill. Um, 
before we go uh, on break, just to say that the World Chess Hall of Fame is having an exhibition of Donna Dotson. This is really nice. By the way, we just did a PBS show which featured some of her sets. The World Chess Hall of Fame has a new exhibition on view, Donna Dotson's Match of the Matriarchs. And I'm not going to get this right, Amazona, <laughs> Amazono Machis. Yes. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Makis. Amazon um, Makis. What, what does that mean? Am me? Amazon Makis. I was and training. What does it mean? Uh, good, good question. Good question. Sorry, yes. That was it. Uh, what I know that players to, uh, yesterday during this tornado alert, they went there to check the exhibition a little bit. Very, very, very nice. And we are going on break and we will see you all on the other side. Amazon. Amazon. Thank you so much for joining me, Begim. Um, I wanted to ask you, gr uh, growing up, who has influenced your uh, chess career the most? Thank you so much for having me, Sabina. Well, I would say it's my siblings because uh, my oldest, two oldest sisters, uh, they play chess professionally and I saw them playing, competing, growing up. That's why I would say my sisters being professional chess players definitely like influenced me and I wanted to be in their place. I wanted to play uh, great games like they did. And my brother who taught me chess, who actually somehow managed to uh, like, you know, interest me in chess. It's, yeah, my siblings definitely. It's really nice to come from, from a chess family because you always have this encouragement from behind you. They know what you feel, right? Yeah, that's a very nice thing. They understand me, they understand when I lose, they understand when I win, but sometimes there is a pressure. I don't want to play a bad game because I know my siblings are watching, not only parents, like siblings are watching, they understand everything. And sometimes they're like asking, why didn't you do that? And then you just, you know, mixed feeling, but definitely I really appreciate the fact they are out there supporting me and they're out there to, you know, they're always, uh, they're always here for me. Do you always feel pressure because they are watching your games every day? And yes, that's the, it's not like a bad pressure. I just want to do my best, not only for me, but for them too, because they have done so much for me. And then it's just, they mean a lot to me. And you know, the, when someone means a lot to you, you just want to perform well, not only for you, but for them too. I agree. Looking back, what would you tell your younger self on how to deal with losses in chess? To be honest, I'm, I'm not as bad to deal with losses, especially as a kid, I didn't care. Like my interest in chess was uh, totally, it came from a totally different place. I just wanted to travel the world and they motivated me. They knew that I have a talent, but I really didn't care about chess. I loved winning, of course, and I hated losing, but I never show, showed it to like around people. And I was like fine with it. And I survived it like quietly, but recently it got a little bit out of control, I guess. So whenever it happens, I just say, relax, everything will be fine. I just try to do my best. And when you do your best, there's no regret. That's, that's true. Uh, another question related to that a bit is how do you deal these days with um, a series of bad tournaments if you have any? Is there some, are there some specific things that you do in order to get over them and kind of get out of that phase? I experienced those things uh, when I was a little bit younger, in my like late teenage years, and it was extremely hard to deal with it. I just kept playing. I was like, I'm gonna get over it, but I know that I gotta take a pause and I need to understand what's going wrong. That's what I do. And also maybe it's just uh, because you're burnt out and it happened before and I didn't really figure that out until like recently I looked back at my career. I was like, what did it go wrong? And I understand it's just that you have symptoms and it's better to work on them first before you play more tournaments. So you need to be objective with what is really going on, look yeah, deep yeah, down. And... That's true. 
uh, tell me what would be a favorite day in the life of Begim? Favorite. favorite day. Like, what would you like to happen on a day so that you feel happy? Well, I want to wake up and eat breakfast that my mom prepared. She's great at that. And uh, just hang out with my sisters. I have a great nephew, my nieces, and just go have uh, just lunch or dinner with my family and relax, drive around a little bit. That's um, if I spend my day with my family, it's the the most beautiful and my favorite day. That sounds really wonderful. What about a work day? How does a f <laughs> productive? Well, you know, you ask favorite day. I don't get to spend a lot of time with my family. That's why my favorite day, day as long as I have my family members, this is my day. And when it comes to productive day, I would rather not to have them because I'm not productive at all. I like to get up uh, at 6.30, 7ish, work out and have my breakfast and work on chess a couple of hours. I have a job now, as you know, so I go work in the office. I'll, I come back and have some time to read or watch something, cook dinner, I love cooking, and just go to bed. Sounds wonderful, Begim. Well, I hope you got enough time to prepare for this event. I wish you good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you compete. Thank you so much, Sabina. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States and is among the best in the world. Thanks to co-founders Dr. Jeannie Cairn Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, the St. Louis Chess Club is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting the game of chess locally and internationally. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area, promoting cognitive development, critical thinking, concentration, and analytical skills. The St. Louis Chess Club welcomes chess lovers of any age and skill level to come and enjoy the game of chess. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. Championships and the American Cup, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players, including the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, Cairns Cup, and many more. All tournaments can be streamed via our YouTube and Twitch channels that also include over 2,000 chess lectures for anyone to enjoy. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, 
merchandise discounts, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. Landmarked by the world's largest chess piece sitting outside our front door, the World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy, including various exhibitions, monthly concerts, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, there is something for everyone to learn here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Enjoy free admission to our rotating exhibitions in our galleries and sign up for chess events, family-friendly programming, and art classes. And don't forget to stop by our award-winning gift shop, Q Boutique, and shop a wide selection of chess-related merchandise. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. Welcome everyone, we are on the day four of the American Cup and let's have a look at the standings or um, brackets first. The brackets. Yes. brackets. Uh, start with the champion's bracket. Yes, so Fabiano Caruana is still competing with Levon Aronian. They're playing their second classical game right. and they will play after the end of this game, they will have a rapid game. Uh, Ray Robson uh, is playing against Wesley, so he's leading in the match so far with one and a half point. And in the elimination bracket? We can see people resting in the elimination <laughs> bracket right now. Sam sure. Savian, he promised he will be watching actually what's going on in the champions bracket. And uh, Linier Dominguez, both of them are waiting for the opponents, uh, for those who will lose the matches today. Exactly, in the ladies championship bracket. What's happening there? Irina Krush is playing against uh, Nazi Paikidze, and Alice Lee is competing against uh, Begim Tohirjonova. Um, and in elimination, brackets two players are Have enjoying the rest day and yes two players are enjoying the rest day exactly and for me again a big shout out to zoe tang our eighth seed her first rookie appearance and it's pretty and it's successful absolutely she won the first game against Irina crush in the tournament and then she managed to eliminate anna zatonsky and uh, jennifer yu uh, who lost in the first uh, match uh, managed to play well in the elimination bracket so far and uh, beat tati labrahaman uh things are beginning to heat up in the classical games we're going to very quickly take a look at the nasi pikitsa game because things have gone brilliantly in favor of Anasi. When we left it, we had this position and I said, Roro, check it out, h4, h5. Uh, White's attack plays itself. Queen e7, Nasi included a very subtle and important little point. The queen moved to e7 in order to allow for a potential bishop takes f5. No, no, said Nasi, I'll put my rook vis-a-vis -vis the queen so any trades uh, you'll be walking into dangers. E5, and I really love the move she played. That G5. was, for me, uh, a very uh, concrete, very special move because it practically makes it a certainty that I'll be able to open up on the king side. Big threat, F5, F6, followed by H5. Five. Or it, it, This is really going well. Uh, Arena felt that she had to capture, capture takes, and this nice move, a little bonus of having the rook on e1. You don't want to put your bishop back on g6, not necessarily because knight c6 is a threat, but h4, h5 could hurt your feelings as well. <laughs> so bishop back to d7, everything's going uh, Nasi's way. h5, and look at her prosecute the attack. She's got g6, Bishop d5, h6, all of these beautiful attacking moves. Uh, she needs to win two games in a row to force a tie break. She's looking good for this one. How about uh, in the open section, Christian? Yeah, let's take a look at what's happening in the two games of the open section. Uh, we're going to start with Levon against Fabiano. What happened in this one? We left it off after king to g2, not long time ago. Again, right. we were saying that right now it's more of a static position where they're trying to figure out their plans, right? They're trying to figure out where they're going to strike or where they're going to apply pressure next. That's exactly what's happening. 
king to g2, take on f3, knight to d7, now there's a big threat in the position, don't make a random move, let's say king to g1, for example, because knight takes c5, Whoops. unfortunately <laughs> finishes the game, even if you would be able to take with the rook on e5, the rook on d6 is on pre. So, you cannot afford to do that. That's why he played the move queen to f4, defending uh, the pawn on e5, and knight to b6. Uh-oh. This Red is a wrinkle. Knight okay. To d5. This is a wrinkle. He's trying Alert. to go to d5. Obviously, he's trying to go to d5. The rook is going to be stranded on d6. The problem is, what are you going to do from d5? It's one of those instances of a beautiful knight, central knight, like Irina's knight on d4, but what's next? What are you doing with that knight? So, for example, queen d4, knight d5, and you're saying, I can play against Maybe the knight? Maybe just like rook f3 or something like that, even though I don't like this move queen to d4 Sorry. as much. Rook for example, what do you do if I do this move? So knight d5 is his obvious idea. Right. And let's say I don't make any sort of, let's say I go queen to e4. Right. I'm and just, you just live waiting. With it. I'm just waiting. Right. Show me what your idea is next. Do well, you want to take and put the knight on c3? I don't think so. It's a beautiful knight again, attacks the queen, but doesn't attack anything else. How mm -hmm. do you continue your attack? Such moves like f5, of course, you don't Oof. consider yes and just for fun. <laughs> I guess I mean, you, you do, <laughs> but... You might, you might. Yeah. I mean, the just problem for fun, is because, because you cannot it, take on f6. Then I have a feeling I'll sacrifice. Rook f5. I'll, uh, I have a feeling well, this might be good for me. Yes. Really? Right. Yeah. Yes. And you might have some other ideas, perhaps knight to e3, that's why I cannot do it in this particular case. <laughs> yes. um, so maybe f5 in So this if I move my good. queen, then... e6 is hanging. Yes, then... Yeah. At least my rook has something to do, right? Yeah, true. And then I go maybe knight to c4 as well. So again, knight to b6, forget about the engine, it's a very tense position. These two players are engaged in a battle in which whoever uh, flinches first is going to lose. Wow. Uh, again, just uh, reverting for a moment to the game of Nasi. Uh, after knight takes d4, h5, we saw h6. Ooh, h6. I mean, you... It feels like a desperate it's almost, attempt, right? Exactly, exactly. But you almost say to the audience, if there are children, please uh, avert your <laughs> eyes. Uh, leave the stage, because this looks like... Uh, White has got an enormous number of, of potentially winning uh, attacking ideas here. Uh, I'm, I'm a pawn grabber. I would be looking at that. Yeah, so you've uh, taken what, bishop of six? Something yeah, like that, yes. and then rook Some g1. Ideas of and bishop g5. Let's go, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we have some social media. And I know that the questions have been addressed to you at your account. So, uh, ah, not want, only they, they, to mine. Yeah. Yes, I mean, St. But, Louis Chess Club is So you got to answer them first. Yes, so from uh, Chess with Lukesh, actually, a very famous fan from India, okay. uh, we got the question, what do the players uh, eat during rounds? What? Uh, no, <laughs> whatever is provided. No, <laughs> they're locusts. They'll eat anything. No, I know that in my my particular case, I like chocolates, but I think we have actually a back room view uh, of yes. what they actually do eat. Now we can see some snacks, yes, for They players. didn't have these snacks when I was playing, uh -huh. I gotta tell you. There are some berries, I mean, these are my favorite, you know, the actually, berries? I, when I was in the house, I uh, next to the playing hall in the previous events, I, of course, I, I took some of the snacks, uh, <laughs> so I have, I have an idea what they actually yeah. have during the rounds. And some small snacks and sushi, I remember yeah. they had, Chocolate and also raisins. some fruits. My yes, goodness, I mean, are the players raisins. are spoiled beyond belief. Of course. I would be happy with a cup of water. Somebody actually, I think it's Levon, you know, who just came to... Hummus. Yes. And they also have tea, coffee, some, I mean, water, of course, some juices. Your favorite snack during the game, what did you eat? And normally, like, one banana. Uh, Banana fruit. Yeah, fruits, yes. Fruits. No, not not different. Not colorful yogurts, yes, sir. Uh, like, yes, uh, yogurts. Of... <laughs> Victor Korchnoi, yogurts. Yes. Victor Korchnoi, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Victor yes, I also like. And caviar. Victor Korchnoi oh. liked caviar. He thought it was brain food. You know, yes, games. sir. Even if it was not, it's not a bad idea to have caviar idea. during the game. Not right. during the game. <laughs> what do you suggest? Uh, what do you suggest to your um, your your, co your your players come to you and say, Coach, I feel tired at, during the game. What should I eat? 
or dark not Dark chocolate eat. is a good, good idea. Dark chocolate. Yeah. If Just I avoid like... processed foods. Avoid processed foods at all costs. So fruits, yes. Fruits are good. Dark chocolate is Nuts. good. Tea is good. Not so much on the coffee side, just because it gets you, you a bit too excited. You can up and down. You yeah. can roller coaster. Yeah. So I would say tea with some honey. Don't put too much sugar in it. It's just, you know, the regular stuff. Okay. Stay healthy. I know that, for example, Boris Gelfand, uh, he was ordering in advance uh, his espresso at the moment when they were approaching <laughs> the time the trouble. Second thing, you know, that right? is just, just before. To be sharp, you know, right? during this moment when you have time very, trouble. Very special berry teas. Uh, we've let the Wesley So game uh, slip by us, but. Uh, I think we're going to see a handshake, so maybe we can see uh, the really? board as they repeat the position, yes. Handshake. Even. I do think there's going to be. There's been some repetition. <laughs> Don't look like. Wesley. Ready for, uh, well, for pardon handshake. me. Ray is very, very uh, carefully studying his score sheet. As yeah, if. he's trying to figure out whether the rook to b6 is the third time repetition. So I, he's I, I writing like his move down, which is an uh -huh. indication that he's committed himself to play rook b6, and he's making the claim of a three-time repetition. Yes. Which indeed the players agree. Uh, Chris Bird, the chief arbiter, he also agrees. And that guarantees us a rapid game. Wesley So will have to win. Uh, on demand. On Look, demand. Alice Lee is checking what is the result of the right. game. Could you see her now? I did. I did. They're back. <laughs> yeah, so players are smiling. And exactly. I think they try to agree on, uh, on time also of the rapid game. The well, terms, if you will. The, the, the conditions. I uh, wanted to turn our attention to the game of uh, Nasi and Arena. Again, Nasi uh, down 0-2, coming in today, needs to win. She's, I mean, she's got the table set mm -hmm. uh, for herself here. And I was about to ask the question. The question I was about to ask is, would you allow an opposite color bishop position, or would you play the move that she did play, which was to, to try to trade bishops? In other words, right here, right now, white does have the opportunity to play knight c6. That would force you to trade trade, and then you know, mm -hmm. you're know you ready to play rook g1, queen f2, bishop to e4. I like it, yes, sir, you know, because what I remember from the theory, if you are still in the middle game, and especially if you have an attack, having these opposite color bishops means that you have an extra piece You're for your attack, it, right? Precisely. Yes, so probably I would tr go for it, but maybe it's still a concrete position, and maybe this way she chooses even better. Hard to say. This knight looks also really good after you yes, change the bishops. Knight exactly. f five is coming. So like probably yeah. she just was choosing between two good options. Yes. Exactly. And, Something of that nature. Yes. Like for example, if we just put a move on the board here, we can just imagine we get a position like this. Uh, I'm not saying these are good or bad moves. I'm just saying mm -hmm. you put a knight on f five and you just feel that is a very, very powerful piece. Uh, Nasi looking very good indeed. How is um, Alice Lee doing? Uh, Alice Lee uh, comes into the, today also leading by two points. Yes, exactly. All she needs and is she a needs draw, and it's just, ah, oh, it's a. It, it, I see this night on d6. It's not really good news I, for Peggy, my guess. I, I, my, my, my trainer um, Nikolai Minev. He had a, a wonderful way of saying it. Uh, I, I have a hard time saying it. My, catastrophe. It <laughs> catastrophe. is. Catastrophe. <laughs> Remember the opening head, catastrophe. He would also. just be he just be shaking. Complete catastrophe. So she decided to go for this exchange, exchange sacrifice. sacrifice. She took on d6, and the second rook joins the action and it rook and e1. it feels like a complete catastrophe doesn't it mm -hmm. rook to e6 bishop to e5 wow again uh this looks like uh, a mishmash of everything bad yeah powerful play from Ellis Lee so far absolutely um, at the same time begging is like saying yeah my position is really bad so at least i have this exchange something to hope if you if you play inaccurate moves, maybe, right. then I have something. Right. Who knows? <laughs> I will die with a full tummy. Yes, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I will have an exchange <laughs> that I will hold on to. Yes. Uh, this is, I, I have to say, Alice Lee has played uh, thus far 
an extraordinary tournament. I mean, when you think about her match with Tatev, total control. When you think about uh, how she's doing with Begum, I, I, I can't say it any better than that. Well, by the fantastic. way, uh, let's just go through the lines, right? Let's, right. Let's try to figure out whether she's just completely winning after this night B5 by force. By force, even. Yeah, right, because right. she's ready to play d6. I think she's ready to do something else. So and also some... Should... Actually, what do you play? Yes, where you put That's your rook? That's the problem. Huh? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah. How, uh, what should I do to resist? Let me... Probably have okay. to go rook d7. Let, rook d7 uh, yes. let me try to resist. Okay. okay, what if I try to do it by force? Bishop c7. Oh, oh, nasty. Bishop c7. Bishop c7. But so your the queen will be hanging, no, at the end. Ideas take, take. of takes, takes, and d6. Mm -hmm. King, queen, don't, don't, d7. Do, 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 rook, ah, takes. Yes. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Everything that, is hanging, yes. That looks pretty scary. Okay, you would force me to move my queen. I have to agree. But now, I mean, to be honest, d6 is a very tempting option. Oh, Bishop not. takes b6, taking another pawn. Is another very you, you you had me at taking another pawn. <laughs> <laughs> Might as yours. well. Yeah? You you won my heart. I no, think but even like d6 more spot. and knight d5, knight b6. I mean, take me this too. pawn with, with 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 a fork. Yeah. Uh, I can do whatever yeah, I want. Yeah, yeah this oh. looks really really good. So you might even say after the move knight b5. I might that, even say uh, hey, you got it. <laughs> you got good it. job. Good job. Knight oh. b5. Yes. Wow. So Ellisley is really close to win this match 3-0 for the moment. Yes. Which, by the way, I mean, keep in, in mind that Begum was leading the U.S. Olympic women's team, mm -hmm. beating your first board 3-0. That's quite an accomplishment, it's a I would statement. say. Uh, if you think about it. Yes, we can see Begum now and she, she doesn't look happy at all. At all, whatsoever. Yeah, and no. we can understand why. By the way, you had mentioned it earlier, <clears throat> and I wanted to... Uh, buttress that to our audience. Our Olympics teams, the open team as well as the ladies team, is composed of five players. They get to the Olympics through the rating system. We use a USCF, United States Chess Federation, and the World Chess Red uh, Federation ratings to determine a formula which invites five players. So when you win Mm -hmm. Rating points from your direct it's rivals. Like you're winning twice. Exactly. Yes, you win for yourself, and she's also losing some. Exactly, points. it ensures your participation on the Olympic team, and it's a very, very big deal when you think about the open team for a moment. You've got like Fabi, Levon, Lanier, Wesley, and then suddenly that fifth. Place, Ray Robson, Sam Shanklin, <laughs> Sam Sevillon. Big fight. And it's a big yeah. fight. And the, the rating points differences sometimes can be as little as three to five points. So every rating point counts, especially in an event like this. Let's remember, remind the viewers where we'll have the Olympiad this year. Budapest. It's, it's going to be in Budapest, actually, yes. on September 10th. A I think beautiful, it's starts, beautiful yes. so European it's capital. It's only half a year ahead. Mm -hmm. So they're really fighting for their... Do you think that Alice will be leading the team? Big chances. So, or Irina? I, I don't mean, know. I'm, yeah, when, wow. you, when you see her performance here, she's certainly going to be a member of the team. No oh, question Alice. about that. No question. Uh, her position, which board? Uh, well... To be determined, we would exactly, say. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Christian, uh, after the ladies' games, uh, what's happening in Fabi and um, Levon? Things are moving slow, as we expected Glacial in that one. Pace. Right, right. So rook to f3. That's the move that we were discussing Side as well. Side stepping, Knight a potential Knight to d5, four. and yes. now queen to g4 okay. was played. And Again, how do you continue? And I, I do understand this move, queen to g4, because we were looking at queen to e4 as the main line. Now queen f5 to g4, will be not good, because queen g6. Uh, correct, yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's, that's a good point. So if mm -hmm. you take like this, you cannot take on d6 because of checkmate. Checkmate, right? yes, also. Yes. So that's, that's a very good point. Also, I do have the idea of knight to e4. And some Maybe even knight to f6. Sometimes, yes. Right, so I right. have those type of ideas. Mm -hmm. The question Hello. is, <laughs> who's delivering the checkmate <laughs> first? Okay, I'll because play. I do have boom, boom, boom. If I manage to <laughs> get you, you my queen to up. h1, I, I know the path. I go c2, d1, and then h1, and that's all she wrote. That's a well, checkmate. Let's in go. One move. So 94. why not? 94. Let's 94. go. 94. Okay, I'm not going to. Let's let's see who's ha first. Wow. Who's Hakusito. first? Okay, I'll, I'll run. Who's oh, first? I was really hoping you were going to take. Um, no, 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 <laughs> no. Knight no, no. <laughs> h5 or what? 
No, no. Uh, not only because of that, but also it opens up the rooks. Uh, that path, was, that was my defensive. Uh, what was the second? Look, if I go knight h5, what move uh, will I Can I go rook g8? I will go rook g8. Yes. Ah, rook g8, rook g8. Uh, yes. Okay, you're tricky. <laughs> you, at least one trap I've managed you to. You are tricky. <laughs> That's why Very I needed sneaky. you on my side <laughs> at the studio. <laughs> okay. Yeah, together, okay. Together, together, yes. you and I, we will take yes. them down. The <laughs> problem is that I also didn't know what to do after g6. That's my problem. Uh, yes. But wait, I had whoa, one whoa, idea. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rook, yeah, sir, rook, no, you rook takes f7. Rook takes. Oh, these. Do you have any checks after that? Unfortunately, it's like queen. No, d no queen, queen d1 is not possible. Queen d1. Oh, 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 No, I, I thought about d7 even. Yes, it. like. It's, but it's not worth it. Okay. Give us back our move. Again, this is going to be a very complicated battle. Let's maybe analyze it on yes, your sure. screen so that oh, we can absolutely. also see the players at the same time. Absolutely. And get a taste of their emotions as no, that, well. That's nice. I mean, at least some action. Yes, both uh, players can try to give a checkmate to each other correct. and who is going exactly. to be first. That's a nice race. And again, when you think about these two players and how much how many games they played with each other. They're, they're closing in on 130 classical games against one another. They know each other very, very well. Queen f4, rook f3. And this is where we, we, we were getting ourselves excited by a rather rook c1. intriguing line that went rook to c1, knight to e4. Uh, after all, we won... We, we won our own threats as mm -hmm. well. And queen c2. Queen c2, and the threats are... Not so great. It turned yeah, out, right? Yes. Uh, yes, my first attempt to, is not trying working. Trying to get us from behind. So what do you I've do after a, queen... Ah, I've got another idea. You still believe in the position? No, we're right? trying. Uh, we're trying. Yes, because we can try for free. Uh, 93. Le Mans has to find all those moves. Oh, no, not again. I think, I, I think I've done this once before. Uh, yes, you Here, I, I was so dreaming, yeah. uh, so that. happily dreaming of mates on G7. Uh, they were dancing in my head, and this is the second time. Actually, maybe we can take this knight on G5, this annoying knight. You can First, try. no? You can and then, then I have six, no? Something. But then I but then I don't get to use the Yes, it's six and So I'll you mean that. something yeah. like this, this? Yes, but I'm just I don't know, I'm just checking. By the way, I'm not Do sure if have I should the throw in a queen e two at any time. Maybe even after all takes d five, queen e two. <laughs> queen e two. That's a no, reminder. Whatever. That is a reminder of a mate in two. Okay, yeah, I still have knight d2. That's a very um, serious but... reminder. Ah, knight d2. But now I take on d5. But the, yeah, and the, yeah. The, the opportunities of knight f6 have yes, been lost. Mm -hmm. Queen c2 is a real spanner. Uh, I don't think you can let me go queen c2. Yeah, maybe. maybe okay, we would just try this knight d4. Maybe there well, was. Well, oh, if I were to go check and you were to go king h8, yes? Yes. I mean. I do have also the Ray Robson four. bailout, right? Uh, trading queens. But now I can just Oh, take you the can knight. take the knight. I now I can take the knight. Oh, yeah. my, oh my goodness. Gosh. I can't do that. You're at. This you're is no, I think right. it's over. Right I mean, now. it's easy to get attracted with these ideas that you are first, yes, delivering checkmate. And if it's not working, I know, <laughs> then right? queen d1, queen h1. And hello. Follows, yes. So what? Let's go back. So what was your move? Like rook c1. Let's let's stop here, make a full stop. So maybe not knight d4. Let's not get so well, excited. He, maybe he, we have knight c4. Yes, he's suggesting that we really mm -hmm. do have to stop queen c2. c2 that yes. queen c2 is. I mean, you really can stop it with knight e4, queen to e4 as well, right? Yeah. Well, are you trying to bring us to another <laughs> <laughs> position? Like, no, I don't yeah. like this voice, you know? I, I'm not trying you know, to I, I, deliver any tricks. No, yeah. I promise. I'm trying to leverage this rook. It's not that easy because uh, my various sacrifices have not w been working. Mm -hmm. But if I could get my knight to f5, I might get inter excited. Okay. Rook takes d5, knight d6, and knight f5 is on my agenda. At least I'm not worried about knight f6. I don't have any checkmates yes, there's no checkmate. hanging mm -hmm. above my head. No, That's none of true. That. true. So in that case, maybe I have an extra moment to reshuffle my pieces. I'm thinking about queen to c5, but I just don't see the follow-up after that. Queen to c5, what is the queen doing there? That's the thing, I don't see the follow-up. I'm not sure it does anything. 
You you might give me a yeah that rook on d six somehow is impertinent. It just it 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 it's making oh I beg your pardon. Is rook takes e six ever an issue? Mm -hmm. You were sacrificing exchanges definitely merrily. I want to say definitely. Uh, rook takes e six queen c two. No, absolutely this uh, queen rook takes. Uh, okay, let's check the direct line. Yes, if you take the rook and what is this? It's two pawns. Two pawns for exchange. I don't Maybe like it. it's not sufficient, but again, this knight on c4 is going to make. Even though a I way. do have rook c5, right? Rook c5, king takes c5. Ah, yes, I was about to say if I could maintain the pawn, mm -hmm. the the, the second pawn. Time. But you're right, rook c5. Maybe uh, queen d6 still was possible. Rook takes c5. Rook takes c5. Not rook f8. Not rook f8 there. No. Oh, 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 I mean, sorry, I, I see sorry, some, sorry, sorry, you know, ghosts. Some tricks. No, some no, tricks. no, 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 yes, no, 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 no. I see no, some no. ghosts, it, but I'm not sure about them. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's continue the line. Yes. I, I can see the title of our book, Anastasia's <laughs> Ghost. And what she was saying is <laughs> no, there was rook f8. But maybe it's just king h7. That's what I was not sure. Because you cannot take with the rook, queen is hanging. But yes. what about just king h7 and queen d3? Yes. I'm impressed. You've managed to hang a rook, a queen, and all <laughs> 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 oh, very, 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 yes, very, very, easy, very quickly. Easy Not a me. problem. This yes, was yes. this was child's play yes. for you. So what what's happening G6. here? G6. Oh, yeah. Look at this king. I you don't know, know. <laughs> these ghosts. <laughs> They're troubling. Rook f6 and, uh, I don't know, they're, and you pray. Yeah, they're they're okay. Uh, definitely, definitely something, something to think. To calculate. Yes. Uh, times, uh, Christian. Our clocks are factor. Twenty-five minutes, I think. And, and finally, we have F3. a decision. Rook None takes f3. I have a feeling Rook this game takes goes F3. towards draw. Towards a draw. Yeah. yeah they'll they'll find a way to simplify. Twenty-nine mm -hmm. minutes, by the way, for both players. By the way, again, uh, just uh, telling Ben Underwood, how do these players match up in Rapid and how do they match up in Blitz? I mean, in classical chess, wow, 33 to 30, almost, a, and 65 draws, whatever it was, it was like amazing. Just a second. I mean, this draw. Here it is. I don't know. So. Again, in uh, rapid chess, uh, well, I must say Fabi has six wins against three losses and four draws. And in Blitz, Armageddon, it's 2-2. Two, two. What about classical? Wow. What about classical? A classical we saw today. Remember, it was 33. Three. Oh, is that 30 128 and, uh, well, games? Yeah, and all yeah, all of, the, yeah, all of that overall games. stuff. Did they actually yeah. play as many games in classical? I mean, that's just an unbelievable number. It's just a... Yeah, well, ah, it, I think the classical was 13 After. wins for Fabi, 9 wins for Levon, 32 draws. Okay. But their overall ah, it was record overall record okay. was the 130 <laughs> yes. games. Mm -hmm. Their overall record. And by the way, we did see uh, here. No, actually, this it's, is overall. The overall it's overall. This is the overall score. Yes. yes, this is the lifetime matchups, their overall score, which includes apparently quite a number of. Um, <laughs> Drops. Uh, no, um, okay. <laughs> Armageddon. Ah, okay. Armageddon yes. as which, well. Which is also like tricky, right? You because know, very, even very, very, with a draw, you are tricky. winning exactly. the game. Yes, so. uh, I believe we have rook takes f3. And what else happened after rook takes f3? Queen takes f3 and knight to c3. Knight jumps to c3. But what is the knight doing that's, on c3? That's a really <laughs> good question, actually. No, seriously. No, it, it stops knight c4. Because uh, I take on a4. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa. Just a second. You're saying that it stops knight c4. I'm mm -hmm. not so, so sure. It, you know, it, 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 it's not like it, 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 at the cost of a pawn, I still can play the move knight c4. Oh, absolutely. So, yes, but but yes. Why, wouldn't, why wouldn't I do something magical? Uh, you've just opened up the d file. Shouldn't I be uh, mm -hmm. taking control of the d file and playing moves like queen d3 so I can play rook d7 and rook d8 on a good day? So knight d5 back, no? <laughs> <laughs> then, then why did you play uh, yes. knight, c, knight c3? Yes. As, but what as, else to play? Is that engine approved, uh, Christian? I don't think so, no, no. The, this it looks a strange sequence move for has me. not been engine approved. Rook f3 followed by knight to c3. It does seem like 
white right now is having the better opportunities in the position and the better pieces. I had that beautiful rook on c3. Right. That could aid alongside the queen and for by potential the way, checkmate. The rook no. on c3 just kept the rook on e3 as a defensive piece. Right. So this has actually worked out pretty darn well for Levon. He's I gotten do, rid of the problems. I, I do not like what, what uh, Fabi has done in the last couple of moves, and I think right now Levon definitely has a good chance to maybe even have a slight advantage in the position. Very nice. And uh, while well, we keep an eye on this, our colleague Kostya has caught up with Wesley So. Let's take a gander. Wesley, you drew your game with Ray. Do you have any thoughts on the game? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's very solid from both sides. Um, he played the same line against Lanier a couple of days ago. So, uh, I mean, I kind of expect it to play solidly. After all, it's such a short match, so I think, you know, draw is a prudent choice if I was in his place, maybe, too. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and then I prepared until bishop d6 or something. And I thought in the end game I even had some very small chances. But probably just a draw, because after, when he played king f1, which is very accurate, I've known play bishop c7, but then I missed from afar, he has d5, mm -hmm. fold by knight d4, which equalizes. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't have d5, maybe I could play on with bishop c7. But, but as it is, I think the end game was just completely equal. Like, I, we both had to be slightly careful not to get worse. But if what it is, I mean, and I really look forward to the fourth game, hopefully I can pose some problems, uh, but uh, in a short match, it's very difficult to have must win. Okay, thank you very much, and good luck in your game. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kostya. And indeed, uh, Wesley is facing a formidable task as he's in a must win situation going exactly. into the uh, rapid. He trails the match by one point, needs a win to force a blitz tiebreak. Um, Queen d3, uh, not unexpected by uh, Levon, and, and I, really, I, you said knight d5. Yes. I know it, it's kind of, kind of contrarily, but I think it's the best move. It I is mean, the best. In this position, like, yes. you, it actually is the best so, move. Yeah. Sometimes the hardest thing in chess is to, it's just, I made a mistake. Yeah. I've got to take yes. it back. And, yeah. you know, you, you played the move knight d5 to c3 going forward. Oops! But does Let's it give back. you a little bit like psychological disadvantage yes. if you kind of? Uh, I hate it. Yes, you have to go back. And I, I, I'm my own worst critic, and like recognizing mm -hmm. at the board that you know I blew it, you know, I made a bad move. You realize it's you're on the defensive now, right? Mm -hmm. Once you miss a beat like this, right? I think it was Korchnoi who really presented to me this idea is like, yes, sir. You have to forget everything that previously mm -hmm. happened. That's important. You yes. just have to play the best move in the position. Oh, yes, it's a good approach. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it, if that means you have to admit, admit to yourself you made a mistake, your job is to play the best move in any given position. Very difficult to yeah. implement. That's uh, easy exactly. to say. <laughs> <Not> to say. <laughs> but yes, there could be a different approach. Position is so simple that I can play move forward, back, backward, doesn't matter, you know, it's still a draw. You can also <laughs> take it this way, like knight d5, knight c3, I just can give you a few tempests, try to prove that you're better. Yeah. Yeah, so I found another, another <laughs> way well, how to well, take it. One of the things that kind of throws me off is those, um, how do you say those positions that have been analyzed in the ending perfectly? And it's sort of like it's rook and knight yes. versus rook, for example. And there's 19 moves that make an easy draw and three moves that lose, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you get these things. And then how do you choose one of the 19 moves that make the draw? Like, Good luck. Yeah, right? And, then, and, and you have those... Uh, moments, those end game uh, t table bases where you have all of these moves that make a draw, one, two moves that make a loss, and then you have to decide which is a, the, the right move. By the way, G7, G6. G6. Uh, wrong approach. Uh -oh. Wrong approach. Alert. Yes, yes. Um, right now, G6. I mean, look, White has the golden opportunity of breaking H. the pawn structure on the king side and opening up the king. Wow, with a wow, 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 wow. It's a big decision. 
you do sacrifice a pawn, but it's not really a pleasant pawn to take no. if you're in Fabi's <laughs> shoes. No, 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 you, you, you really you, want to take this pawn? You're not in a gloryful moment. Not only that you're opening up the king, but you're also weakening the f6 square Big with this time. g6. So this knight on c3 right now, you gotta stay there. Because if my knight goes to e4 and then to f6, <gasps> Goodbye. devastating consequences if oh. that happens, right? So after g6, h5, this Big is starting to become extremely sharp. And you have to be very careful if you are in Fabi's shoes not to just simply spoil this one and lose this game right. from a better position all throughout the middle game, uh, from the opening, in fact, to a worse position right now if Levon decides to go for H5. Oh, and I'm sure this is a type of position in which Levon will go. H5. I mean, right. You don't have this kind of time to even play king g7 right because it's h takes g6 is a oh, threat yes, right so yes. like you have to, to react immediately pawn is hanging uh, yeah. Yeah. rook d7 yes. check rook yes. d7, so rook d7, d7 even check better yeah, i mean yeah, any yeah. move is winning yes but exactly. just h5 what you have to take or g5 is it an option but g5 you play uh, i also don't like it I know, <laughs> again I like it's it. all about this yeah. Uh, this, uh, by the way, I think Massive I might square. have. I Maybe don't rook have. Oh, no. I don't have rook takes c6 Yet. with a draw because you do hide on h8. You don't go queen g7, of, yes, course, of course, because then but... I take on e6 and take on c8. You go king to h8 or king to uh, f8, and then you cover with the queen. So yes. you cannot do that. But at the same time, that's an option later on in the future. Right. You mm -hmm. always yeah. have to pay attention to this rook takes c6, queen to g6. Your king suddenly is weak. Absolutely. I'm surprised by this move, just six by five. Right. Like, probably. Wow. It's not that easy to find the move. That's mm -hmm. the problem. It's 95. Not, again, 95. 95 yeah. was the best move. Yes, which right. is, we discussed, yes. As to how difficult it queen is to Queen b7 was uh, the other, the second best move, and, and now queen again, to 95. a7. Uh, you wow. basically okay. have to find a way to lose some time because you don't have anything good mm -hmm. to do in the position. Uh, you're not in that position anymore. Unfortunately, right now you're playing for equality as black, and perhaps psychologically that's not an easy mm. adjustment for Fabiano uh, to make in the heat of the battle. Wow, queen to a7. But in this moment, uh, big opportunity for h5. Can we h5. just look at some of the ramifications of h5 and g5 for a second? Uh, if, if Fabi is trying to keep the position closed, F4? Is the intention to play f4? How do we open up, pry open, prying, opening up the king side? What should we do? Why not? Let's try f4. Let's just f4. see how, how, how yes, that like plays f4. out. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, it does. Even though I don't like f4 because of knight d5, and then it feels like queen c2. But whose king is more exposed after or that. this? Yes, uh, or that. Um, f4, Let's not go f4. F4 may be just a little bit of an overreach. For the moment, right. you, you know, the, the the strangest thing is I I've been dreaming of playing knight c4 and rook d7 mm -hmm. and getting that in for some time. Let's go rook d7. Why not? Rook queen d7. e5. Oh. Queen e5. I take my take my pawn. Should take my pawn. Yes, I, that's what I was hoping. The training is working. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, sitting here with Yasser helps yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't like that. <laughs> yes. So maybe first knight f3, I don't know. Ah, this queen is what he played, uh, uh, queen f3. Yes. No h5. No, change. I, this is the move you do with hand, yes? If you play blitz game, you will play this automatically. This right. Move. I wanted to say, include the move h5, g5, now come queen, queen f3, f3. Uh -huh. because the h6 pawn is a little bit more exposed. Once we post up on the f6 square, we're in prime position to strike on the king side. He didn't play. He played queen f6 immediately. Queen f3 is... Queen f3 immediately, uh, pardon me. Not a bad move by any stretch of the imagination. No, but do we have time to play h5 for black right now? Okay, you let's could. just look. Mm -hmm. I guess the answer would be that I go g4. Right? I mean, this is what I wanted to check. Let's say this g4, g4. It's, it's how bad it is for, for anyone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. In whose favor the yes, position exactly, opens up? Yes, exactly. I don't right? understand anything, but... Okay, let's have a look. Let's yes. try it. For a penny take. and for a pound. G4, let's try it. HG, queen take. takes G4, and H5, H5 is on the agenda. Threat. Yes, it's a threat, of course. But maybe we'll have like king H7 with the idea after H5 to play rook G8. I, I, I do have... But then knight F3 is coming, knight yeah, G5. Yeah, I can disturb your mm -hmm. king on H7 in that case. 
You can. Uh, scary, scary moments. It's scary, yes. And 25 minutes, more or less, per player. Clock times are not a big difference. But it just feels like Levon's chances seat. are very good. Are increasing move by move. Yes. Exactly. Well, maybe Queen of Three is just the idea to be exactly like more tricky and to wait what Fabio will do. Like threatening H5 maybe is even worse than playing H5 right, right. away. Right, the threat yeah. is stronger so like, yeah, than the execution uh, type of deal. Okay, I have a silly question perhaps. Mm -hmm. Please. So you go H5, right? Uh, as black, H5, and G4? we've been looking at G4, yes. Right. Maybe I don't want to go G4. You Can don't. So if I go Knight C4, you take on A4. Mm -hmm. What else mm -hmm. to do? I mean, I'm looking at Knight B6. Uh, yeah, let's just say you, you I, I, I do it. Do you want to post up on F6, uh, Christian? Do you want H5? H5? Oh, he plays H5. Wow, this is, I mean, that's such a consequential move because the move G4 now absolutely does uh, uh, pry open the king side, and there's nobody on the king side. The, the major Maybe pieces are doubled. Maybe queen c5. I don't know, I'm trying to, to look for the alternative now. now, like queen c5. Queen c5 now. Now I am so I'm delighted to, to play uh -huh. knight c4 because I've been dreaming about knight c4 and rook d6 Wait, but to why d7. Don't you, why don't you take on h5? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose the, the e5. e5 yes, so my idea was to take on e5. But okay, even this. Even this is good, yes. Yeah, and ah, because yeah. you can take on g6 now, and if I take on g6, queen f7, queen h7, checkmate. I can do that. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. So, and, yeah. I, and, and I love also in this position rook f7 too. Uh, rook, mm -hmm. rook sorry, uh, similar is... ideas. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just thinking g4, uh, I, even if you were to play, I mean, you can't possibly think, You're hey, I've tennis. won the a no, no, no. when your not king, now. your castle, yes. uh, your, your, your palace is burning. Uh, all, all of white's pieces are over there. So G4. Okay, so let's try to take that. Okay. Yes, HG, let's take queen, take, G. and now we have to find a move. Maybe he... So, so you had, you had, had suggested king h7. king h7, and I had yes. kind of made you less enthusiastic mm -hmm. about did. king h7 because mm -hmm. of knight f3. Uh, Christian? I don't know. I what, mean, is, what else? Maybe king the of engine. Fate? Maybe King of Fate. This I'm is trying not, to find some. Not a pleasant position for a human being. Okay, King of right. uh, Fate. To give you the idea, it's actually equal after G4, but with <sighs> such strange moves. I mean, you have to go Queen to B7. The question is, okay, you gave me a check, but what's next, right? Maybe the queen King of, A7, the same idea. But the Queen of B7 doesn't feel right. A7. Because you don't have on this diagonal any squares. Right. In position. This, this, so E4, what? D5, C6. It's an empty diagonal. Empty diagonal. I mean, you gave me a check, you improved the position of my king. It just doesn't feel like the right, from a human's perspective. Ah, Forget yeah, about the it. engine. And now King G7. And now King G7, H5, sure. H5, Rook, H8. Yes. Wow. That's yes. a good defense. But I what if I put my king on G1? Yes, that's another story. Conceptually, this doesn't make that much sense, but I guess it does because rook because H8, H1 is... also there's checkmate, <laughs> so you cannot really so take the on G6. So the pawn's whether, uh, whether the king is on H2 or G1. Nice, right. nice. How wow. easy How, are no, those it's creative ideas. defense, yes, but, but uh, Fabi played H5 like with confidence. I have a feeling that he knows what he's doing. He plays with confidence all the time. <laughs> oh, yes, you think so. Sometimes yeah. he doesn't know what no, he's doing. I would play H5 with my head would be shaking, you know. <laughs> I can guarantee you sometimes he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> By the way, I think, Don't give I think all Fabi here. has a pretty darn good It applies good to all the players. I mean, not only Fabi. He's got a pretty darn good poker face. He, he does. does. He yeah. does, yeah. he does. As a photographer myself, I can tell you, I'm trying to catch it at least one emotion in his right. face, and it's always a, a tar I mean, it's not an easy job to No, because he's like constantly, he's on an even keel throughout, and you don't know if he's blundered a rook or won, won a rook. He, it's always the same. By the way, queen, okay. no g4. No g4, okay. okay. So, so basically, so, mm -hmm. uh, Levon has said, okay, I got it. I'm moving back and forth, but... You know, I'm I'm happy. I, I, you've weakened the f6 square. The knight is tethered to the c3 square because you really don't want to see the knight ever land. Although I must say, I I still find g4 so compelling. For sure, but I, but I think 
still wow. H5 was was another option which he yes. didn't go for. I would have also allowed, found H5. Allowed him H5 yes. from agreed. Black side. Agreed. Agreed. So in this position, Queen D3, clock times. Again, uh, mm -hmm. some very, very difficult position uh, moves are being made at a pretty 20, good 20 pace. 20 minutes for Levon, 23 for Fabiano. A pretty Sometimes good pace. Sometimes you have a lot of respect to your opponent, and you believe that if he played this move G6, probably he knew something, and if he played the move H5, same story. Right. Of course, there is nothing direct here, and, but... Probably he thought, okay, Fabi knows what he's doing. Right. <laughs> Ever happened to you, Yasser, that you don't calculate variations till the end simply because you believe your opponent is I trusted. so good? Right. I trusted them, but I must say, in my heart of hearts, I was contemptuous of my opponents. Mm -hmm. I had to have that contempt factor in order to win. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was really looking for those moments where my opponent played looks like a little bit of a dubious move. And yes. I go, you smile okay, at this. Hey, now, now it's got to be there. So, uh, yes, trust it. Most especially when it's very complicated tactics, mm -hmm. right? Like long-winded, tuck, 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 tuck. Yes. My opponent offers an exchange sacrifice. I don't want to go there. I believe you. Oh, really? I believe okay. you calculated it to the end. So I don't want to yes. take the exchange So it would save time for you, right? I mean, exactly. If you don't... Exactly. I, that, that saves time. That, okay. that I'm not going there. How can I avoid the exchange sacrifice? And I once played Anatoly Karpov where he was playing very nicely, adroitly, and he sacrificed a piece. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> so I was calculating furiously not to take the piece. And then I realized I had no choice. And that's, <laughs> I had sometimes it also helps, and, yes, and, if you don't have a choice. to ride the tiger, right? And, uh, yes, sometimes. That one I won. That one I won. Queen to d3. Um, okay. Uh, once again, asking uh, Fabi, what do you play? Right? What do you play? Yes, some, uh, Christian already showed these ideas with rookie six, and black has a way to avoid Maybe all queen this kind D7 of seven once again. Perpetual this. checks. But rook d seven. Yeah, queen b seven check. Mm -hmm. Marking time seems to be like a decent idea. King to g one. Shall we say? Um, at, at least it gives you some ideas with rook c1. If you play king g1, some, yeah, I was I, I was dreaming that when you play. I started to check even such kind of moves. Uh, which like even okay, always you have knight f1. Yes, you don't. Yes. I shouldn't get crazy completely. Yes. Yeah, you get very very yes. very eager to checkmate me still, on the back rank. Ah uh, yes yes. King no, to g7. Isn't also? this a difficult position to play as a human? It is for both Profit. sides actually. But to... more for black. More yeah, for it feels black like because white has the more advanced yeah, army. This, no, right? seriously, this position. rook is very, very well posted. Now the question is, after this move, rook, uh, and I'm looking at it all the time, and I do apologize to be a, um, uh, a broken record. Let's imagine I play the move knight uh, to c4. Now my my dream is to play rook to d7 and not allow queen takes e5. You keep underestimating and, my pawn take. <laughs> yeah, and you, you do capture this pawn. But because you put your king on g7, can I pursue attacking ideas based so on, on, on the fact C5? that you don't bring your knight to d5? Yes, also. But... Put the knight on c5 mm -hmm. this time. Right, so hold on. So just a second, so just in this position, Queen F3. No. <laughs> I think they're repeating. <laughs> I'm not sure. About I it. suspect we might be seeing a repetition. Yes, actually, I also have feeling. After these last few moves by White, Queen to D3, and you know, Queen to F3, it's a it's a re recurring theme. Queen to D3, Queen to F3 again. Sorry, uh, just to pursue that is one that last. Is that some sort of a attempt at a repetition, or is Levon thinking? Is it a going silent G4? offer? But Maybe. he could be going for g4. Maybe right? still, yes, he will repeat and go to g4. Like, for is g4. king g8 the best move in the position after queen f3 is the question? <laughs> king g8 looks like mm. a very funny move. I mean. Yes. Mm. Like, how does that improve your position? I understand, yeah. there's no more queen f6 check, so maybe... Seems like you could take on a4, yes, Bryce? yes, sir. But don't say anything for white here. Well, uh, Do I, you? I, yes and no. I mean, because it just... It's... It feels... 
it feels like there could be there, there could be potential so like let me just put a, a position on the board which is a kind of a a, a, a crazy like position right okay, King G8, for let's, example. and let's say just for example I play f3 oh no really like that and I'm dreaming 97 Nah, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm in, in, in fantasy land and it's not even close. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just refresh my board. Uh, apologies. Look, and if he plays king g8, then yes, we have a clear opportunity yes, to, to repeat. repeat the position. Repeat the position. So, but maybe he doesn't want to play this move because then it's like white may go for g4 and king g7 is an improvement. Yeah, exactly. It's so, a weird move to make. By the way, I think I might have misread this head to head. Uh, am I reading this right? In rapid chess, Fabi yes, it's has seven, seven wins, wins and 12 draws, and for Levon it's 14 wins. So Levon might be thinking. That he has advantage in rap, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But no, he's but playing with the black pieces. Look, yes. I mean, what happened to Fabi's career in rapid and please chess, it's actually an interesting story. I, I think, think he has improved a lot, a lot during the recent years. Maybe this score doesn't really show what's going on right now, because maybe Levon <laughs> beat him many times in the previous years. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the 2018 World Championship match, match in particular, mm -hmm. uh, after that match, Fabi looked at his career and said, you know what, Rapid and Blitz are, are becoming so important. You know, I've been I've been focused only on classical chess. I've got to improve my rapid and blitz, and he's done that. He I really has improved a lot in both rapid and blitz. Yes, I remember in 2015 in Dubai World Rapid and Blitz Championship, Fabio was around 60 in the world 60. in blitz. Yeah, I, I tried to find him and I couldn't. And I was wow. like, I even asked him this question, like, what, what's wrong, man? Like, what's really, going on with your right. blitz? <laughs> And yeah. he was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yes. Uh, well, he's caught up because he's definitely, I'm going to say, in the top eight. Yeah, and he has improved they a lot. are some real monsters in Blitz, and I'm thinking of MVL and, uh, and so forth. Uh, as we keep an eye on this one, and we think it might be headed to a draw, let's just drop in on the ladies. And Alice Lee, as she came in today, we knew, we know, uh, that all she needed was a draw, and she got an overwhelming position of, out of the opening. Exactly. She's been on cruise control for the longest time. Exactly. You know, At like, one point, she gave up her, I mean, she sacrificed her exchange, but I right. see that now it's this, the balanced position, speaking about... Uh, oh, she won her exchange back. back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. let's say it's the same. Knight to d4. Now, here, this is almost feeling like a puzzle rush kind of a tactic <laughs> yes. situation, because uh, the... the uh, black the pieces are frozen. The bishop is not moving, the this rook is, is a, not moving. What about checkmate? queen? Mm -hmm. if right. we just put the knight either on e4 or on d5. d5 or something yes right nine, next nine. move is rook takes f7 how do you defend against that yes actually knight d5 or knight e4 yes this is what she played knight i like e4. i like knight e4 a lot because sure. if you take the bishop which i think was the intention of knight to d4 we have knight no here. no rook takes f7 also that finishes the job why does so? rook takes f7 finish the job? I try to understand queen f6. Or maybe yes. it doesn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still six, kicking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm winning, winning, but it's not ISS that easy. Right, yes. I, yes. yeah. But unfortunately for uh, Begum, after the move knight g5, there's simply no way... Knight e6 is the threat. Uh, uh, ...of protecting. Also, like, knight e6 doesn't look nice. And me. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Levon, we, I think we, we, yes. we, we left yes. at the right time in that game as a draw now seems inevitable and a victory by Alice Lee. Extra rating points. Mm -hmm. Of course. And she could finish the match. Right. right by the away. way, uh, in these mini matches, because that's essentially what they are, these mini matches. Yep. And with King you, G8. You, you, you really, the, the, the confidence that you get by a score of three to nothing mm -hmm. is just fantastic. That, you, that, that just carries you and there you have a hard-fought draw. Really, yes, yes, absolutely. And it felt like towards the, the end, both players knew that they could continue the game, but they didn't want to take the necessary risks. Right. Especially Levon. He had the more active pieces, especially after the trade of the rooks on c3 and f3. Right. The knights getting placed where they were at the end. He had the more active pieces he could have played on. Mm -hmm. But with time ticking down, he didn't want to bank everything 
on an attack that could potentially backfire. Exactly. A game that we've kind of slipped away from us is the game between Nazi and Irina Crush. Again, Nazi obviously coming in to today's uh, matchup, you know, almost in an impossible situation. She has to win on demand twice. She trails two to nothing. Uh, this is the current position. Her last move was the move queen f2 to f5, essentially trying to force an ending of knight versus bishop after queen takes f5, knight takes f5. Yeah, and Irina is trying to make her life a little bit complicated and she's trying to, <laughs> <laughs> to make this win just not that easy. Yes? Exactly. How, I mean, it looks like completely winning for white, but now it's, uh, you know, it, it seems like black is, I mean, somehow holding for the moment, you know, not collapsing. Exactly. Right now. Mm -hmm. All right, as we uh, prepare for a very sh short break. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, are we seeing a potential resignation in the game of Alice? I'm just thinking that uh, after 94, I, I don't really see what you can do to stop that, right? Yeah, but like, I think Begin will still try, you know, to... Wow, but there's, I don't The know. problem is there's too many threats. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? Knight g5 is not the only move. It Queen e5, like oh. knight f6 is a big threat as well coming on the board. I apologize, what's a big threat? Queen e5 followed by knight f6. Oof. Like you're basically ah, forced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I understand. Queen, the the primary uh, square for the knight is uh, the f6 square. Of you vacate it by moving your queen, and knight f6 check. So, for, so for example, what uh, Christian is pointing out, uh, knight takes e2, queen e5, and I've got checkmate. Exactly. Yes. Th Doesn't that's look just nice. that's just beautiful. That is a very very nice nice one, Christian. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a situation like this? It's so embarrassing. You, you you just needed to move your queen away. You just needed to move your queen away from the diagonal and your opponent would resign. Except the move you chose was queen c3 <laughs> and they closed the door. <laughs> I mean, it's like they closed the door as you walked out the door. You got no. it, it closed behind you. But yes, I love your move, queen e5. That's and by it. the way, that's, yeah. if I don't want to play knight g5, we also finishes also the game. Also wins the, the game. Yes, yeah. 9 to 5 was also that, nice. That was the more uh, brutal, I would say, uh, knight to g5. Uh, but queen e5 is a little bit more artistic. Mm -hmm. uh, time? Not really that factor. It's just Four the position. It's just the position is bad, yes. 11 minutes for Alice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we better get in a break very, very quickly shortly here because Wesley and Ray have started. Uh, before we go on a break, and it will be a short break, I promise you, we do have a promo. Uh, the World Chess Hall of Fame exhibit, T.S. Eliot, uh, St. Louis's own T.S. Eliot, the World Chess Hall of Fame will be closing their T.S. Eliot, a game of chess exhibition soon. Come visit it before it closes on March 24th, which happens to be my birthday. How could they close it on March 24th? <laughs> T.S. Eliot, he lived in the Central West End, and there is a beautiful bronze um, plaque uh, to honor his historical contribution to the city of St. Louis. Make sure you see this exhibit before it goes away. We'll see you on the other side of this break. Quick, 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 fast, fast, fast. Yes. We gotta go. Thank you so much for joining me today, Alice. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about who do you feel has influenced you the most growing up as a chess player and who's been your mentor? Um, so yeah, I'd say definitely, uh, I would actually say my brother is the person who influenced me the most because he got me into chess and I played a lot with him, especially growing up when I was improving. Um, but there are also like a lot of great players who I've followed the games of, especially of like Judah Pogar, Ho Yi Fan. Uh, I've like looked at their games and I really enjoy just studying um, them. For mentors, I think I've had a lot of really great coaches that have helped me improve and mentor me throughout the years. Most notably, when I was younger, um, from when I was seven to I think when I was 10, Grandmaster Dmitry Gervich was my first coach and he really helped me improve and get motivated with chess. Um, I've also worked with Grandmaster Alex Lenderman who has 
been incredibly helpful with my improvement so far. That's great. That's great to hear. You are still so young and always feel so composed, regardless of the result uh, of every game. At least it feels that way. Maybe inside it's different. But tell me, what do you tell yourself in order to get over a tough loss? Um, I mean, of course, it's not always easy. I think sometimes I uh, tilt like when I have a bad result, but usually I just try to not think about it and think about the next game because really uh, thinking about a bad result only would make it worse. Um, but yeah, usually I just try to mentally reset and look at each game as a new tournament and as a new opportunity. And I remember at the US Championship, we had a couple of interviews and you mentioned at some point that you like to change something when, when <laughs> things are go going wrong. This has changed from, from last year or do you still feel that you do, you know, some changes in your, in your life so that you can? Yeah, I think at the US cha Championship, I mentioned that I changed my shoes. I'm wearing the good shoes now this okay, tournament good. and I'll wear them throughout. Um, yeah, I do uh, usually like sometimes I change my shoes a sweater or a jacket if I uh, do worse, but usually like um, I just try to look at it as a, a new tournament if I start out badly. Sounds good. Could you please describe a beautiful day in the life of Alice Lee? Uh, usually I'm pretty happy if I win a game of chess, okay. um, but otherwise like just getting stuff done and uh, usually I try to set a target for what I want to achieve each day. So if I'm able to do that, then I usually feel pretty happy. That sounds really nice. Thank you so much for joining me, Alice. I wish you good luck in this tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing you compete. Thank you. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States and is among the best in the world. Thanks to co-founders Dr. Jeannie Cairn Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, the St. Louis Chess Club is a non-profit organization committed to promoting the game of chess locally and internationally. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area, promoting cognitive development, critical thinking, concentration, and analytical skills. The St. Louis Chess Club welcomes chess lovers of any age and skill level to come and enjoy the game of chess. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. Championships and the American Cup, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players, including the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, Cairns Cup, and many more. 
all tournaments can be streamed via our YouTube and Twitch channels that also include over 2,000 chess lectures for anyone to enjoy. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, merchandise discounts, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. Landmarked by the world's largest chess piece sitting outside our front door, the World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy, including various exhibitions, monthly concerts, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, there is something for everyone to learn here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Enjoy free admission to our rotating exhibitions in our galleries and sign up for chess events, family-friendly programming, and art classes. And don't forget to stop by our award-winning gift shop, Q Boutique, and shop a wide selection of chess-related merchandise. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. And welcome back to day four of the American Cup. We still have some games on the way. Exactly. And, uh, for First of all, let's check uh, the, the results of the open section. Right, men's results. So far, we have one draw today, and uh, also the other games finished in a draw in the match between Livona Runyan and Fabiano Caruana. They play rapid chess soon. Wesley Saw so managed to make a draw against Ray Robson, and uh, Ray is still leading the match. Rapid game will follow up very soon. Um, we still have two games uh, between uh, in the ladies section. Right. Alice Lee is playing against Begim Tohirjonova, while Nazi Paikidze is um, fighting against Irina Krush. No results in the elimination bracket because they're having a rest day. Exactly. It's all about the champions bracket today. And we think that uh, Alice is about to put the finishing touches on a very impressive victory. Uh, night. 96 has just been played, and I hate to say it, but for Begum's fans, there are a lot of choices and simple choices. Mm -hmm. Rook takes e6, rook takes f7. f7. Yes. Uh, both of those are instant winners. Queen e5 also looks like Still. a really mm -hmm. powerful uh, winner as well. So quite a number of choices. And if you told me that bishop b3 yes, was also, also another one. winner, bishop b3. I would agree. I would not. Uh, I would not descent whatsoever. Spoiled for choice in this one. I mean, this is just over. Exactly. Yeah. Bishop b3, this is what Alice plays. She Ooh, puts more is, uh, pressure on this knight right, on the six. Right. Deadly. Absolutely yeah. deadly. Uh, that was always my principle, too. Whenever you're attacking, just bring everybody into the attack. The knight on e4, the queen on f6, the rook e7, bishop c2, bishop b3. That's right out of the Art of Attack by Vukovic. Just put everybody to work. Mm -hmm. C4, one last attempt. <laughs> yeah, so Bishop spike. takes on C4, yes. And uh, queen C8. Bishop queen takes C8 C4, role, yes. and there's nothing to be done. No, the idea is that after Queen C8, you don't take on E6. Why not? Because you get checkmated. One. I get C1. <laughs> <laughs> this is her only hobby. So there you I go. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Begum yeah. is still trying, you know, to her last chance in right? this position. Yes, if Bishop okay. B6. Yeah, the funny part is that after Rook F7, I have Queen takes C4. Right? Again, and you yes. still kind With of somewhat I'm still in the game. <laughs> right? Like, G7 uh, I, is covered. I yes. don't know how you've done it, but yes, you remain in the game for what, whatever. Uh, B2, B3 in that case? No. Look at this. Queen takes it. <laughs> Queen takes a six. Wow, what a wow. nice idea. So look, if that's bishop a, takes a six, that's actually, nice. then artistic, bishop takes a six. Artistic touch. A cruel mm -hmm. artistic touch. But and bishop takes, bishop takes e6. 14 years old yes. and her... Mature plays. Did you play like that, Yasser, when you were 14 Are years you old? kidding? I don't even know what, what, what coherent <laughs> I remember, thoughts yes. I had at 14. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, 14? What a great... Uh, I was a B movies. player at 14. Nice. She is a national champion. Maybe yeah, a world champion, too. See. 
an extended hand it's on nice, that spike uh, hand. It's a nice diagram for social media account. Yes, but those who are not watching today, Queen takes they E6. should That's a visual. Yeah. try to solve it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait a minute. So, okay. Ah, and the problem is after queen c4, I even have knight f6. Yes, first. I thought about it. Yes, knight f6. King yes, oh. idea. Queen takes and then queen takes c4 and rook h7. This oh, is nice. Let, oh, that's sad. Let, let, let our audience uh, cap, catch up with the enjoyment that you're just saying. In this <laughs> position, after queen takes c4, if I play queen takes c4, bishop takes c4, I'm winning, but I lost something. Yes. Uh, but uh, you both immediately saw you have the intermezzo. Uh, knight check, you can't play king g7 because then the bishop is pinned. Mm -hmm. So you go king h8, queen takes c4. And well, I think Alice is going to show it on the board. I yeah, because queen c4 it. was the move. I bet you we're going to see it. Yeah. How long will it take her to play knight f6? Of course, knight f6. I barely got the words out of her. She's a machine. You didn't have much time lights. to answer the question. <laughs> not <Certainly>. long. <laughs> Definitely not long. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Kostya, Actually, after... there's the handshake. Uh -huh. Yes, Our handshake. congratulations to Alice Lee, 3 zero. 0. Okay, this is impressive. Yeah, Very sir. impressive. 3 zero. two classical And I really have wins. to congratulate Verujan for his great insight. <laughs> I'm choosing Alice Lee directly I, uh, after I. You, you are, I'm directly trying to say that it's uh, no, also it's not your... about me. It's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Var. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I know. Um, impressive. Yes. Okay. Now, I mean, seriously, yes. uh, it was very, very, very well done indeed. Let's just jump to because again, Nasi, uh, she needs a victory in her game to uh, to to uh, stay in the match. Uh, Christian, if you, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, and she and does seem like she's getting close to it, but, 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 we're but, in but. the end game. It's not that clear. Yeah, because I have to admire the fact that Irina has fought her way she because has she yes. was in a world of hurt. We thought. It felt like she was moved away from resigning. Checkmated, exactly. uh, it felt uh, for a while there what was happening, her position was really so dodgy. Um, but she's fought herself into a pawn down inning? Exactly. Three, four, it's four to three. Never was so great. And we'll keep an eye on this one as a rapid game has started. Uh, I assume that's Ray and Wesley and not necessarily Fabi. Let, it has indeed, let me remind yes. you that we have 15 minutes for the whole game with 10 seconds increment per move. And Wesley is in a muscling situation. Yes. With the white pieces. pieces yes. Well reminded. He said that it's not that easy to equalize the score, of course, but uh, Wesley is always this modest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, uh, he's a very, very practical player. He likes to play for small advantages. I played this line. Actually, look, bishop c4. It's... Yes, sir, knight f6. And I play e5 here normally. e5. Yes. And I think there's a Kamran Shirazi and a number of others liked that imbalance of putting yes, a knight yes. on e5. d2, d3, a lot more modest, I want to say, yes. approach. And whoa. d5, no, that this is possible, yes. Changes this, the structure mm -hmm. significantly, takes, mm -hmm. takes. Mm -hmm. Knight d2, rook b1. Rook b1, interesting. Wow. Like you don't threaten before because it's knight c3, yes? Did you threaten to play knight e4? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. I don't know what it, what rook b1 does. Aha, at last. Here we go. b4 takes, takes, b5, bishop b2. Okay, so Ray. So this look, last move I really like. All I need is a draw. b4. You want to play h5? That's okay. Queen I takes will h5. stop you. <laughs> I will clip that pawn if you want to play h5. That's a really nice move, this b4 move. Yes, Easy to is. miss, by the way, because you're looking at h4. I'm threatening to go h5. If you go h5, that weakens some squares. Right. So I might so, as well. Yeah, after h4, if I could induce, just as you were saying, it weakens some squares, g5, some, h5. Not g5, and you yeah. get to play, right? Yeah, there's, there's, there's some tickling. You know, knight g5, uh, there's some tickling going on here. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, b4, good move. Great move. Uh, yes. Keeping a, an eye on the h5 square. Now, having said all of that, um, what could I suggest other than knight g5? Can I, I? I'm trying to induce you to 
To take with the bone. Yeah, mm. maybe on a good day, and it would really oh. take some serious yeah. efforts. But that's okay. I'll, I'll, look, yeah. All I have is time at this point. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm looking for a way of strengthening the attack for white. I don't have really that much. Mm -hmm. like, maybe queen d2? Queen d2. Ideas? To queen bring h6? your queen on h6 and maybe then push. Okay, of course, or you will threaten g5. knight g5. So what, shall I play king g7? Looks like a decent uh, move for sure, just to protect mm -hmm. uh, just the to h6 this move, yes. square. It's all about the time right now. Uh, Wesley needs to maintain his edge. Yes, on the he clock. had three extra Seven. minutes, but now it's not the case. Probably he missed this before, you were right. I mean, he started think he to think after this move. I think he did, because he was really thinking, okay, I'm creating something right now after right. this move h4. Right. And let's just take a break from our action to uh, send it over to Kostya, who caught up with Alice Lee, winner by 3 now. Thanks, Esther. I'm here with Alice Lee, who just won the third game and the match against Begum. Alice, congratulations. Thank you. Um, why don't you take us through this game, first of all, then. Uh, actually, let me ask you about your general thoughts on the match. I mean, you won 3-0, played very well. How do you feel? Yeah, so I thought, like, this was a good match. I think the important game was especially, like, the first game, um, because after that, I got a big psychological advantage to win with the black pieces in the first game, and then uh, round two went well. And I think this game went pretty smoothly. She just played a kind of dubious opening. Um, and I think this other, like after that, I was just able to press and convert. Um, yeah, what point did you think you already got like just a very nice advantage? Okay, I mean, uh, she played like uh, this Boko Indian. Mm -hmm. um, and I played this A3 variation, which she hasn't played before. I mean, which I haven't played before. Um, I think. Uh, bishop e7 is correct, knight c3. Bishop e7 I, is kind of dubious um, because she's supposed to play d5 first, otherwise I play d5, right. um, like what happened in the game. And I knew that this idea with e4, bishop d3, was very pleasant for white. Um, and I think it's just hard for her to play, maybe like knight bd7 instead of a5. Mm -hmm. um, because after knight d4, um, then like she has to defend the e6 pawn and it makes her knight on because yeah, if e5 you just go knight f5 yeah. right? and knight f5. it's like a very pleasant position for black like i can play bishop g5 and so forth right um yeah but here i just thought this whole game went like pretty smoothly um yeah and it was like very pleasant to play for white um rook to c7 um I knew like this had to be good for white because her pieces are just um, underdeveloped, her knight on b8 and her bishop on a6 are not very good. So you're not worried at all? I mean, of course, you just need a draw to clinch the match, but you feel like you felt like you're winning here? Yeah, I think I should be like winning here. Like just black doesn't have any counterplay. Um, and once I play like bishop c7 and d6, I thought that mm -hmm. I should be winning. Although there was a point where like, actually, uh, I'm not sure if my technique was the best um, because like, here, uh, because once I play queen f4 and ac6, mm -hmm. I realized after queen f6, she can actually take on e7. Um, and then after pawn takes queen d2. And I was pretty annoyed because here, um, like even when I take the rook and king takes, um, like she's turning queen e1 and also taking the bishop. So um, I thought like, I mean, at the very least, I always have a perpetual. Um, but I, I think I'd play like g3 here and then queen takes b6. But I was just like annoyed because when I play queen f4, uh, then knight c6, I realized after queen f6, she might be able to take, and this is still some work for white to win. Right. Wait, I gotta ask you this. So, here, you could maybe make a draw, like, immediately with this. Yeah. But are you saying you would actually just, like, play on with g3? Yeah, i probably play g3, because, um, I mean, I don't have any risk here, and her king is so exposed that I can always make a draw if I want. Wow, I, that's very Carlson-esque of you, <laughs> I have to say. Um, so, Alice, the other match, Nazi versus Irina, is still ongoing. That could go... Either way, um, but I want to ask you in case you see Irina in the finals. You know, you met her twice already yeah. in this tournament, both times. Um, do you have any thoughts? How will you approach this match for the third time? I'm not sure. Yeah, I played her um, actually four matches in the American Cup before because, That's um, right. and I'm not sure. Like this is also this format is a bit different because um, it's like classical and then rapid. Um, but I think I like this format so far. Um, Against Irina, 
I mean, I guess I'll have to do some preparation, but she's always a good opponent to play, and it would be a tough match, but also it's always a, a good learning experience. All right, thanks. We'll let you get to it, and best of luck in your next games. Right, thank Guys, you. back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kostya. Thank Once you. again, uh, congratulations to Alice. And what Alice was trying to say is that, yes, uh, she has met Arena in the finals uh, twice, but she also met Arena before the finals and got kicked down to the elimination. Yes. Alice qualified through the elimination only to lose the match a second time. So, in fact, Arena has beaten her four times in the American Cup. Wow. Um, uh, very impressive, of course. But uh, results so far. Let's have a look once again. Right. Uh, since we have more results, uh, Levona Ranyan and Fabiana Corana still play in their uh, match. To play their One rapid, rapid uh, the setup. We also uh, saw the, uh, Wesley saw attempt to equalize the score against Ray Robson. The game is on the way right mm -hmm. now. We will come back to that. Uh, Alice Lee won her match against Begim to her journal, which means Begim will go to elimination bracket and uh, right. Alice Lee proceeds and uh, she will be advanced for the final. And uh, Nazi Paikids uh, is playing against Arena Crush. It's very important for Nazi to win this game and also try to win uh, the fourth rapid game in order to stay um, for, for tie and stay in this match and perhaps yeah. try her chances in Blitz. Just to remind everybody in that Aronian uh, Levon versus Fabi affair, should they draw the fourth game, they mm -hmm. will then play a blitz exactly, to yes. uh, determine uh, who gets eliminated and down to the elimination bracket. Uh, picking up the action where Wesley So versus Ray Robson, Ray needs a draw to push Le uh, Wesley. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Wesley <laughs> into uh, the elimination. And I must say that Ray has played magni magnificently. He's just kept uh, trading pieces. Mm -hmm. Ding, 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 ding. And he's getting have? close. He's getting closer and closer to a very comfy draw thus far. This pawn on b4 is doing a great job at keeping these two guys on a c2 and d3. In the meanwhile, uh, the queen fully protecting the king, no weaknesses in the Ray's position. The rook on b2 also doesn't seem to be doing much. Like, how do you get it back into play? Rook a2 and then what? Rook c6 and hope. Rook a6, right. Yeah, that's Whenever it. you go rook a2, the problem is you're also weakening your own position. I can challenge that with rook a8. True. And if we trade, rook a1 becomes a big threat. True, true. Also, I, I, I have to deal with that. Uh, but you're absolutely right. My rook on b2 is not winning any Oscars for I think you, uh, best performing <laughs> rook. rook. in the world, yes. You but pointed moment, out something very it nice. It stops b3. Also, with mm -hmm. rook a2, b3 idea. Exactly, rook a2, b3, and just reminding white, you know, that pawn on c2 protects the, the pawn on d3. b3 messes you up. Queen g5, a kind really? of admission. Wesley is that he's, willingly exchanging the queen. Yeah, that, that, that he's kind of hit a wall. He couldn't find anything better. Precisely. It looks it, like that. So maybe he hopes that was. A lack of queen on the board, maybe he has some chances, I don't know, to attack some pawns, like maybe before. Well, let's take a quick yeah, gander so example, at this. Takes, takes, takes. I see a pawn. Mm -hmm. I... F4, probably. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And now I see a kind of immobilized rook mm -hmm. on the b2 square. I don't want to see you playing the move rook a2 and uh, springing into action. So rook a8, and again, rook a1 check. Starts to look like. Check. Well, <laughs> well, the thing is, the rook on b2 is yeah, kind so of silly. What about knight e3 now? Let me. Knight d 3 Are you yes. jumping? Yes, I'm trying maybe to play g4 f5. I mean, I'm trying to, to do something. Yeah. You know? yeah. I have to do something yeah. if I want to win this game. I, I have see, no problems. I can see your trainer is understood. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, th I liked it very, very, very much. Uh, Alexander Rochal, a famous editor of 64, was told yes. me that he was put in charge of a Moscow chess club team as captain. And he had one player on the bench mm -hmm. who sacrificed every game. He sacrificed <laughs> every game. And Rochal was all about safety, safety, safety. So Rochal came to that young boy and he said, I will be very disappointed if you don't sacrifice. Ah, oh, okay. 
big smile. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Yes, and finally, the, I can do so. And he played the most conservative game of his life. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sacrifice anything. He won. It was beautiful. It was a very nice story. Of, uh, but you're true to yourself. G4, yes. F5. G4, Let's F5. go. Yeah, because what else you can do? I mean, exactly. you have to try to fight for something. Where else you can try to look for By initiative? By the way, uh, Ray was looking for something even more concrete after the move queen g5, queen g. He didn't play rook d5, followed by rook a8, what we were just looking. He's saying, look, I have a purpose. My purpose is to draw this game, mm -hmm. move on into mm -hmm. the champion's bracket. Let's trade some more. That's a great wow. move. Wow. I really like Because that like, if you take on d4, then take on b4, knight c2. Wow. Yikes, and that is not any any advantage whatsoever. You're not winning this anymore. No. That's it. Not even yeah. close. That's it. Not even close. That's it. Um, so what boy, do oh boy. Uh, but you're really simplifying. I, I just simply don't see it anymore. For and he uh, stops Westman. even from playing F4, all these ideas, because like, <laughs> you, I'm you depressed, even, you know? Yeah, you're very yes, depressed. Yes, sir, I'm you depressed. Can't even, you, you can't even get in a, a, an attack Yes, I'm trying uh, my going. best to find some way. By the way, Rook takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight E3 by Wesley. Again, an admission. Did I mean, Wesley has hardly moved beyond the... The, okay, but he wants 95. He yes, wants he 95. Does. At least he created the threat. Well, he does have a threat. Rook mm -hmm. takes now that the pawn is defended. But rook c8 kind of puts a kibosh on knight d5. Rook takes c2 is the mm -hmm. intention. Yeah. Now, is... rook c2, then I play knight rook b4. Okay, I think that's a it's a try. At I least mean, it's a kind of a try, yes. But yeah, rook takes, rook takes b4, mm -hmm. and you do... you play a, like rook e2. Oh, sorry, knight is hanging, so you have to knight play knight c6, six, yes. Yeah. To prevent all this rook b8 hopes exactly. and everything. Um, four versus four, and by the way, we do have rook c8 on the board. Is the clock, are the clocks a factor? Usually Not where so Ray much. is concerned, <laughs> they are. So two minutes uh, difference uh, between the players, three minutes for, against one. For Wesley. 40. Mm -hmm. Now, again, should Wesley lose, he will simply move to the elimination bracket and he'll lose one of his lives. And this is, by the way, this is such a huge result for Ray. Ray. Yeah. Oh, two results already. Wesley he already so defeated Linear. And Linear. 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 Yes, two Amazing. 700 players. Both yep. Olympic uh, team players. So it's sort of like Ray saying, hey guys, I belong on the Olympic team. Absolutely. Wow, there are no, there are no weak players in this tournament. <laughs> no, Absolutely not. No underdogs. Yeah. No, not really. Everybody can perform well. And he's known to play very well in, with, um, in the short time con mm -hmm. controls. Exactly. Uh, Despite the fact that he's always in always his last trouble. 10 seconds. <laughs> he's always Actually, like, it helps. He always yes, flirting yes. with yes. disaster. Look, uh, Alexander Grishou, Costa Linier Domingos, right. those players who spend a lot of time in classical chess, suddenly they appear to be very good players when we speak about short time controls. But it's like they've trained themselves yes. uh, with the. What about me? Nerves. I should also do this. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but it's not the case. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should play more Blitz. There you go. Uh, but it sure looks like um, Ray is well on his way to drawing this game. In fact. Yes, not so much resources left. Exactly. For white to... I, I'm, I'm even starting to kind of warm up to the task for uh, Ray here. If I could get in a move like b3 and, you know... Uh, that is a threat. Yeah, because I thought about start... a move like king f1 and maybe b3 <laughs> is the of, move, yes. Right. Sort of like, yep. uh, no. maybe maybe mm -hmm. I shouldn't be playing this at all mm -hmm. uh, for a win. I could uh, easily go so wrong. So he plays a 4. What about Whoa. knight d2? Um, okay, ah. he's ready to give up this pawn because he'll take on b4, yes? That's and basically that, the one mm -hmm. thing he hopes to get. Yes, to create so sure. an imbalance where maybe... Although, I must say, I, I, I'm not convinced that uh, I'm any worse. You win the pawn on g5. Right. right and, and then that's all I can hope because there's some sort of complications arising up. Right. Like I go c4, you take my pawn, I go d4, and I hope. It's yes. a hope. It's a hope. Yeah, but look at Wesley. I mean, he's still trying to find chances. He knows that draw doesn't give him anything. And anything, anything. So he's trying. Ooh, by the way, rook c3. He wants if, to play b3. Exactly. That's exactly what he's saying. I, I really do want to play the move b3, and then I'll play rook takes d3, and I'll make such an easy draw. Knight d5. 
You can't I believe it. Rook. rook takes c2. Rook takes c2. Rook takes e4. Knight to 6. And we oh, pause okay. here because then suddenly knight e2 check is, is kind it? of attractive. And we have a handshake uh, in the game at Na nice one. 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 She won. She the forces Ooh. the rapid game. Yes, yes Irina Crush. Step by step, it's going to be not easy for Irina to you, play after losing the first classical game. You said it. Uh, you take one, one game, game at a time. time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Nasi's done what she needed to do uh, to try to force a blitz playoff. And we do have knight d5 on the board. Knight d5. Uh, no, knight right. d2 check. Yes. No knight c6. No knight c6. No. Okay, so where do we move our king? King, king h2. h2. Okay, I'm eyeballing one of the worst, one of the worst <laughs> checkmating patterns yes. you ever want to allow. You will never want to allow the knight to come to f6. Yes, exactly. Is this you, one getting a bit annoying for? Uh, maybe it is. I'm not 100% sure about this move, knight e2. Yes. So you cannot, do not play the move e6. You will find yourself on the precipice of resignation in three moves. I guess you have to go something like king g7, but that already gives me a pawn. Maybe king of faith first? No, but then you get checkmated. Wait, what <laughs> yes, do you exactly, play? because there is some... He's reaching for his king. He's, He's got to... Seven. No, he what? played king f8. Wait what? a minute. King of faith, but it's... Rook check, check and knight king takes... Seven, knight well, then f5. h6, h6 f5. or f5, one of... Well, Maybe Wesley you could play doesn't knight have to be... A... I mean... <laughs> Why didn't he play king to seven right away? I don't understand. I think he wanted to draw the knight to e7. Well, and the rook on b8, so that, that, that I can so attack your pawn on f4. H6. There, there is a threat of checkmate in yes, one, everybody. exactly. So rook g8, now he has a loft on h7. Okay, but the, the good news about h6, you're, you're threatening knight takes f4, as well as h takes g5, and you've made... The knight, you've distracted the knight from Maybe the f6. Maybe knight d5 with the idea knight f6. <laughs> Not a bad idea yeah, at all. Yes, so and knight actually. d5, if you take on g5, I'll take on g5. And I will threaten at least something. Again, I think that's again, idea, the, 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 this is the prime square uh, for the knight. The and what he probably square. wants to do is after uh, this one. So after knight d5? Yes, okay, yeah, knight sorry. d5, what do we do? Maybe something like knight d4. Knight d4. So the idea behind uh -huh, knight d4 I see, I see what want, want. is that uh -huh. we go knight f6, knight, take, h takes, take, knight f3. You don't have time to checkmate no. me. And then uh, because he's a nasty man. Absolutely. <laughs> so I have to play king g3 after knight d5, no? Knight d4, sorry. Now, king ah, g3 yes, no, or king g3 is not good. h3 is better, yes, king h3. King h3. But then we can take and go okay, knight e5. Take knight e6. Knight e6, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yeah. And I don't have king g4 three. because of rook g2. So what he's so that's done... that's why he took on h6. He, he, yes, and... exactly. He took on h6 and then went knight d5. In this particular case, his hope yes. is that he wants to play g4, g5, and... And, and the same idea, knight same f6. Idea, yes. the same idea. But look at how great they are. They, they calculate one all these lines, understand that it's not In working, seconds. and then they take on h6. Unbelievable. In seconds. In seconds. It, it, it really is extraordinary. Very, how very impressive. Yeah, like exactly. To make move G takes H6, you had to go through all these other opportunities and understand that it's not working. Exactly. I, I must say, uh, from Wesley's point of view, he, he won a pawn, but this is really, Rook I H2, mean, fantastic compensation, I want to say. that the the the. the uh, so what if I can look how he now? protected the pawn on this three? Yes, rook h three <laughs> protected from. But okay, wow. we do have knight c one. Knight c one, knight b four. He's trying. Okay, knight there's before. still a pawn up. Yes. <laughs> Somehow he manages wow. to hold on to that I like this rook h three. But I, I just feel there's not, there's eighteen seconds by the way for Ray Robson. Fifteen, 15 uh, seconds already. Ten seconds per move we have. By only. the way, Ray leads this match thanks to some very stellar endgame play in the rapid of yesterday. Correct. Could Wesley return the favor with some great stellar end game player Perhaps. of his own? Can Seven seconds, guys. 92 back. Nine before, yes, and no, rook two, he, he plays, he tries to kick the knight out. No, and maybe 
threatened the pawn from the other side. I don't know. Like but now we go knight here. Knight c6 and knight. Once you land on c6, oh, yeah. I go f6. Once okay. knight, knight, knight a6. a6. Whoa. Uh, okay. This is, something this is very sophisticated. Yes. Five seconds. And Ray comes back, back. to yes, the he's E2 threatened, square. Yes. Ah, because he, he also threatened the four pawns, so he had to play rook f3 to protect it. Three seconds, Ray, you have to make... No, never mind. Seven, Seven seconds. seconds Seven. Yes. Five, yeah. four, we were right. Chris said three seconds. Two. Two. One. He made a move with one second. <laughs> Unbelievable. I've seen it. I've seen it before. Uh, it, Ray has... Nothing can impress you, Yasser. I well, tried my no, best. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Lanier. Guys, by the way, there's I saw a checkmate left on H5. Okay, not I checkmate, saw, but... I saw Lanier... A... Lanier several times going down to a second, but this American Cup, I saw Lanier lose on time. I never saw Knight him lose on time before. Knight C7, Knight Did he lose twice on time? I think he American may have Cup. even lost twice on time. He's Some By ideas way, with Knight E8, yes, yes and G5. Correct. And, um, correct. Yes. Remember, that's our old standby checkmate pattern. Exactly. So Rook A4, he's trying to attack a pawn, but... Good for him. Yes, nice. And direct the knight to d5. He was yes. really worried about this knight d8 idea. Perfect. So he's yes. trying to make the knight defend from d5. But the problem is knight d5, rook d4 also. Yes. And you're just in time. Exactly. That's Wait a perfect. This might have been the saving grace. Yes. yes. This I might agree. now be just F5. Fine. F5. What is what is this? Yes. What is so this? So if you take on g4, maybe f6. What about rook f4? Yes. He's so this done is it. Not Oh. Rook G4 he's and rook. now what? He's not worried about F6. F6 and maybe some ideas with Rook E3. I don't Correct. know. Correct. King, King H6. Very, move. very King nice move. King H6. Wait a minute. You F7 did. pawn can What about be. Knight E6 now? Ah, oh, Knight E6, you give me a check on H4. Knight wow. E6. Wow, wow. Check on H4 turns the tables. Holy smokes. King H6. Yes. Nice move. Bring Nicely the king to g5, yes. and then you've got this rook h4 business, followed by knight f4 check. And, well, there goes the extra material to begin with. 20 seconds now. Both players, for 20 seconds. Wesley, so. Can I play And by the way, Wesley's three? king is a little bit trapped on the h file. Great defense by Ray Robson. Yeah, actually, it's Black who can start. The He's done it. Given. 96, 96 but your move, there Christian. is this beautiful move, rook h4 check, Christian. By the way, rook h4 check. King g2. King g2, and now I can take the knight. f7? Yes, yes. knight f4 a check. Knight f4 check, yes. But then I go king g3. <laughs> take f7, yes, and then let's see. You give me a check. First f7, yes. F7 we have to first. play f7. Uh -huh. First check. check. He's going for it, f7, king g3, rook h3. King g4, how is that position? <laughs> Wait a minute, I have king g7 and rook h8. Oh, by the way, we have 92 check on the board. Guys, this is, wait a minute, no, but this is lost. This is lost for whom? Because king g7, I go, no, no, keep going, keep going. Oh, sorry, in that sorry, variation. sorry. Yes, in this variation, rook h3. And now king g7, I go f8 check, and then rook takes f4, and king takes h3. Ah, you're right. He's played rook f4. Yes. Oh my goodness. Rook Wesley four, yes. is re has reached for the queen and he's about to promote. Yes. Oh my goodness. And now this... it's going to be rook versus knight. I think this is winning now. Oh my goodness. What? Wesley is going to what? make it. What a trickster. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wesley so. It's not over yet. Amazing not over trick. It, but Definitely not the over fact yet. How he played it's just unbelievable how he found all these chances. Wow. And remember, he's doing it against Ray Robson, really one of the great puzzle rush players of <laughs> exactly. all time. You yeah, know, champion in puzzle rush. I, I think. mean, he knows his tactics like nobody's business. Rook F1. And now, uh, help me out on this one, Christian. Is this one of those table base uh, positions where? You know, the computer says... Yes, it's still equal. 40... It's still equal, yes. Still equal! Equal, yeah. I, well, it's a draw by table base, basically. Okay. okay, good luck making it now with <laughs> five <laughs> seconds. That's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The challenge is all yours. Knight yes. f5 check. King, King f4, four, yes. King f6. Let's go. Yes, and try to win this position. Yes? The funny this part is that we actually had um, 
in this team battle competition. I don't know if you guys were following it. The one that you and Fabi won and together? Fabi versus uh, Wesley and Alice. Yes. We had the, not this end game, but a Rook and Pawn versus Knight and Pawn. And we managed to draw it with a Knight. With the knight. Yes, with the knight, yes. Now it's <laughs> knight and two pawns. Knight and two versus one. And so that's why the table base... This epic battle you had with Alice and <laughs> well, Wesley, yes. Wesley might be having some bad flashbacks from that <laughs> one, you know. He's like... <laughs> so you've tasered him with his... Uh, I've already drawn <laughs> one of those games. <laughs> And that eliminated them. This would eliminate them as well. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Some bad What have you backs. done? 19 seconds to 12 seconds as essentially, you know, you, somehow you have to uh, penetrate with the king. And this king on f6, it's really hard to dislodge this king. Any frontal checks will be met by knight f5. So. Very, very hard uh, for for Wesley to come up with an idea that might. Whoa, G five. Now so that he takes, he takes some that space takes some risk see. because. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm just I like going G5. to refresh. I, I do like G five. You like G five? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. I'm just going to refresh the board. Pardon me, that uh, I have to do all of this, but I want the updated position. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that. Uh, because you want the f5 square protected against frontal checks, don't you? It seems like he just can took some squares in the center and can just move the knight back and forth, no? D6, F5. Okay. What black needs to do is exchange that e5 pawn for d3 pawn. If he can manage to do that, it's over. And, and, and a draw would be agreed, of course, for yes. sure. Yes. But what Wesley is saying that if it was my turn now and I could play rook b6 check, that is the dream, that I could be able to drive your king back and then my king can uh, march, forward. march forwards. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. But with the pawn Be ready for the next 50 moves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the last with... move, g5 for, for now. <laughs> Whoa, rook g, well, rook check, yeah, that looks like a decent But move. check, I go king e6. And rook f8. And now I give you a check myself. Rook a1. Rook a1. He's trying to probably penetrate with the rook from the other side. Mm, sorry, but can I go e4 now? g4. e4 trying e4 to trade the pawn? Would have finished the game, right? Could I have played rook check? Ah. And then you cannot take the pawn. I could just go king e6 and that's it. Correct. Because I have knight, uh, knight c4. I think, that would have, I think that would have traded the pawns. Uh, mm -hmm. You were right. Uh, perhaps e4 rook f1 is what he wanted to do. King e6, sidestepping. Well, actually, I was about okay, to six, yes. about to lose my rook. Uh, Fifty-eight <laughs> seconds. So uh, Wesley's built up a, a minute on his clock. Um, rook a4, knight f5, check. Hmm. And now, if like king f2, probably four. Again, yes. yeah, I'm really afraid of allowing uh, pawn trade. Can we win one of the pawns like rook a4 and rook g4? Rook a4. Mm -hmm. uh, Threatening g4 and I think, g3. Yes, I think knight check is the problem. Uh, I, yeah. At the end, yes. And then I got 19. But yes. in any case, you got to do something. And his clock is under a half a minute. Yes, Rook so a5 check. check. King goes back to e6. Six. I'm, I suspect we That's might see Rook hold a4. This, position. this is unbelievable. Wesley played so virtuously, trying to get at least something how to. It was super descending. impressive that yes, he. Yes, but even this position he, is probably holdable for Black. Right, he caught. Uh, Ray will be the first to apologize and say, you know, like I, I got tricked, <laughs> and suddenly he had a chance, but it wasn't a, a good enough. Check. Uh, I'm assuming King F2. King F2, and then do we go G3? Do we put that pawn on G3? That's yes, King that's F2 a big connected. decision because G3, King F3, and the knight is tethered to the pawn. Yeah, maybe it's still, just... you know. Um, Here's the Ray question: Has to defend with 20 seconds on his clock. That's not easy. Not Rook is coming to G8 still, to try to force a decision, and you've got 17 seconds. What do you do? Objectively. He's more than fine right now, but will he be able to hold on to his nerves? King to d5. Actually, yes, king can go anywhere right now. 
And immediately it was like Wesley was ready for this move. He's, he pounced on rook f8. Needs to put some pressure on the clock. Just like that. Yes. So what, king is six back? No. Knight to d6. Strange. Whoa, 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 whoa. He just wants to play e4, e4 now. E4, If yes. king d3, just, just d4. Okay. And by the way, mm -hmm. if you go rook d8, can I go e4? Anyway? Yes, mm -hmm. I think so. But then you go d4. <laughs> no, I was no, about to say king e3. So don't play e4. I will take it and don't take with the knight. Yes, I'll exactly. I'll check you. Check and you lose the knight. Oh, that's nice. Or, or pardon me, I'll okay. check you f5. f5, yes. King e6, he had to go. And now, this is the problem. The pawn, if the pawn had been on g6, you'd always have king f7 in such a case. And knight f5 played with two seconds. Two. Oh, no. Two Ray. seconds. King f2. Now you're forced to go g3, right? Yes. And then king will go to f3. And this is the position that... Well, I mean, whether it's winning or not, that's a different question. He's definitely aspired to, and he's got the most he possibly could have. Wesley is really remarkable. I mean, it's incredible that he got this. Far. He might have a chance. He really might. Like I right mean, now, rookie eight. Well, ah, it, wait a second. Rook, rook to g5. g5. Yes, and if we go back with the king, king e6, maybe some tuk like rook h5. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. Seven <laughs> seconds for Ray. We've seen him make a move with two seconds on his clock. He just played knight. Whoa, 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 whoa. D6, so king what g3 is, is possible. King g3, what king Because d4. if rook g3, king... it's d4 check, maybe. Maybe yes. not. King, king g3, he wants to go king d4. Right. It's a good move. So perhaps try to hold on to that with rook to g4. Sorry. Uh, rook takes g3. Then I go e4. King e4, e4 check. So now you don't threaten to take on g3 with the rook knight f5. Well, what do you do? They, so, it's a kind of a zooks one. You've yeah, but, got but to Blake move. also has to make five a move. Seconds. Like, king e6 five or seconds. what? King e6, yes. King e6. Okay. I do have a check, and you would have to go back, I assume. Rook, <laughs> also another zook one. Yes. Rook to g4. Again, king d5, probably back. Right, go makes back, sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. King d5. And now like king e2. I don't know, something like that, you deep. know. Deep. Very, very deep, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then maybe there is a 4. Yes, so yeah, rook g5. King e6, king e6 okay. E6. I think in the worst case, we will see Ray. also knight against rook today. <laughs> worst case. Uh, Ray picked up some good seconds with those last two moves. That was very easy for him to play. And he's using that to... Get some yes. water. And look, six, six seconds Hydrate. for Wesley. Yeah. Three, three, two, one, no. he's gone. He lost on time. He lost on time. Unbelievable, he lost. He forgot he about, forgot about time. the clock. Unbelievable, this is Ooh. easy can happen because you are you kind of used to the situation that you have 20 seconds, for example, right. on your clock, and then you forget that actually, oh no. And Ray Robson takes down his former roommate Yes, and best friend won. and sends him to the elimination bracket. Wow, what, what, what a match. Chess is cruel. Yeah. And then wow. Went. Wesley just forgot about his yes, clock he because just, he thought yes. that Ray, and mm -hmm. just to, uh, to review those last few seconds, because, okay, you know, make your move. King f3, let's go, let's go, let's go. You got four seconds. Four, three, two. Come on, come on. <laughs> And Make he a just, move, and he just forgot about it. There he you forgot, go. completely forgot about it. Yes, and okay, this zero, can happen, zero. yes, and Ray Robson just shows him. But guys, wow, 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 wow. Oh my gosh. What's the Wesley breaking? He had a win in this game. Early uh, really? on, he had a win in this game. Okay, yes. Please show. And I will show it to you, but let's let's watch this uh, because this post is a very really interesting post right What there. the guys are thinking. G2, okay. This is what Ray had intended had Wesley played as we three, expected. Three, five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. So Ray was sure probably that the position is That he was making draw a draw yes. at the mm -hmm. end. Yes. yes. So in any case. He would have yeah, he but would have disappointing gone on. for Wesley, of course, to lose like that. Oof. I saw it once in in China that uh, Boris Gelfandler just fell asleep for three minutes and lost on time in a classical game like that. Just like that. Yes, yeah. and against Stanish Giri. So. 
And uh, just to remind everybody, we are waiting for Fabi and Levon to play the Blitz yes. tie breaks. Is rapid. It? No, we still have rapid game. Do we have one rapid well, game? Yes, yes, yes. Excuse they, me. Yes, they had all these three draws, and we have one rapid in the game ladies, for one in the open. Yes, that's right. We have and Fabi, Fabi, and we have Irina. And, and uh, I guess I'm too anxious for the blitz. It <laughs> seems like that. Yes, <laughs> rapid is not too fast for you. The, the, yes. the, the one that was uh, interesting for me was a Grand Chess tour. I had gone to Norway. Uh, yes. for the Norway chess yeah. mm -hmm. and I, I we were there Marcus and Brian and I as the opening ceremony uh, the, the round was about to start and the arbiter said and the time control everybody is blah there's no secondary time control yes. after move 40 you just that's <laughs> it so Magnus of course comes seven minutes late <laughs> he I plays remember. Topol off in the first round and loses on time yes exactly exactly the story is results Let's take a look as as Ray Robson. Yes, wins against Wesley So. So Wesley So is eliminated to elimination bracket. bracket. Yes, exactly. And, uh, Ray Robson goes to the final. And Kostya is really looking like the sensei that he is, as he has chosen Ray Robson as the winner. Absolutely. Uh, Alice Lee, wow, just had to. Just amazing. Yes, she had a great tournament so far. Alice Lee uh, won against Begin to her draw was 3 0. Very impressive uh, victory for a 14 years old Alice. And Nazi Paikidze managed to win a very important game um, after win. losing 2 1 2 0 against right. Arena Crush. And now she will be playing a rapid game. Right. And after all of the excitement thus far, let's jump to Kostya, who caught up with Fabi uh, wow. after his game, and let's get his thoughts. I don't know what Fabi is thinking before this anxious. important game against Limon Arena. We were tricked. <laughs> we were tricked. I don't think uh, they were ready to go to Kostya. Yeah, because nor normally players don't like, you know, to give those interviews until the, ma the match is still over. Well, as and promised, here we go. Fabi, you just drew your game with Levon. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game? Well, I'm a little bit relieved because in the end I, I felt like I severely misplayed a somewhat better position that I had, although it was complex, but I thought I'm a bit better. And then I tried some maneuvers getting the knight to d5, then I realized the knight is simply not well placed there at all. And I'm already kind of suffering, like it's easier for him to play. Um, okay, I was trying to keep the tempo up a bit because if I get in time trouble in this position, it could be like really, really uh, easy to lose. Uh, but he repeated moves. Maybe he was um, he was pressing. I was worried about King G1, for example, in the final position instead of repeating with Queen D3. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think overall I should be happy with the draw because maybe I had some small advantage, but also probably I was worse at the end. All right, thank you. And good luck in the next game. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kostya, as Fabi and uh, Levon are getting ready for uh, their final rapid game. It's nice to see actually players now, be, be, before actually this is such an important game, Fabi is talking with Wesley and they're chatting and also we could see Tony Rich. I think they're looking at the end Leonard game. Tors. They're still trying to analyze the end game of Wesley. <laughs> you see that pot on G4 on the corner of your screen right Right, there. Yes. right, 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 right. As, so, uh, yeah, Fabian players are Levon. discussing the game. You have promised to show us a, a moment. I, I, sure, I will show it to you if we don't want to see the beginning of this. But yes, it was just a quick moment. At this point, Rook to C3, remember he was getting yes. ready to play B3. B3. Rook to B4 wins the game. Really? Say what? Knight takes C2, Rook to B8, and yes. Knight to G4, and I go the other side, Knight oh, H6, no. followed by Rook to G8. Same the idea. game is over. Wow. What? So I go Knight to wow. age six, you get checkmated. It Golden opportunity. Golden wow. Opportunity, exactly. Oh my goodness, that would have been rewrite, rewriting uh, chess history, if you will. Fabi, they're underway and H2, H4. H4. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here the universal go. answer to Grunfelds and Indians, <laughs> H2, H4. 
Boy, if I had played this move back in the 80s when uh, Gary Kasparov was playing the Grunfeld, I would have been <laughs> ridiculed. They would have laughed me. A, a chess informator would have given it two fat question marks and called it not the novelty of the year, but the blunder of the no, year. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> like, what? Chess has H4. changed so much. Okay, so the idea is as straightforward as it looks. Please, castle so that I can play h5 and and or include c4 takes d5. And guess what? I mean, boy, Levon really throws down the gauntlet and says, I don't believe in your attack. Well, c takes d5, move. knight takes d5, h5. You should. This is what I love about chess, the battle of ideas. You know, yes, this is I mean, really we are trying to great. create some attack on the sides. Great I will stuff. Ask some questions in the center. Exactly, and uh, you know, uh, basically, Fabi is saying, "Hey, dude, my attack is really, really, really powerful," and Levon is sitting there saying, "No, no, no, I, I, I think I'm okay." I think he says, "Like I have uh, all studied, this in my notes." <laughs> I've studied the position. Probably it's a draw until the end. Exactly. Knight takes c3, b takes c3, a forced move. Now, I kind of think bishop takes h7, bishop takes h6, king g7. I, I would be a little bit reluctant to play queen a5 myself in this position. Mm -hmm. uh, coach, you're the uh, you're. You, you're my go-to guy where the Grunfeld is concerned. Uh, I rely upon you. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see. <laughs> Boy, you are I, in trouble, yes. I do not if remember. I'm your, your, if I'm your ace in the hole. <laughs> the only thing that I remember is that I stopped looking at the Grunfeld for black. That's why I more or less quit the Grunfeld. Because there's so many things that you need to remember, and this was one of them. And of the you also things. need to be so brave, right? I mean, look at that H file open. Wow. I'm three moves away from giving checkmate. Queen D2, rook back, queen H6. Or even, let, 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 let me just play some bad moves if you don't mind. B6, queen D2. You need to remember uh, everything. Bishop. Uh, ah, there oh, we go. There you go. Beautiful. Yes. And line the, G5. That's yes. the mate. That's the mate. Yes, That's and the mate. Rook is not helping. Just one of the patterns that yes. you should have. Uh, hardwired, if you will. Uh, and the problem with the Grunfeld is that most players don't have a stable repertoire, a stable weapon against the Grunfeld. They just bounce from one to the other, so you can never be fully prepared. You just mm -hmm. simply have to repeat your Grunfeld all the time and, uh, well, remember it at the right moment. Right. And perhaps Aronian will remember, perhaps he will not. But right now, definitely dangerous position for Levon with that H5 open. C takes d4, so right here, right now, uh, are we dropping back with the rook That's an in, option. All, in yes. order to menace queen h? Yes, exactly. I like this idea, but then maybe rook h8 is the only move. He will, black will meet mm -hmm. rook h4 with rook h8. Mm -hmm. I don't see the follow-up. I don't though. think we want to play rook d4, right? So, no, no, right? It doesn't feel like mm -hmm. that's... I mean, Not we could trade move. rooks and we can recapture on d4, but we're kind of losing our checkmating Ideas, uh, yes. material. Yes. But maybe this position, that's why one plays it okay. without any doubt. Maybe. Let, let, let me try again. Okay. Rook h4, I'm threatening queen h6. Yes, you have to play rook h8. Now, because of that knight g5 maneuver, yes. you have to take with the queen. Exactly, queen h8. Exactly. Maybe not the most joyful uh, decision to mm -hmm. put the queen on h8 on h8 yeah so i am taking with a check yeah so even i have maybe king g8 but i'm well, not sure in I've that particular so case tenses. i was yes. going to go queen d8 i go back queen is seven yes and so then, i uh, trust you <laughs> no i want a pawn and f6 then, yeah f6 you f6. convinced me easily f6 uh it looks a little bit dodgy uh, it, but it does Okay, but my pawns are not exactly mm -hmm. uh, gorgeous. But you have you are ahead in development. I but have I initiative. still want to play knight c6 and finish my development pretty fast. I agree. Mm -hmm. Queen c5, gift knight. me the pawn. Knight c6, yes. Gift me the pawn. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm just eyeballing. I want to take away the defender. Yeah, and you are trying to win the pawn also on c6. So I have queen e8. 
move. Okay. It's not like I really like it, but probably I have to play this move. You and take, I have to take with the pawn, yes. Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I, st I still believe white is pressing. better. Pressing, yes, yes, right? because black needs bit. to solve all these problems. G3, bishop, G2, um, B1. Christian, one of the things about the Grunfeld, I have to say, is that a lot of the variations, even including, for example, the current position, what we're looking at, the, the lines go incredibly deep. That's they the go problem. for it's many always a memory like test. Moves. It's always a memory test. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the big problem with the Grunfeld. Look, I love the Grunfeld. Right. I've been playing it. <laughs> it's I, in the I, blood. It's really one of my favorite openings to right. play. Right. But it's just such a difficult opening. You always need to be perfectly prepared not to get checkmated. Right. Yes, sir. What yes. about your memory? You had, do you believe you had really good memory for a chess player? Uh, Selective for a chess memory? player, I, I would probably describe myself in the 90s, like out of 100. That's good. Which was great. That's yes, really of good. course. But unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> I had opponents like Kasparov and Anand, whose memories were like 99 out of 100. And I remember this wonderful post-mortem analysis that Anand had with Anatoly Karpov, and Karpov said, I stand better. And no, said Vichy, I stand better. No, said Karpov, I stand better. And Vichy said to Karpov, look, this is your game against Petrosian. <laughs> In the 1972 Soviet championship, you were black. <laughs> and he went, oh, you're right. So uh, you I stand knew better, better his and games and than, than, Karpov. than Karpov remembered his own. Now, come on. Okay, no, you cannot fight this with these people. This is unbelievable. Yes, this is crazy. This Terrible. is off the chart ridiculous. So, and I had to deal with those monsters. I mean, I don't know, yeah, sir, how did you do it? <laughs> not, not easily. Uh, knight d7, no rook h4. Uh, uh, pardon me, c5 takes, c3 takes d4, no rook h4s, threatening queen h6s, uh, just quietly recapturing the pawn, the pawn. saying, what are you going to do? Well, most Grunfeld players are aspiring for knight c6 and queen a5 in such positions. Now that the king side has been so well mm, defined, knight to d7, hoping to bring the knight to f6 was uh, Levant's choice. And by the way, that last move took a good three sec three minutes out of the 15 mm -hmm. total that Fabi has. Both players starting with 15 minutes. Yeah. It uh, does seem like the Probably very he was well thinking prepared. about Rook H4 also, these lines we would just discuss with exactly. you. Yeah, so maybe he was trying to understand if he has something. And uh, let's catch up with Ray Ray World as he goes wow. on. Over to you, Kostya. Thanks, Yasser. I'm here with the first finalist in the Open Section Champions Bracket, Grandmaster Ray Robson. Congrats on defeating Wesley So in your match. Thank you. Um, Ray, can you just uh, provide a few words? What were your thoughts on the overall uh, trajectory of this match? Um, let, me, <laughs> let me think. I feel like yesterday was kind of critical because that's where the only... Well, technically this was a decisive game, but really it was going to be a, a draw, so that was... The only decisive game. Um, yeah, I mean, the second game, the rapid game yesterday was really critical. I think I think I played really, really well in that game. Some of the maneuvers I found in like the, the opening, first 15 moves or so, I would be really happy if I found them in a classical game. And then I also think I converted pretty well. So uh, I think that was really the key game of, of the match. And then today, first game was a draw. And then obviously this last game was also a critical game. Um, but on the position, I felt pretty comfortable throughout. And then obviously at the end, I've, I was very comfortable. But then, yeah, I made this uh, big miscalculation with f takes e6. And then, and then things became crazy having to play this, this end game. I see. Um, Ray, you also won your first match against Dominguez, which I thought was quite, uh, quite impressive. Uh, how would you rate your form so far in the tournament? Um, yeah, I mean, that was also a very tough match, obviously. I think that game, um, yeah, the third game of that match where I won in, in classical on the second day, that was another game where I thought I played really, really well. So, yeah, overall, I've had a couple of games where I played really well, and uh, the other games are also all, all fine. And I'm putting a lot of pressure, I think, on my um, super strong opponent. So, yeah, overall, I, I'm going to have to be happy with how I'm playing. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, going into the final match, is there anything you're going to change about your approach or adjust? Uh, I mean, I may, you know, I could adjust certain, you know, opening choices possibly b based on who I'm playing. But um, in general, I think, you know, I've been playing well. I think I should keep trying to do the same things and have the same mindset that's got me this far. So, yeah, I'm going to just try to keep playing my game, try to put pressure, you know, not just be uh, afraid of of these of these guys and um, and see what happens. Right, right. I want you to um, turn your attention to the monitor because producers want to play for you uh, what they believe is the longest eight seconds of your life. Maybe you could take us through your thoughts uh, as this was all going down. This is the the final moments of your game here. Yeah, we well, can see I, I, I drank some water because I, I probably hadn't. <laughs> Once we got to the end game, I was definitely afraid, but finally I felt kind of comfortable because I didn't see how he could improve. Um, the thing is, if his king ever takes my pawn, it's kind of too far away, and I'll get to play e4, or bring my king to d4, and his d-pawn is too weak. So I didn't see how he was breaking through, and as he got down to like five seconds or so, I... I just noticed the way that he was looking at the board, that he wasn't paying attention to the clock at all. So I was like watching him, and then if like, I was thinking, okay, if he gets like four seconds, if he starts to look at the clock, then he's gonna make a move, but if not, you know, I'm just gonna keep looking at the board, and then hopefully he'll keep looking at the board, and it, yeah, he just didn't notice it at all, yeah. That's the strategy, folks, that's how you <laughs> let your opponent uh, flag themselves. Ray, congrats again on a fantastic match. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations, and congratulations yes. Ray Robson. I mean, uh, Wesley So is a difficult opponent, <laughs> seriously, for everybody. And I think particularly so for Ray, uh, as has been mentioned, Webster, uh, they played each other nonstop as uh, dorm mates. And uh, th for, for, for Ray to win, I'm not going to say it long last, but uh, to, to, to win a mini match against uh, Wesley is a really a kind of a breakthrough. It's so nice power what you to said. Him. Yes. And he, we, he shouldn't be afraid. Oh, you were saying that when you have to win with black, you're going to play a modern. You're going to take you some play risks. Play King's Indian. You're going Absolutely. to play some risks. And that's exactly and that's, what she's doing. And that's exactly what she has done. So with go him. for d6, maybe some e5, maybe some c5, depending on how Nina is going to the, approach this. The, this is my backyard. This is <laughs> like what I uh, I world this out all the time. Knight c6 and e5 were were my two go-to moves. Try to moves. go for that knight d4 idea, yes. Knight yes. d7 is a way, uh, is, is a try to keep all the pieces on uh, the board as well. We've got these two uh, games going on. I have Fabi and Levon on my board. Maybe, which one would you like? And I'll take the other. No, I think we should probably go to the Fabi and Levon. We can only watch one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one at, at a time. time. One, one at, at a time. time. Uh, a little bit interesting moment right here, and I was a little bit surprised. We left it at knight d7, e4, everything was good. Uh, knight f6, and here I was almost betting that knight g5. That was the main move, yes. He was going to be played. The problem with knight g5 is that, okay, I understand. You, I cannot take the rook on yes, h6. Knight I've f7. got a, a double check, and whoop, there Beautiful. goes the queen. Yep. But what I can do yes. is try to go e5, e5. in this position. So, again, because the queen is tethered, uh, I cannot um, afford a trade of queens. Absolutely. Exactly. Like if you take on e5, then queen d2, and, and then, then, then you there lose goes the rook. the rook. So after e5, I would have to probably play d5. You would probably d5. have to go d5, and now I have ideas of even bishop to g4. It does seem like your pieces are a little bit stuck. You have to go back now, you have to retreat. And after rook to c8, very typical. Grunfeld. Ways, uh, Grunfeld, in which you can play this position, maybe even rook to h8. Um, it does seem like black is to be preferred. All right, which may help us understand why uh, Fabi did prefer rook h4. Four. Again, that was the threat of queen h6 and checkmate mm -hmm. that had to be defended. Rook h8, rook takes, queen takes, something similar to what, what we we're were discussing. Yeah. yeah. But in this particular case, the c3 pawn is recaptured on d4. Better for white, I guess. No? Yeah, you got, sure. well, you're king, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to play bishop e2 and figure out where your king is going to hide in safety. You play bishop d3, yes. And, and now, kind of a moment, well, actually, 
Yeah, I, I, I can still play king d1, queen c3. I can meet with rook, rook d1. d1. Now, Anatoly Karpov uh, made a very good living in this ending, <laughs> queen to d2. I, I joked with him that he furnished his apartment in Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> with this ending. With this ending. <laughs> Very expensive furniture. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, Start at Grunfeld and, the, and then you and, get some furniture. And, and, and this sofa was presented to me by the Grunfeld defense. <laughs> oh my and God. this sofa by the King's Indian. But uh, his Ming vase was definitely uh, the, the Dutch stone wall. He, he crushed. <laughs> The Dutch Stonewall. Uh, what do you got here for us, Christian? Queen yeah. E5 check. How are we meeting this King check? King E2 is a very normal move as well in the position, right? King Perhaps E2? You can even look at that. Why not? Because uh, I do have ideas of rook to H1. Yes, you do. Even at the cost of the pawn? The funny thing is that that king might actually go to E3. <laughs> I mean, whoa, 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 if you go something like bishop D7, let's sure. say, and I go rook to H1, and you take my pawn on A3 No, with come check. on. Knight no, G4 don't, at don't, the don't, end. With a knight on G4 coming, I'm not going to Yes, go. I mean, it's yeah. a bit too much. Maybe so now I go D2. knight D2. Play yes. knight D2. Right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, but here, good news for uh, Grunfeld players. I don't worry about E5, rook H8 That's and E5. That's very good news, yes. Yeah. And what I meant by I can go maybe to e3 is especially in the line that he just played with the move bishop to g4. Aha, bishop g4 on the board. He did play king e2, by the way. Correct. I yes. thought we might see this ending uh, with queen d2. King e2 was Fabi's uh, choice, and I want to say the most aggressive choice. Fabi doesn't need furniture. <laughs> <laughs> You guys already. <laughs> uh, fully furnished apartment. King e2, bishop g4, okay. What if I go e5? e5 or rook h1? Let's go with e5 just because it's a more... Rook h1, rook h8 at least. Well, then that's my point. Then you've got f7. Ah, then you've got a2. Right. Okay, hold on. Sh shall we, consequentially, I I I'll go rook f1. Okay, perfect. Um, should we go queen takes a2 first? Let's go queen takes a2. Okay, you told me that mm -hmm. I could put my king now on it's E3 because yeah. mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about knight G4 Correct. like the other line. So now I go rook But H8. now even bishop H5, no? Yes. Even also, bishop H5 bishop is H5 possible is with the idea knight G4. Well, very, I, I, against both, I had a nice answer. Ah, uh, yes? What, knight what's your answer? Knight E5. Knight E5 uh -huh. against both. If you had played bishop H5, mm -hmm. I would put my knight on G4 anyway. Okay, okay. And um, give me your bishop. Uh, Where can I put that bishop? Uh, let's say, look, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go bishop e6. Ooh, I was really excited uh, about nice. d5 Def anyway. Yes, but d5, Why? Maybe but you take. can still play it, yes, because you can take, yes, okay. but queen how, h6, for example. How do we you, assess this position? Yes, the idea is you cannot take immediately because of fork. Yes, how do we assess? I, I do have three pawns, after all. Uh, that right? is a lot of pawns, I must Maybe say. Maybe knight takes d5, the and king is still king a little is still bit out. Mm -hmm. I feel I have enough compensation. I'm not sure if I do, but it does feel like compensation. Yeah, on a good day though. Okay, uh, this is fun. It this is, is fun a very sure. double-edged position where uh, a single misstep. What? By the way, they're going Rook for that H1. Ending. Yes. Check this out. Rook H1, Bishop, Bishop H5. H5. This is my idea. What is the difference if now knight E5? But I illegal. Think he, I think he wanted it's to. Ah, well, sorry, it's illegal. That's the point. So that's why he didn't take on a2. He wants right. first to be sure that the king. It's uh, a threat. It, it, the knight remains in a pin, and uh -huh. now he's played queen d2. So he got the same ending, just a different ver different way of getting here. Now the bishop is on h5, though. Is that somewhat of a liability if you don't take on f3 anytime soon? Because Maybe, yes, you can If we do exchange, I go king takes d2, and if I, if you give me one more move to go knight e5. But wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, bishop f3, g f3. Okay, now it's Aren't I trying to get this exact position of, knight? of good knight yes, versus, versus, well, a bad bishop is... It, it, no, I have it, a beautiful bishop. Yeah, sir. Well... Rook c8, rook c1, excuse me. On a good day, what? Rook, rook c1. c1. Uh-huh. Are you sure you want to allow me to go to C7? Maybe not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe not. Let's go back. Uh, 
I, I was dreaming of parking a night on F4, the yes. F4 square. Here, hmm. Dreaming of electric ship. <laughs> yeah, here I guess I will have to, I have to pull in my horns, but okay, you're the Grunfeld player. Aren't you excited uh, as black to have uh, such an ending? <clears throat> Not so much. Really? Not so much. I thought you, you, you'd be doing a little uh, dance. Uh, <laughs> you, you think know? I would? <laughs> no, you have still some ideas, yes, with white, with black, like Knight H5, Rook C3 sometimes. Right. Yes. I have and seen uh, Gary Kasparov just put his pawn on E6, E6. and mm -hmm. say, okay, you're not going to play D5 anytime soon. You really don't want to play E5. Can I go? <sighs> just kind of dominate the Can I majority. Go, uh, F4. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I know, I know. Whoa, whoa, I know. Whoa, whoa, it, looks, whoa. it looks like a funny move. Okay, E6. Okay, E6. I cannot. Now I have to go F3 to defend that pawn. On Boy, D4. that is looking ugly. Okay. Okay. You don't like my moves, yes, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just. I, I, I'm kind of keeping your king under. A watchful eye, right? Okay, okay. Your okay. your king's yes, going nowhere. Yes, and you nowhere. cannot move the rook because always knight h5 is coming. Right. Like and rook c1 is not I, possible. And I'm prepping knight h5. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly when, but... Okay, I go a4 now. Whoa, a4. whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I kind of warned you. You weren't paying attention, but... <laughs> I just didn't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's getting wild. I meant yes. Larson. Yeah. Nobody believes you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, uh, something is happening Please. in the game uh, between uh, Irina Crush and Nazi Paikids. I can see okay. that the bar is jumping. The bar is jumping? Yes. Time to go there. By the way, Irina also played uh, King's Indian when she needed. You remember in her game against um, uh, Zoe. Zoe, I think. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yes she, she, she played every... King's Indian and uh, somehow like the... she managed to... Um, ah, yes, in this rapid game, after losing her first game, she yeah. played King's Indian because she said that she, the, 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 she the, had to do something. The, the, the go-to uh, defense, the, the modern King's Indian, gets you a bad position <laughs> in a must-win situation. What's happening? Uh, oh, yeah, she's in trouble. Uh, yeah, is she? Yeah, she's definitely in trouble. Uh, this is the position, as we have mentioned, she's taking unnecessary risks, but she needs a win with the black pieces, so right. she has to do it, right? She has to go for it. Right. But this is not it. I mean, I'm just simply going to go A5. I have absolutely everything under control. If you do go knight to D6 at the right moment, then maybe that's not the right moment right now, but I can prepare it. I can go something like queen to B1 followed by B4. Oh. Once I get the B4 move, uh, and c5 follows after oh, that. Mm -hmm. This is be... really bad for your pieces because I'm going to slowly push them backwards. You don't have space, you don't have a way to open your dark square bishop. Whenever you go f5, I go f3. I keep mm -hmm. the position and the structure intact in the center. This one is not looking great. Let's see what Irina played. A uh, a5 is Did she play a5? a5? Yeah. Is she a5 played. on the board? A5 yes. is on great the board. Great understanding. Yes. Knight to d6 is... Not yet. Not bishop yet. d7. Sorry, excuse me. But a5, bishop d7. Yeah, I've got Great understanding, well. by the way, by, by Irina. Because if she does find this queen to b1 idea, queen to b1 and b4, wow. that's key. And you cannot stop it. The thing is, you cannot stop it. Right. Yes. I have some flashbacks also from her game, Anna Zatonsky against Nazi Paikids. <laughs> right. Yeah, when Anna was winning completely and could take on d6 and had an extra piece. But exactly. at the end, she missed a lot of opportunities. And again, how the history yes. would have changed had that knight takes d6 move been played. I like queen b1 and b4 very much. That yes. kind of uh, cries out, doesn't it? Uh, one of my approaches in these kinds of positions has always been uh, to grab the two bishops. I love playing the move knight a4, essentially provoking bishop takes a4, queen takes a4, and then b4 as well. It, it, it feels, strategically speaking, almost like you're winning. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's that good. Let me just show you what I mean. Okay, I play knight to a4. Uh, queen b1 is perfectly good. Don't, don't get me yes, wrong. Yes, but I mean, you this is, uh, show another ju just, just to uh, illustrate one variation. Let's say I play f3 to defend. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like one of those situations where you can't prevent me from playing c5. And that's the problem. Yes. Once I kick this knight away and I, I pick up 
I, I recapture the pawn on b4. Oof, two bishops. What about it's this over. bishop on g7? Yes, what, what the bishop is doing? Then. Uh, yes. Irina is having some difficulties <laughs> with that. Well, actually, Irina had difficulties with the bishop on g7. And the previous, the previous yes. game. That's right. Now she sure did. She's uh, paying her respects back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what one, one moment you're the student, the next moment you're the master, <laughs> you're right? The master, exactly. No, but yeah. Irina played so many these kind of decisive matches in her life, decisive games. She really knows how to do it. Yes, yes. it's so important to have this experience. Exactly. And you can gain it only by playing, playing, playing. There is no other way to right? feel the moments. And yeah. I oh. mean, if you're going Absolutely. to become a chess warrior, you have to play those tournaments. You have to go through all and, this. Yeah, and you've got to play, you know, you 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 got to go through the gauntlet. You want to play on the Olympic team. You got to play uh, Fabies and Levons <laughs> and everybody. Queen C two. Okay, that's the most modest move of her choices. Uh, again, Knight A four, Queen B one, maybe a little bit more critical. She knows her she, plan, though. I she think she wants plan. to play Rook B one. Correct. Rook F B one, and she did. So Knight D six. Rook f1 to b1, and her idea is more or less to meet f5 with f3, all the time. followed by b4. All the time, ah, yes. Whenever you go f5, says, I like, go f3. Whatever I, black is doing, I have my own agenda and I exactly. don't care. Yes, like exactly. this before and c5 is happening. Right. Wow. It's just the fact that these double pawns, if you put this e5 pawn back on the d6 square, mm -hmm. okay. okay. It's you know, not bad, yes. Right? Uh, it's just the the... The double pawn, you don't ever really want to play e6. No. So this pawn on e7 really doesn't play a role, whereas b4 and this pawn on a5 actually is very, very nice to um, en passant. And of course, all these kind of ideas with the 4, g5, g4 are not working in this position, right? Right, you're so, mm -hmm. you, it, it, it's sort of like... You're you, late. You're bluffing. <laughs> yes, of course. Really badly, in mm -hmm. fact. Yeah. But what to do? Did you ever get a position like this and you thought to yourself, I really, really, really want to play B5, B5. <laughs> but there was some idiot in the history of chess that invented... <laughs> <laughs> and whoever that idiot yeah. is, I hate his guts. <laughs> yes. Because B5 would yes, be a yes, fantastic yes. move, right? Of but course. Not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for Ampassant. It's very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Who was that guy? F5. Actually, good question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and find him. <laughs> uh, yes. F5, F3. Okay. Uh, look, this is a bad position. Moves don't come easily. I, almost like Begum, Alice Lee and Begum. Al, uh, Alice just had this strategically dominating position out of the opening, and Begum couldn't hold it. This yes, is what even we're though she tried and she was creating some kind of ideas, but still, like, it was too the correct light. play, it's yeah. really hard to hold it. And Nasi understands that fully, I mean, of course. Yes, absolutely. Like, the plan is clear, you don't put your rook on b1 without <laughs> opting to play before, yes, right? and c5, yes, so since she knows this, what's going on. Since this one looks Terrible. pretty solid yes. for white, should right. we go back to the Fabi versus... Yes, uh, please. Let's go. Um, yeah, go ahead. Game. Would you bring it up on your board for just a moment? We've got F takes, F takes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, clocks a factor? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. One minute. Oh, if I'm yes. reading. No, seven minutes for Levant, two minutes for Fabiano. Whoa. And this is looking like a very sharp position, by the way. Right? I see a king on f3 and the queen uh, yeah, still on the like, board. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. We left it after queen d2. Yes. Let's quickly catch up with the players. Queen b6, e5. And he took on with the king. Yeah, a good general oh, should, should uh, lead his yeah. army I'm into not battle. Sure about that. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. Especially I mean, if it's not our general. Uh, yes. <laughs> Then sure this applies to chess uh, as much. D5, F, uh, here comes the en passant. En passant again, but I'm not okay, sure. Okay, now you can't take with the knight because yes. that would simply allow queen h6 check and to pick up the pawn. So we're assuming queen takes f6 or actually I, something to be said for you. Yeah. I'm not sure, rook b1. You might be having rook some problems b1? With, with b7, right? Why? He, he took with the queen. He did take with the mm -hmm. queen. I could go queen a6. And then maybe some d6, d6. ideas. Okay, but, but 
Okay. Wow, that's a king on f3. Any case, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, en passant, queen takes f6. Let's go. Check. Well, the good thing about Fabi's position right now is that at bishop on e4, you will be able to reinforce it now with f3. Right. And there's no more pawn on the f file attack. Would you play it. queen f4? No. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> I would be tempted to play queen yes. f4 and just say, okay, look, my king is kind of. You know, some driftwood, yes. uh, you know, I'm not sure. You want the ending without queen c6. Okay, yes, so yes. now we have queen a6 check, kind of uh -huh. asking the question. Hit. So who's well, better in this position? I mean, really good question. Balance who, throw who would you, usually. Who would you take? I like black. You like black, okay. Only because I think my king is a lot safer, and I'm not afraid of this pass d pawn. All I need is yes. to go f3, and then I will be able to hide my king on f2. That's so if fair. I can get f3, if yes. I would have one more move right now and yes, play f3, f3, yes, f3 exactly. and I would take f3? white. Okay. Yes. And I would so take black seeing... because it's a live on plane and he's my pick. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, matter what. Game, eh? Yes, no matter well, what's this... good, no? Yeah, it's very this good. is the battle okay. between our picks. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. My... I pick Wesley. I have to. I so have you to can say. be neutral. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you're I the one. Kostya picked uh, Ray Robson. Ray Robson. So Queen A6 check. Uh, asking a question, where do you want to? I, I agree. If you're bishop d three, queen f six back to d three. Wow, queen f six back very actually, quickly. Yes, because he wants to take on d five and bishop before is forced, so it's a draw. It's a draw. It seems like it's a draw. Bishop e four and uh, he has pick. to defend the pawn. He has to defend against the threat of queen e five check, bishop e four, and just as as uh, Christian said, if you. If you allow white the setup mm -hmm. where the bishop is solidly defended with f3, then you may not be a happy camper. So and let's keep going with that. Reason. In case of draw, actually, they will play the blitz uh, portion of the games. But you know, Levon is ahead on time, four minutes more. Maybe he would like to use this. Well, he can use a couple mm -hmm. of them just to see. Like because, what? I mean, you, you, do, you, you do want to explore your own chances, right? And mm -hmm. a move like e6. Let me just ask you the question. What do you do after e6? Oh, queen no. Queen a6 check. Oh, he's just... Uh, Levon actually played queen a6 very quickly. I thought he was going to spend some time, but he's he's convinced himself the position is equal. Yeah, I mean, d3. why not? He will make a draw and oh. then he plays with oh. white. Yes, so okay. Okay. Fabian is claiming the draw right now. So they go to the second yes. game. Yes, here we are. Handshake and draw. it means draw in the match after two classical and two rapid games and they will play Blitz. So what we predicted before that they were going to play all the Armageddon, baby. <laughs> Armageddon. Uh, okay, no did you Armageddon? bring your sleeping well, blitz, bag, blitz, everybody? Blitz. Uh, let, blitz me see how, yes. uh, let me see how they've done in their head-to-head -head when they have Blitz with one another. Mm -hmm. I think Levon is, is doing well, yes, if I'm not mistaken. I see the Blitz 2-2. Two to two. Two, Yes, 2-2, two to two, but it's Blitz Armageddon as well, so four right. wins for Levon and one loss. How, I don't know how it works. Right. <laughs> but it's something like that. <laughs> but in their American Cup history, yes, it looks like Fabi won four, mm -hmm. Levon, Levon four. won four, and there was one draw. Exactly. How did Fabi win? <laughs> This American Cup. Uh, uh, because maybe it was Sir Market on a draw, draw with enough. the black pieces. Ah. You know, it was possible at one point to win the World Championship match by oh, yes. playing all the draws. Oh, you yes. know, because Sir right. Market was the last game and you could just make a draw with black pieces. And exactly. That's it. Uh, yeah. Let's jump to uh, the game that is currently underway. As we can see there, uh, Arena Crush enjoying a one point lead. All she needs is a draw to. Uh, to win the match. Yes, to, to win the match and to go to the final where exactly. Alice Lee is waiting for her right uh, now. I'm, I'm just thinking uh, Alice Lee. Who wants to play against Alice Lee? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, somebody uh, will have to play Alice Lee. <laughs> oh. No, both oh, of them won. Arena played knight takes d f knight takes e4. I was, I would have bet f3 takes e4 automatically. I sort of like knight takes e4 actually. You do? I do. Because yeah. it does give Nasi this chance of 
hanging around, right? Not really sure. I mean, I can. I mean, if I put the knight on d4, I'm in with a shout. Yes, yes, and that's why probably I would even consider taking on b5 right now. Okay. Take on b5. And, and again, I'm just. Before. I'm take hanging around, right? I'm not sure. I'm, you're not? No, I'm not sure at all. I mean, that's that that that's a terrible bishop on g7, and bishop takes b5. Sure, looks like the right move. I mean, b1 maybe. Yeah, but still it? not over. Rook b1. B, b1. Rook b1. Rook hey, I want to take your pawn. Mm -hmm. Queen d7. Answer 6 also. Yeah. It's just about the, the bishops. Yeah, uh -huh. the relative values of the bishop. Yeah. By the uh, way, for sure. at, at some point, I will at start blackmailing you with, <laughs> with the with draw, draw offers. Yes. Uh, I'm very happy take... to make a draw. By, By the way, way uh, right. uh, Arena spotted another opportunity. She wants to keep her ah, a5, a5 pawn, pawn because now she threatens d6 and, and black rook takes to before and d6. Lose time. Yeah, double, discover check nice. again. This curse that looks of these good, double maybe. pawns. I like queen a2. Yes, nice good. move. She yes, had to before. see this from afar when she mm -hmm. recaptured with the knight on e4. I don't doubt that she had seen this position in her mind's eye. Wow. Now, yes. this is a very nice move. Like, to be it sure really that is. if you don't give even a5 pawn, right? it's just amazing position for white. I give nothing. 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 No, no, <laughs> Not no, no. even I a keep square. Keep everything, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The thing is, she's really holding control of this position. Like, yes. black is trying to find some sort of counterplay. Yes. I don't know where some is it. one move attack. I don't <laughs> have it. Desperado. Okay, queen. Maybe, I mean, and queen this G4. actually is one of those offensive as well as defensive moves, it, it just takes any sting away from the move queen g4 Even. as e4 is defended. And you can easily see that uh, Arena is prepping any kinds of attacks now against the b5 pawn and she'll be pawn up. Oh, she didn't go queen g4, okay. What did she do? King h8. Just... King h8, yes. But now queen e2. Queen e2 to take away queen g4 as and well. And take, your, take away your pawn as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, I, I... It's a very bad position now. If rook b5, rook b1 will follow right. up. Right, right. Collapse. C6 later on. Yeah, I mean, it's winning for white. To uh, totally. So once again, uh, this, the third American Cup, is going to feature Arena. <laughs> And Alice, Alice competing prior to the finals. And then the question is, in the past two editions, Alice has been relegated to the elimination bracket, but fought her way to, back and, to uh, Arena. Back to Arena and lost again. Unbelievable. So, wow. Um, for Arena, something special about the American Cup that just fits her. You know, so uh, maybe it fits her style, first of right. all, but I remember also, like, Peter Sviller was asked once, like, how he does it, winning the Russian championship for so eight many times, times eight really, times. Yeah. And he's like, once you won in the event in this format, you kind of have this confidence that you are able to do it. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, so you keep, I don't know, so some kind of extra confidence you have right. and you keep winning <laughs> this event. Right. Easy to say still, right. uh, difficult to achieve. To achieve, right. Uh, because you mentioned Peter Sviller, um, what was the greatest comeback? Oh my God! Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. For this <laughs> right? World Cup, you are talking this about World the final Cup, right? when Peter was so close to clinch the second victory. Was he ahead three zero? No, 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 no. Or two, two I zero. Think two zero. Two, oh, yes. And yes, then Sergei Karyakin. Yes, he came kept... back. Yes, and he won the World Cup at the end. Yes, it was well, just. Well, the wow. thing is, uh, Lawrence Trent jinxed him. What? On Twitter, Lawrence Strand congratulated Peter for winning the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and then he that realized... Was a premature congratulations. <laughs> out of four. <laughs> Karyakin came back. Yes, because, you know, they have this format that sometimes it's two games and then four games. So that's, that's what happened. <laughs> yes, and it was a dramatic uh, encounter. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yes, so Rook yes. takes B5. And again, this just feels like complete cruise control. The relative power of the two bishops, just an extra pawn, mm -hmm. but also dominating. There are no weaknesses in White's camp. Yes, uh, sure. E4 is well defended. Uh, as soon as we play Rook B1, that too will be well defended. Rook uh, A8, kind of a forlorn attempt here at uh, going oh my after gosh. the yes, Bishop D2. Horrible. Like you're you're know, killing I mean, all, all ideas. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. Rook B1, and, yes. And any chances of counterplay? Mm -hmm. Nope. 
I, you might even put that bishop c3 and yes. maybe queen b2 and go for the e5. Pawn. Oh my gosh. And this yes. is just, yes. E5 yes. is also weak, right? Oh, okay. So rook b1, allowing rook takes uh, so a5. So rook b7, probably, yes. Rook b7, and then the c pawn. <laughs> just move. The c pawn marches. Right. And also, queen should go to the last rank, it seems, because rook b8 is also a problem. And no Oops. queen g4. Yeah, because it's rook b8. Yeah, it's such a sad position. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Oh, this is just has disaster written all over it. I think it's moves I away wonder from if resignation. Marina is ready for a draw because draw gives her victory no, in the match. You Remember can't what she offer said. A draw, you can't. Uh... Yeah. Ah, but you cannot offer a draw. So that's the point. They have to play until the end. Right. Yes. Actually, how to make a draw in this position? That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember she said. And and I remember she said against, that she was ready for a draw against Zoe, but okay. Yeah. I think this is just this uh, waiting for a handshake after yes. Queen E8. We're going to see the move C6. C6. We're going to see C7. Already We're going to see Rook uh, to B8. We're going to see Nasi going down, but we do I think we're gonna have see another game. So he played, uh, she played Rook to A1. Okay. I was expecting Rook A2, Queen takes A2. I wanted to oh. see that. Ah, <laughs> nicely, okay. nicely spotted. Uh, rook a1 was played. What Christian was mentioning that if this you go, is nice, yeah. yeah, we can we can trade queens, a highfalutin way of trading. And queens. then c7 and exactly. Would be rook a1 easy. on the board. C7 probably c should be more than fine. You, you know, it's for those of you who don't trust yourselves in such <laughs> moments. <laughs> Me, H3, for example. Right, H3, Ooh, not yes, the H3. worst move Mark. that ever met. Look at that uh, classy move, queen, queen D1. Queen D1, one. I would play this move. I just wanted to propose it, like move to queen to make sure that queen goes to B1. You beautiful. can't spoil mm -hmm. uh, it. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. No, that's great. Yes, so maybe we should jump to the Fabio game, yes? They, yes, I heard exactly. that they have started uh, to play their blitz match. Yes. So let me just remind you, you will have two blitz games uh, in this mini match, and in case of a tie, will be followed by another two blitz games. And in, in, right. again, if it's, we have draw in the match until somebody will manage to win. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here we go. Blitz. What How do you assess them as blitz players? Where would you? Yes. Both so extremely good. Both. both. Yes. Both At the moment, good. both are extremely good. Uh, but you guys were mentioning, Fabi just improved mm -hmm. tremendously improved so in the last few years. Before, maybe I would have picked Levon. Levon. Yes. Yeah. But now, uh, also, Fabi has been playing tremendous blitz. I don't remember, what, how did they play in Samarkand in this last uh, tournament in Uzbekistan? For the World, uh, world Championships Rapid, rapid Blitz. Blitz. Yes. Levon they, there? Yeah, yeah oh, both of them there. were there. Yes. I remember their pictures in mm -hmm. a beautiful <laughs> Samarkand, but I don't remember the result. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, but no. definitely I think they didn't win the medals. This I, I don't remember, I don't recall, but... No, they nice. did not win medals. No, no, no. for sure not. Um, what can you tell me about this particular opening? It's been more or less topical for some time, uh, Coach. Oh yeah, absolutely. The Italian... Mm -hmm. But this early D5... With the early D5, this is how Levon likes to play. Right. He, he wants to um, pretty much equalize quickly. He wants to exchange those central pawns. He doesn't want to suffer, basically. Mm -hmm. He wants to have it, some space, yes, also. It, right, it, it, keep it, the pawn on e5 against the pawn on d3. That's okay, his, his but isn't that. that e5 pawn, shall we say, a little bit more weak? That's a trade-off. weak? That is a trade-off. b4, yes. uh, asking the bishop to declare itself. Would you like to go back to f8, or would you like to go back to a7? That's a good question, actually. Where do you, where do you go? That's why he asked it. A7. 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 Mm -hmm. Now, here's the next question. Should I be playing B5? Or Queen B3? I think rookie you one, I think. To he get was ready with for. Rookie one. And... Well, Rookie one, I'm a little bit worried that the bishop will, will uh, snap out to F5 and put some pressure on the D3 square. And by D3 the way, pawn. Irina just well, officially time, yes. clinched this match. 3 1. And she stays in the champion's bracket, and Nasi is relegated to the elimination bracket. And she Irina, has a life. We have she the first finals yes, exactly. of the champion's bracket. That is Irina Crush versus Alice Lee. A no. three-peat. <laughs> a three-peat, yes. Of the uh, Queenie 2 almost entices 
the move knight h5 because don't forget we yes, did put the bishop was not just on a7 for purpose okay bishop to e6 yeah knight h5 would look nice Bishop takes e6, knight to e4, and I don't know, but for me, I think Levon got the better uh, Bishop did position. Bishop yes. Based on the time expenditure, it does feel like he's a bit more comfortable right because now. Because this pawn on e5 is nicely defended, whereas this pawn on d3, I mean, I'm going to play queen d7, Ooh, I'm going to play rook Guys, d8. F5, F5 whoa, big whoa, whoa, move, whoa, whoa. you don't have... Oh, wait, maybe you do have knight g3. No, he wants to go knight f4. Knight c5. Knight f4, the rook on e6. Is, uh, it's hanging. It's hanging, yeah. By Excuse way, me. That was my initial uh, thought, as thought as well, as well right? Yeah, yeah like, where were... Uh, knight went to c5, bishop takes c5, and Levon is saying, He's look, I am not trying to equalize. Fabio has to play faster. He has less time already, 25 seconds against 40. Whoa, whoa, this whoa, is not whoa, good whoa, news whoa, whoa, for whoa, Fabiano. Whoa. What the heck is... Knight f4, take, take, and queen to b2, I think, would have been okay for white. Really? Okay. Uh, still not sure of that one, but here we go. I think Levon is the one who is in the driver's seat here. At the here. moment, yes. I'm looking at knight. I would like to capture this pawn, and I'd love to do it with the knight. That's e4. Great. Look at this. Ruining a little bit this pawn structure in the center. True that. You cannot take on f6 because of taking on f3, and that would be... Problematic to so. say the like least. Probably will take on this. I think uh, Levon is doing very, very well here. Fabiano right now needs to Ooh. find a way to pull the brakes. How do you do that though? Right. Yes, How do you I mean, save look the at position? Look at these rooks, right? And also time. Rook takes e4. Weak pawns Queen everywhere. C2. Good okay. luck to equalize this position. Like rook g4. Exactly. Queen c6. c6 also oh, that queen c5. on c6 is so stable. Yes. It defends b7, kind of eyeballs rook b1, a little yes. bit. G2. If you take on c5, he will take on b7, but then rook c4, I don't know. 19 seconds to 8. Seconds, yes. Levon has to play fast if he wants to. Uh, I'm expecting rook on d8 to d4. Rook d4, now, yes, queen to exactly. b3. Okay. Yes. So if you take it, rook which c1, is, he's done. I've got queen, queen b5. I've got queen b5. Or queen b5 is better. Yeah, like b7. take on b7, seven, take on take, c5. Take. Take, take, and take on c5, five, a5. Pawn up. So yes. it's a pawn up, but okay. If you take it, then rook d8. Good rook chances seven, for yes. draw. Mm -hmm. Rook e7. Rook d1 is a good move. And rook a1, rook a1. Rook supporting a1. the pawn. And I've got rook c6 and answered it, rook a7. Ooh, good move. g5, king h5. Let's go. F4, also like this. F4, we need wow. structure and king. They're playing rook. on instinct. Yes. Oh, yes. This is instinct now. Rook c6. Threatening a 6 pawn, so rook c6 was necessary to play. Okay, but he's weakened the pawn on h4. Yes, and goes back. <sighs> Protection c7, seven, rook goes, d3. <laughs> goes Ooh, king back. h5? So black no. Has this pawn. is starting to feel very dangerous king for King h5. And Fabiano. h4 is under threat. 6 protecting Perfect. The pawn. Now black has got to be winning. Yes. He's a pawn up, and Three, he's two. got the, an look, ideal Fabi's setup. looking for some rook g5. Rook h3. Rook is <laughs> It's not possible. And no time on the clock. They've got seconds. Just yes. seconds. And it's all about if Levon will manage to con convert this ending because he has I'm, two extra pawns now. I'm pretty sure he yes. will. Rook f5 he's, check. He's a very and a5. Player. And he knows yeah. he knows that that is... It's really hard for Fabi to defend. But look at this. He's thinking for a few seconds. Where Fabi should keep his uh, rook c8. king? Rook c8, okay, not rook a6. I was expecting mm -hmm. the rook to go so there. So the king goes there. Yeah, this is That's a really perfect. Hard this is to a perfect. Protect. Ooh, why you don't play g4 in that position? Yes, just to protect the pawn. Just yes. to protect the pawn, but a3 is going to win. <gasps> oh, he just missed oh, this. Artistic, oh, no. artistic finish. And Levon Aranyan wins nice the way first, to finish. Uh... Nice way to finish that. By walk. the way, yes. not for nothing, but the accuracy again of Levon, <laughs> in my opinion, that was amazing. Amazing. Yes, yes amazing. You know, he played amazing. really good. Truly, I, wh wh where was his mistake? No, he... No, he, he didn't do Probably, any. Yes. Wow. And what wow. that means. With black pieces he won. He has now white pieces in the white second pieces. game. White pieces. We have a final game. He needs just yes. a draw. Day. 
to win uh, the match. With Levon Aronian needing only a draw to clinch the match. Correct. And send Fabi to the elimination bracket. Correct. Christian, Fabi with the black you pieces. Now, huh? How do you feel? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> <laughs> Not great about my chances yeah, to continue in the Champions man, bracket. Yes, yes, man. Yes, exactly. Not great. Yeah. You, you got me on that one, Anastasia, but the, the war is not over yet. Uh, okay. let, 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 you have not review. won yet. <laughs> let's just review the end of the game because it, nerves were a big, big, big factor here. And it was just the clock, right? Four seconds that were making their moves. Here is where we kind of said after rook h6, g5, g4, the rook on b5 defends the pawn on h5. Levon very quickly played king d3. It said, go ahead, take my pawn, a4. This was a beautiful cheapo. Yes. Really nice. King, king yeah, I mean, f3. Now if you move the rook to h8, then rook a5 probably, and then a3, a2. So Bingo. He, had yeah. to pl he played like king f3, the last move. And this is a puzzle rush. And then g4. Check. Yes and Black exchanges the rook and just simply promotes his pawn. Levon was feeling it in he this one. He was in stellar form. Wow. That was a very impressive blitz All game. right, what do we expect from Fabi in the must-win game with the black pieces? Some sort of a uh, modern? Kings in the environment. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough. Well, but I think Levon is going to start with e4. It's just well, blitz, baby. Right. So and what then do you do against do a e4? Sicilian. Let, 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 let's repeat. The problem with the Sicilian is that I can go in the open way, knight f3, and now if you go d6, then I go bishop b5. If you go e6, then I still have my ways. G3? To try. I don't think he's going to repeat g3. Yes. No, that experiment didn't G3. really work. In mm -hmm. fact, black had a Fabi had game. a better position in right. that one. I mean, the there's classical. ways in which you can improve on that, and maybe he will. Maybe that will be his strategy. Uh, but I think he's going to try to look for something else. Mm. Anyway. We are just about to witness a great, great blitz here game we because go. you know Fabi. Wow, he's not giving this out. I mean, they didn't, they didn't. No five-minute break. No, nope. nothing. Nothing. Yes. Let's, let's just go. jump. There you go. Yes, you were right. Chris. Bishop B five is the Bishop big B5 problem. Is. Yes. Yes. Ninety-seven. He plays the, at least the move which keeps pieces on the board. No exchanges. How did this become so popular suddenly? This uh, whole bishop b5 and bishop d3. Oh, it's and very you go c3. It's very solid. It's very very solid. You bishop back on c2, and then you go to d4. Yeah, it's uh, going to be some sort of a Rui Lopez, but like if you go e5, for example, you will get those type of structures. Right, almost as if uh, it was a. Um, what do they call that, Rui Lopez, with knight to b8? The Briar. The Briar, yeah. 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 You, you, you play the move e7, e5, and it almost feels like a Briar e5. variation. E5. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> e5 yeah, it's not about check. This, yes. well, this is a pawn sacrifice. I see, 9 6 Oh, 9 well, I mean. If after I go take, takes, take. takes, it's probably a pawn sacrifice e6, you're happy so to make. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's a different nice. point. Uh, for Fabi, uh, should he be embracing? Uh, the pawn? No. He's Maybe he play. can just move but 98. Yes, 98. this is what he's doing. 98 bishop f4. That's why you play e5 as black. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 98 bishop f4. And I've got a little space, a, a tug in the center. But I'm not threatening anything. Why not even bishop g5 here? Okay, uh, developing either to the g5 square or the f4 square, right? So you like bishop to g5? Just because I pin you down, I keep the queen from and going rookie to... rookie one, yes, just support the pawn and just... I, I, I and think Levon chose rookie one because he was unsure where, where to put the right. bishop, yes, exactly. So let's <laughs> just wait and see where, what, what do we, we do. We joked about Vladimir Kramnik. With Vladimir, if you look at his best games, his rooks come to E1 like nine times out of ten <laughs> of the of his best games. And it was like when Vladimir didn't know what to do, he put his rook on E1. And usually it, it worked for a, a pawn breakthrough in yeah, the so, center. But he played knight c7 preventing this move with six and he brought his knight on a six right now. And yeah, so bishop f4 was played and knight d6, bishop g3. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some space. Yes. A square. 
What's your take uh, on Assessi? I mean, B5, I like, I like, I mean, black is still, I don't know, trying. Yes, it's not clear how white will but, but, win but, but, this position. But, but you have pressure with yeah, white. You, you do have. have space. I, I played this kind of positions with white as well, and normally you enjoy this like slight pressure. But black, you know, it's tricky. You, this this knight on the six with this bishop on b seven. He is still, you know, trying to keep the the position. It's not like it's losing or something like that or no, worse. No, 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 yes. no. This is mm -hmm. a, a three-result game. This Absolutely. is probably one of the best positions that black has had in those games where you need to win <laughs> probably, yes, with sir, black. Yes. I mean, this is. I mean, this is a decent position. Yes. We, we we saw terrible oh. outcomes uh, from Begum and Nasi mm -hmm. as black. Knight e4. I like this move. And yeah. mm -hmm. also, he's 40 seconds ahead on the clock. This is 40. something that we... 40. 40. Yeah, it's important. Yes. That's a lot of time. Yes, and... Um, and that's not been the case in the previous games. Levon has been faster in this yes. match than uh, Fabi. So, yeah. by Fabi the way, right the, now needs to put some pressure on the clock. By the way, this move H4 came just like instantly, and I really like it. He's looking at Queen C7, Knight F6 check as a potential answer to queen c7 Ooh, and that was why nice ah yeah. knight f6 nice yeah that mm -hmm. was why there was a hesitation and i think he would have preferred to put the queen on c7 than b6 but okay here we are queen b6 I don't now, know, guys i'm starting to feel good for black's chances right now are you okay. yes i don't know why it just feels like i have more space on the queen where side. it matters where it matters i feel I, and i really don't like that bishop on g3 for white you know, it's strange. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I would like to play h5 as white and potentially make a battery. None of this has happened, of course. a4, rook a8, ab, and we've caught up with the players. Yeah. I mean, this is just simply too slow. Bishop b1, queen c2. By the time I've done all of this, the knight will land on d3 and I'm yes, crying. Yes, exactly, and to <laughs> stop all, all your hopes. I know, I'm yes, crying. Uh -huh. Rook d1. That's kind of a sad move, giving up control over the A file. I'm not sure if Levon didn't like trading queens and playing rook a7. He chose rook d1. Yeah, so one Bishop minute C6. ahead for Fabi at the moment. Yes, Fabi what? should play yes. fast. Bishop C6 yes. and B3. 35 against 40 seconds. Fabi, had, I thought Levon actually. Wow, B3. Can I take on E4 and, and Knight, Knight C5? C5? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to say, wow. just a second. Hold on, there is a fork. Yes. Do you want to give this bishop though? Okay. Ah, he decided, that? and now maybe bishop e4, no? Ah, no, not c5. Now it's too late. Well, wait a minute, yes. I think he missed an opportunity he for did. bishop e4. He did, he did. He did, he did, yeah. Okay, nice. that was good moment. Still, Takes. position remains complex. Knight c5. Definitely black, takes I would say, for choice right now. Knight takes c5. So after bishop c2, how does... He, why the choice? Like bishop d5? I just like my light square d4? bishop. Maybe queen b7, for example. Mm -hmm. Bishop c2. Uh, bishop c2. Whoa, uh, queen e3. That is That's a, good a little uh, nasty. Mm -hmm. But now but. I can take on f3 and you're forced to take with a g-pawn. Okay. <laughs> exactly, because you cannot take with the queen, knight b3 will follow up. I know, you got mm -hmm. two bishops, but at least we get some imbalance. That's true. That is true. And again, uh, because of his loss in the first blitz game, Fabi is in a must-win game yeah, as black. And he's down 47 seconds 40 to 20 seconds. 47 against 20, yes. I mean, Levon, you know, this kind of gesture, putting the pieces aside, it means Anastasia? that he's ready for quick chess. I was about to yes. say, would you play bishop takes f3? Yes. And get the double pawns? Yeah, I mean, it, you I, need, I think so, yes. You this need to good. imbalance mm -hmm. the position, and this seems like the best chance. Queen, okay, gift me the knight. But give me the bishop. To bishop. C2, do we... Or knight a4. We takes trade the rook, rooks. Takes the rooks. What rook do you I want? Think, no, it's possible actually. I, I, I think, think Javi should keep the rook, no? Yeah, I think Levon just woke but up to the idea that he just needs. But what if I take a guys, guys? What, what if I go knight a4 now? He's done it. E6? E6. Oops. Instantly. What? Unbelievable. E6. I'm trying to understand his uh, yes, idea. What I don't if get we it. Just take it. I don't get it. He can even go f5. Knight a4, e6. f5. He goes for it. Yeah. Maximalist. I think Levon is losing track of this game and four seconds for him. Queen a7, Good no move. time. Good move by Levon to attack the Why? pawn a7. Bishop f6. Yes. Bishop f6. 
Let's just that keep... That seems like the very sensible way. Keep the pawn on e7. Queen d7 proposing an exchange. Queen d7. I have not seen it. Queen there's a, a threat, there's a threat of queen e8 check. C4. <gasps> C4. You wow. cannot oh take this because a4 is hanging. Knight c3 maybe. No. The, the game just no, violently crazy. erupted. <laughs> C4, knight C5. Knight C5. Bobby's clock is ticking. Knight C3. Take, of course, and look because at this you cannot take on D1. Oh my gosh. B7, B6, H5, B7. H5? What? what? That would be 7. What exactly was H5? And Bobby is losing this time. game. And he lost on time. Unbelievable. Wow. I cannot believe it. And Levon is Levon ecstatic. Wins. Oh, what a match. Whoa. What a match. This is what happens when you wear red. You know, yes, sir. <laughs> you're in this aggressive mode. You know, you're ready to, to win. I well, would say. I just want to say Levon kept his nerves brilliantly yes. there. I, I mean, at the end, it was really helter skelter. Anything could happen. I, but I don't know. It felt it that Blick was, was fine, was doing fine. But e6, something went wrong. C4, you know, e6, he was creating problems. d 7 I, I, okay, e6. You could take the pawn. You could take the pawn on yes. c3, and you could take the pawn on e6. Yes, exactly. Uh, maybe uh, you, you, your, your chances of winning are maybe not high, but I don't think you're you're, you're losing. After f5, uh, Kristen, jump in on this one because I mean it no, went brilliant also play. brilliant play by Levon. Yes, I, I was looking seconds. through the moves so fast. I was looking through the moves. He did not give any huge opportunity to Fabi. The biggest one was, in fact, after the move B3, take on E4. But yes. even this is not winning by any means, right. by any stretch of imagination. You take on E4, I can take back with a bishop. You do get the pawn, but I do have the two bishops. And that exactly. pawn B3 could be corralled, right? Bishop right. to D5, rook to B1, bishop takes B3. Agreed. So he had a great opportunity here. But all the way towards the end, and I have to say, queen to A8, if you don't find c4, wow. you're lost. You're in trouble. You're not lost. You can also take on a4. But good luck right. allowing me to have <laughs> exactly. that one. Deal, deal with the runaway. Uh, with no, 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 four no. seconds on the clock. No, you're c4, right. c4 that, was, that's over, was, was right? really but great. But c4 yes. was a great shot. Absolutely like brilliant. Like you have to find. What, what about knight b6 here? Was it queen possible? b5. Queen b5. Yeah, yeah so queen, knight okay, b6, nothing. queen takes b5, nothing and there's working. nothing. Crazy. Now the best one would have wow. been knight to c5. Knight but c5. even this, this is just a draw now. You take this, I take that perhaps, and we're just going to be trading blows. Beautiful, wow. beautiful game by the way. Let's Monroe. review that end of the game because, I mean, this was nerves and just incredible play. This move C4. Look at seconds on their clock. C4, because you go knight C3, you attack the bishop and... Wow. And you have to make a move and there is no move. Right? It's like it's really hard to find and anything. And instantly C4 takes B5 as yes. Levon is thinking B6, B7, Queen C8, I H5, win the game. And then B6, and that's it. it was I'm over. not sure what H5 was. was no, it, it's just he saw that he has one second on his clock, and so he made a move. And now and, it's over. And, and it's over because B7 is such a huge threat. Yes. Wow. Wow. Uh, Levon is going to be absolutely, absolutely thrilled with his play. His Same result. As I, I am. Yeah, no, serious. and he's <laughs> he's going to enter that finals with great confidence uh, about how he got here. Christian, that was a great day. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> what an amazing uh, day we had, and even that comeback from Nazi to force a final game. Right. That was great chess, right. by the way. Uh, she played confidently and perhaps not that great in the opening, allowed Irina, but it was all about the practicality of it mm -hmm. all, right? She played good chess up until that point, but unfortunately she wasn't confident enough. She was down to, oh, hey, let's play fast. Right. Let's take some quick decisions. Let's put the pressure on Irina. She did that, she did that successfully. Unfortunately, not until the end. And by the way, we do have the Sensei Kostya Kavutsky with one of our finalists, Irina Kosh. Irina, congrats on winning your match against Nazi. Can you tell us a few words about the final game? Yeah, well, the final game was a lot smoother than the penultimate game in the, in the, in the afternoon. Um, you know, sometimes it just goes like that, right? You, um, you don't play a very good game, I guess, uh, in my classical game. I mean, I think she played well and I played worse, and so I kind of felt okay about that, you know, that happens. I mean, I don't expect life to be easy. Um, so, but yeah, the second game with white just, um, you know, like it's, well, it's hard to win with black, right? So, you know, you have to take risks and sometimes it doesn't work out. 
Well, um, looks like you'll be facing Alice Lee in the final. Um, this will be your fifth match, right? Because you played two matches against her in both events. Um, how will you approach it this time around? Yeah, well, I think it's actually pretty cool that in our third consecutive American Cup, you know, we're playing the champions bracket final with Alice. So um, I think it's going to be a good match. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be getting to play this match because so far this tournament has not been like the smoothest for me. And of course, it's like the new format and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks. And best of luck in your next Thank game. Thank you. Congratulations indeed, Arena. as uh, we are going to take a look at the brackets. A uh, very, very eventful Champions Day, uh, Absolutely, Anastasia. yes. Fabiano Corona just lost his match in, match in Blitz against Levon Aronian, so Levon Aronian is in the final. Exactly. And he will face uh, Ray Robson, who just uh, a won against Wesley So. A, a surprise 3-1 to one winner. Two and a half, one and a half would have been more uh, appropriate result, but Ray impressed. Yes, he won 3-1, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll be playing against Levon. And in the champions bracket for the ladies, uh, where, what were the results there? Oh, uh, elimination, yes. First. Remember that those who lost the matches today, they go to the elimination bracket. Wesley's so dropped Wesley to seven. will play against Sam Seven, right? Who had a rest day today, and <laughs> Fabiano Caruana will play against Linier Domingos. This very, is the championship nice. of St. Louis. <laughs> 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 True that. Yes, and, and, and in the, the champions uh, bracket for the ladies. Very, very impressive um, victory of by uh, both. By both, like Irina Crush and Ellis Lee. Uh, both of them, they qualified for the fan final and will play their fifth match. Irina Crush wins both American Cups, the previous two editions, mm -hmm. uh, but she did so more smoothly. She's lost two games uh, to getting to the final. One to Zoe and, and one, one to Nazi. And uh, the last chance elimination bracket for the ladies. Yes, so uh, after losing this game uh, today, Bacon Tahir uh, Jonova will play against Zoe Teng tomorrow, right. and Nazi Paikidze will play against Jennifer Yu. Rematch of the US uh, champions, ladies champions, and we're going to jump to Kostya, who's with Levon, Iranian. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Levon Arnyan, who just won a very tough match against Fabi Corona. Levon, congrats. Thank you. Um, what were your overall feelings on the match? I think I kind of had the initiative throughout the match. That's what I felt. So I'm happy that despite uh, not uh, scoring wins in, in the, the rapid section and the classical section, I managed to keep a decent level in the blitz. Yeah, you managed to put pressure in a lot of the games. Um, and then in the Blitz, obviously you won both games. Do you feel like you just took over at that point? Or how would you evaluate the Blitz? Um, well, uh, that first game, of course, uh, was it seemed like I managed to put the pressure because I had more time. And uh, then I had the extra pawn. Um, so it, it was generally difficult for him to defend that one. The second game, of course, <laughs> it didn't went as planned and I felt that, uh, you know, I have to be extremely precise and I had, I had a little time. But then I think I managed to, like, uh, find the practically best moves, you know, to, to neutralize. So I'm quite happy with my play in both of the games. Great. Um, well, next you'll be facing Ray Robson in the final. Um, you've obviously played with Ray before. Um, how do you view him as a player? Um, he's a tremendous talent, I think. Uh, Natural talent. Before uh, I came to the States, uh, you know, uh, I knew him and I thought, uh, well, he's, a, he's this guy who's falling in time trouble for no particular reason. And uh, he's, he's a good player, but, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really know him so well. And once I got to play here and see him play, yeah, I, I can really just uh, share my admiration. I mean, if, if he was more uh, ambitious, I think he, he would definitely be on the top of, uh, you know, I mean, he would be a top player. But even now, I mean, he's one of the best players in the United States, but uh, he definitely has a great potential because he has a natural feel for the game. 
right. Well, I'm very much looking forward to uh, that match, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Guys, back to you in the studio. Uh, final thoughts as we wrap up day four. Of, uh... What a day. Yeah. What a day and what a, a final match. And it's so interesting to listen to these players speak about the match and how they feel throughout the match. Mm -hmm. It was all about his feeling of having that minimal edge, putting yeah. that minimal extra pressure. And I remember that game from the first day in the rapid section with the white pieces, exchange, uh, Rui Lopez. Oh. He had a minimal edge. Not right. much. Probably the engine was saying zero, zero, zero all throughout the game. But he felt he was the one putting the pressure. It's uh, so important, this extra sense of confidence that they get mm -hmm. from that, from applying that pressure. It's incredible to hear these players uh, talk about chess and, of course, mm -hmm. apply uh, <laughs> right? those principles uh, during the games. I cannot wait for tomorrow's yeah. matches. I like the fact they could keep the pressure and kept it going. And final thoughts for you, uh, Kostya. What did you think about day four? Nice, nice action. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, amazing day of, of action. Uh, of course, Levon defeating Fabi, I think, is a, is a huge result. Um, I mean, who could predict this final, huh? Aronian versus Robson. I don't think anyone had Robson in, in the finals. <laughs> I had I Aronian. Mean, what a hero. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, full uh, full credit to Ray. You know, he uh, had to hold on against Wesley, who was clearly trying to uh, to win those uh, final two games. And Ray just held some, you know, with some very very good defense um, in the women's section. Alice Lee, of course, just continues to impress, and um, Irina as well. I mean, she actually won, if I remember correctly, five games in a row before she lost that game to Nazi. And then managed to bounce back and just win a very clean uh, game four. So definitely impressive, uh, I think, comeback spirit from Irina in that final match. Well, thank you, Kostya. Don't be too humble, Kostya. You, you did pick Ray to win it, so you did think that this would be All the final. my picks I mean, made it to final, oh, guys. Oh, I picked Ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too How humble. Irina, that was pretty good. Yes. good. So far, so Respect. good. Thank you. Yes. Respect. Right. I, I Respect. think I have to come back from the elimination yeah. bracket. Right, okay. It's going right. to be tough. I have right. uh, won uh, fewer lives. But right. So well, good. you know, uh, uh, Var and I have some skin in the You're game. Alice good. is looking yes. really, really good. Wesley can bounce back. Yes. Trust me, Wesley is a very strong player. No, no, strong, I know, I know, but it's player. still nice to have a player in the final, right? I mean, still, <laughs> just let me enjoy my moment. For absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Less pressure on you for the moment. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you all for joining us and sharing your day here at the American Cup in St. Louis. It's been our pleasure. Tell your friends where you're hanging out, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Great. It was very good. Very... This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.